Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Maidan Racecourse for the day that matters most. It is the 28th Dubai World Cup night. Nine wonderful races which brings together humans and equines from all four corners of the globe. The elite performers are here at Maidan tonight. We have defending champions. We have horses having their first start out at Maidan. There really is no horse missing. The likes of Saudi Crown, Forever Young, Doe Juice, August Rodan, Liberty Island, and of course, the defending champion in the Dubai World Cup, Ushba Tassoura. That is right. Nine races. They build up to the ninth and final, which is this one. The small matter of the 28th World Cup and 12 go out for the most prestigious prize of the lot. Gates fly, they're racing in the Dubai World Cup. Chrome turns to gold. A is for Arrogate, A is for Absolute Superstar. Nose in front of double thunder. Ushba Tesoro wins the Dubai World Cup for Japan. So the scene is set on this glorious day for Dubai World Cup night 2024. And these are some of the horses and jockeys who might just be starring in the hours to come. We start then with possibly the best purebred Arabian horse in the world, Asfan al Haladia, who won in Saudi last time. A dominant display. And he'll be looking to win the Dubai Kahala Classic. Last year's winner of the Godolphin Mile, Isolate, is back. He went to the Saudi Cup last time. Probably found it on that course a little bit too far. Back over a mile. He'll have a leading chance in a race with plenty of pace. Another winner in Saudi last time. Tower of London took the Red Sea Turf Handicap under a cool ride from Ryan Moore. And he'll line up in the Gold Cup. And he is one of the progressive stayers on show today. Now, Charlie Appy has four runners on Dubai World Cup night. And one of his leading chances is the Philly star of mystery. Two from three at the track. She's back over six furlongs, having been beaten over five last time. And this, with plenty of pace on, should really suit. And there are a host of Japanese stars on show. This is one of them. Forever Young in the UAE Derby. Took the Saudi Derby last time under Ryusi Sakai. Only just, he might want to be a bit sharper away this evening. Sibelius took this race last year under Ryan Moore. He was drawn low on that occasion. It was a daring run up the rail 12 months ago. He's drawn six and a leading chance in a very open renewal. And will we see history at Maidan? Lord North looking to win the Dubai Turf for the fourth year in a row. Frankie de Torre up, and no one would begrudge this horse making history at Maidan. Liberty Island, she won the Japanese Phillies Triple Crown. She got within four lengths of Equinox last time, and that form must mean she's just about the one to beat in a hot renewal of the Shima Classic. And can this horse, Ushba Tesoro, win consecutive Dubai World Cups off the back of an excellent just touched off run in the Saudi Cup last time? And what about the race card? Starting off with the Dubai Kahala Classic, the Pure Arabian race, 2,000 metres on the dirt. First of the thoroughbred races, that's the Godolphin Mile, which is run, as the name suggests, over 1,600 metres on the dirt. Dubai Gold Cup, the staying race, uh, that's the first turf race, and that comes up as race three before the sprint, the Al Quaz, which is the first of the thoroughbred group ones, 1,200 metres on the turf. The UAE Derby comes up as race five before the Dubai Golden Shaheen, a speed test over 1,200 metres on the dirt. Then it's the Dubai Turf, sponsored by DP World, which is run over 1,800 metres on the grass. And the final race on the turf comes up as the Longines Dubai Shima Classic Race 8. That's 2,400 metres. And what a quality contest it should be. The biggest race of the lot, though, Race 9, the Dubai World Cup, sponsored by Emirates Airline. 2,000 metres on the iconic dirt track. Uh, these two horses don't run, both in the derby. We learned about this earlier in the week. Number nine, Killer Collect, 
and number 13, Satono Phoenix, both out of race five. No jockey notifications at this stage. And just a quick update on the conditions. Bright sunny day and the conditions likely to be good to firm all over. A racetrack going report from our friends at Turf Tracks. Yeah, it's the day that the racing world comes together. And what a feast of racing we've got. Tom Stanley and I are here to preview all nine races, starting off with the Dubai Kahala Classic in a few moments' time. But an overview, what a special day in the racing calendar this is. I think it's, what, I think it's one of the best, one of the mm. strongest renewals we've had of, of Dubai World Cup night with the depth that we've got of international runners, to be, to be completely honest. You've got all the horses you'd want there in the, in the World Cup. It's, as ever, a ridiculously hot Shima Classic. The Dubai turf as well, um, it doesn't disappoint. I, I would love it if we saw history with Lord North winning a fourth consecutive one right the way back through to the to, to a rip roaring renewal of the of the godolphin mile so I, I i there's not really a horse missing i don't think no i agree with you um we've got it all ahead of us we do start off with the purebred arabian race which is the dubai kahala classic and it features some of the best in this region al wajo he's having another crack at this well done to the trainer for getting him back barack is a really good local horse but the big threat is number four that is asfan al khaledia who has never been beaten and I think it might just stay that way today. We'll see. First class has won this before. Horse number eight, Adi Kakarer, RB Kingmaker is horse 10. A rich like me, he's had his reputation dented in recent times. Sonny De Loop was the winner on trials day, as it were, four weeks ago on Super Saturday. Tilal Al Khaledia is another big threat coming across from Saudi Arabia. Um, you were there, Tom, mm. to watch Asfan Al Khaledia win and extend this ridiculously good sequence he's got back on the 24th of February on Saudi Cup night. Can anything beat him? Well, it is possible, isn't it? Look, th this worked out perfectly for him. They had a lot of runners from the same yard in the race and they really set it up, to be completely honest, for him. He was allowed to, to, to guide his, his own route through the race at his own pace uh, and, and it was over, really, I think, as the gates opened, to be completely honest. Uh, all he had to do was put one foot in front of the other because he is the best around. I guess if you're looking for possible negatives, um, he won't be the first away. He will have some maidan dirt kicked in his face. Yep. That's the only thing he's going to have to deal with out of the ordinary for him. But on pure ab ability alone, he should take some, some serious stopping. Tilala Haladir uh, won this race. We were watching 12 months previously. And then he, they ran him in the, in the lesser race on the Friday at the Saudi Cup meeting because Asfan is such a, such a beast. So I think that tells you everything you need to know. And I think he will win. I do. Shock. Yeah, I'm going to go with him. Um, a reasonable word for... Well, Sonny De Loop and Al Wajel, they had a really good duel here in the, in the big race on Super Saturday. They'll be leading players off that. I think Baraka is probably the best of the locals, but even then, I think this horse from Saudi Arabia is bringing all together a new level. Yeah, he, he, you know, he, as I say, he should win. Yeah. Um, obviously, we're going to talk a lot about how the Saudi track is different to this Dubai track and how you know horses that win there don't always come and produce it here because of a different run style, a different feel as well. But I think that's really looking for, for, for chinks in his armour as opposed to actually finding them. Um, he'll, you know, he, he, the distance is fine. Uh, he'll get a strong pace to chase. And just as long as there are no early warning signs if he's, if he's not enjoying kickback. Even so, though, I can see his rider switching out, just keeping him out of it. And, 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 and going past everything. Yeah, he should Regular win. Regular rider, Abdullah Alafwi. Uh, that is Asfan Al Khalidia to make it 18 out of 18. That is the selection of both Tom and I for the first race, the Dubai Kayla Classic. OK, first thoroughbred race is race two. It's the Godolphin Mile proper competition, as it should be. I'll bring you through or run you through the runners and riders for it. It's a big field. Just pick out a couple of maybe the leading players. Caramel Chip comes across for Jose D'Angelo. He's giving the horse good words. Uh, Eastern World gets a run. Isolate last year's winner is back for more. What about over the page? Good old remorse. He's been running in the Dubai World Cup the last two years on this night. It's a good bit different to, to be running in this race. Saudi Crown's going to be a hot fancy, I would imagine, horse number seven. You go down to Swing Vote. It may be disappointed on Super Saturday, but might be worth another buy. Two rivers over for trainer Doug O'Neill. No stranger to success in these parts. Uh, Walk of Stars, who ran well on Super Saturday. And Pacholi, the mare who comes across from South America, uh, we'll see what she can do for trainer Julio Alascoaga. It's not going to be the only time we're talking about the Saudi Cup on the night. 
because, of course, it's going to have a significant bearing on the Dubai World Cup later on in the card. But it could also provide the winner of the Godolphin Mile. Best of the finishers this day, of course, Saudi Crown. He's got so much pace, and I can see why he's going to be very well fancied here. Yeah, so you can see Isolate toiling along uh, up the rail. I, I don't think that was the right part of the track where you wanted to be on. I mean, I forgive him this run. He'll be better suited back over a mile, back at the scene of, of his success here last year. The issue he's got is Saudi Crown. Yep. I think Saudi Crown is a faster horse. He's drawn in his inside, and Florent Giroux, Giroux will make sure he gets the rail. And he nearly hangs on in a race. That's a massive markup performance run from Saudi Crown. Mm. Huge. The fact that he stuck around for so long, uh, that said, how much has it taken out of him? That's, That's a possible question. question. But yeah, yeah it's, it's an issue. Um, you know, it's, it's a it, it's something to level at him as a as a possible concern, definitely. But those that's only something we can worry about. We can't know, and I don't think you can use it enough against him to not make. Well, I couldn't to make not making my on top selection. I, I think he is mm. the the best. Uh, horse in the race, the fastest horse with the best draw to get the rail because he's too inside of of, um, of Isolate and, and I think he'll win. Louis Saez comes over for the ride on Isolate. Uh, last year's brilliant winner of the, the race. Um, there are some interesting horses trained locally. Walker Stars ran a really good race in the Al Maktoum Challenge behind the rejuvenated um, Military Law. Who would have fancied that four weeks ago? He runs the Dubai World Cup. Well, I think Military Law might have fancied his chances when he saw it as Walker Stars looming up, to be no, honest. It's not much. You know, I like him. And I, I, no. This. No, no, no. I, I think it's probably because a bit like myself, he's quite ungenuine. Yes. He, uh, no comment on you, but he is... Uh, He's tricky, isn't he? He is, isn't he? He wanted to go... No, no, no. The rider wanted to go past at this point. I think the horse had other ideas. Yeah, he just doesn't really... You can just see in his neck there, he's not really fully letting himself down to go on and go past. He's in his comfort zone there on the quarters of a horse, and that's where he wants to stay. I would love to see it. I think he'll need an absolute pace meltdown. He's drawn low. He'll be switched out, I think, to come late with a run wide and late. I think that's his best chance. Yep. And... Um, probably being kept away from from a few horses wide out on the track. Uh, that's don't, that, it'd don't be great. Let him know he's in a race, basically. That'd be exactly, that'd almost be the way exactly forward. Exactly that. He's he's got plenty of talent. We saw that in, in for previous connections on, on the turf with Charlie Appleby. Yeah. He just doesn't. In a race like this, you're going to want to use every bit of your ability, and he doesn't always do that. Um, I don't necessarily think we should delay too much longer. But I, th I think I'm going to stick with you. I'm going for Saudi Crown because I think he's the yeah. best horse. Listen, if he underperforms... We, we do get more exciting as we progress through the card. We do, generally, yes. or the tips do? They're both. OK. Um, it would... i tell you what, right, I guess what we'll, it will do is be a marker for the, the, the good horses that have come out of Saudi Arabia for the Dubai World Cup as well. Because if this horse goes and flattens them in this race, you'll think, you know, for the Ushba Tesoros and um, Senor Buscadors, you'd be that much more confident for later, wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, that said, if Saudi Crown comes out and disappoints, I don't think it's going to harm the, the, the Dubai World Cup. You're not going to look no. at the Saudi Cup form and say, oh, maybe it's not all that, because it was the right horses there or thereabouts in the, in the Saudi Cup. Ushba Tesoro, obviously, who, who, you know, won the, 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 the World Cup last year and, and was just touched off in that race. But, yeah, I, I mean, I expect him to, because I think that Saudi Cup race was just about the deepest dirt race of the, of the last 12 months. OK. Saudi so, yeah, Crown, then. Saudi Crown. Saudi Crown for both of us in the Godolphin Mile. See if you can translate that really good form from over in Saudi Arabia and win one of the big races here tonight. Uh, race three is the first turf race. It is the staying race. It's the Dubai Gold Cup. It's got a good, deep field, international field. Let's run you through the horses that take centre stage in 2023. Headed up by Al Nair. Formerly trained in these parts. He's now trained abroad. Uh, Christoph Sumio won this race many times on Bazir, about three times. Coltrane comes across. Duramathos should be outclassed. Uh, Eldar, Elder Rob, very good horse indeed. Enemy just touched off in Saudi Arabia. Our Swarm tied in closely with Gia Velotto. Go down further. Good old passion and glory. Roberto Escobar, C. Stone for Jim Crowley. And Siscani just denied in this race last year, otherwise unblemished at Maydown. Sober gets a run he didn't in this race last year. Trawlerman, Libyan Glass, Savannah's Knight. And what about this fella? Tower of London, who led them home in the Longines Red Sea turf just over a month ago, one of the most significant key form races. They're all having a go again. Tower of London, Enemy, Giovalotto, Al Nair and co. Um, listen, it didn't go completely to plan A, but the result was the one they wanted with Tower of London. Yeah, and, you know, Ryan Moore uh, got it right, although it, you know, he, uh, he's come out and, and said, you know, he, he, he wasn't foot perfect on the day, um, but he, he did get the horse there and, uh, you know, it, it, it looked pretty cool at the end, didn't it? This horse has probably got a bit left as a stayer. I, I think it's always worth bearing in mind that this is a 
a, a handicap. Yep. He's obviously coming back into into a group two. Um, you know, I, I think we're going to. There's an Aidan O'Brien horse, August Rodan, running later on. Who you might level. Where is he going to be for his first start of a long campaign? Um, you know, we're talking, all right, 95% maybe as opposed to 100%, maybe 100%, but this horse is 100% off the back of that run, uh, fitness, readiness-wise. So it's hard to crab him on that. Um, enemy, it will be tough to reverse the form, uh, particularly given he disappointed in this race 12 months ago, but he's had a different campaign this time round. Uh, Gia Velotto is better off at the weights with Enemy. I can imagine that form will be reversed after last time. I can see that happening. Um, Oh, it's a key form race, but um, I'm personally going to look away from Me too. Good. Yeah. Should we talk about Eldar Eldorov? Yes. Because he's a good horse. He's won a couple of St. Ledgers, one in England, one in Ireland. Welcome back, James Doyle, after injury as well, which is great. This was Ireland. This was under David Egan when um, I think he proved the fire still burnt after maybe a little bit of an inauspicious campaign. Um, Roger Varian this week was on record as saying he was quite pleased to see that his horse Charin won at Donny last week, which I know has not necessarily got anything to do with this, but he said that they were on this horse and chariot on very similar sort of regimes. So he was really pleased to see that it had obviously worked for one. I know this one's coming out to Dubai, but um, if he's on the same sort of path, then he should be fit and ready. Yeah, my only issue is if it's a stern test at, at, at two miles. I'm not convinced, personally, that that's what he wants. Um, obviously, his, his Group 1 wins have come over a mile six, so that, that would be the only thing I'd level against him. But he's, he's a top-level winner against... Um, you know, plenty of Group Two winners, if yep. you like. So uh, he he he's just about the most talented or, or the most capable horse in the race, rated 117 with with Coltrane. Um, so yeah, you 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 know, you, you'd be positive about his ability. I'm just not certain about the distance if they go hard, which they might not. Okay, um, let's have a look at some carnival form. So Scarney, he's got a brilliant record here. He is understandably the man of William Buick. He'll look to go one better than he did in this race last year. Um, his record, as mentioned, at Maidan, with the exception of this defeat, is outstanding. He's been good on two starts this year. William Buick said that he's a point-and-shoot job. Mm. I just wonder whether he plays it that little bit later this year compared to getting cut back by Broome last year. Do you see what I mean? Definitely, because he, again, is a doubtful stayer at the distance if they go hard. Or I think he's doubtful stayer at the distance anyway. Uh, we saw that probably last year where I think Broome outstayed the horse to score. Cheek pieces going back on might help just bring out a little bit more improvement in the horse. Yep. Um, he doesn't need much improvement to feature... Personally, I think there he will find a horse too good for him. I think yeah. he'll be I think he'll be there or thereabouts, but I think there is something in this field that will be better. Well, what is it? That's what I'm here to learn. Coltrane. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Might be. Might be. Uh, he, he tailed off a bit towards the back end of last year, but generally he's really solid, isn't he? Yeah, I don't know if he went a bit over the top last year. Positives Round. for the for the horse. He goes really well fresh. Um, he's won fresh. He's been twice. He's been. Uh, w within a neck of a win fresh uh, and finished second. So that's a big plus for him. He is yet to be a Group 1 winner, but he is a solid Group 1 performer. He's rated 117, only Trawlerman rated higher than him. I just think he's solid to hit the frame. And, you know, I think we and we know he's a two-miler on, on this sort of ground. I, I think there are there are loads of positives for Coltrane. All right, I'm going to go for Siskani. Um, but we haven't mentioned Trawlerman. Well, I tell you what, we don't have to because we can hear from one of his trainers, Thady Gosden. Well, Thady, the horse that we're going to start talking about is one who's made plenty of people smile, and that's Lord North, who's been fantastic the last few years. What is it about Maydown he loves so much? Well, like you say, obviously, he is, uh, he's had a good time out here. He's, you know, it's his fifth time out here now. He's obviously run in the race three times. He came out here one year during COVID, and unfortunately, the race was cooled off, but, you know, he just came out for a holiday. And, uh, you know, he knows his way around the place. He was on the turf course here this morning, um, and he's, he slots back into the routine. He seems to enjoy himself and thrive out here. This race this year looks to be a little bit stronger than the previous years. Would you agree? How do you think he's going to measure up again? Yeah, you know, obviously the, the, the mid race out here, you know, bring the best in the world together. Um, the Dubai Turf is no different this year at all. You know, we've got horses from, I think, five or six countries. And, uh, you know, they're the best from each one. And you have to be here and you have to be in top form to, to run a good race. Now, a horse that didn't make me smile uh, a little bit further ago was Trawler Man. Was unbeaten and then was a little bit disappointing what went wrong 12 months ago what was it yeah exactly he um he obviously ran here last year in the gold cup and he ran in february in saudi and then in the red sea turf and then came here afterwards and uh, neither went to plan nothing really came to light on him but obviously last year his form picked up through the season and he uh, he did well to win on champions day at the end of the year and that's it and uh you know he's had a nice break since then he comes here injured nick
he seems to be a bit more mature and a bit more straightforward. Yeah, very much so. You know, he's a horse. He lives 150% every day. He was, again, he was on here on the turf course this morning. He didn't want to pull up. He was having such a good time. But, uh, you know, he's in, he's in good shape and he's travelled over well. Oh, that's good to hear. So from that draw, how do you think you're going to ride him? Well, exactly. You know, obviously, it's not ideal. Um, we've been slightly unlucky with our draws this year. But, you know, they start down there at the top of the straight for the, for the Gold Cup. So he's a lot nice long run into the bend. Hopefully he can just, you know, break well in a good position. Now, the lady speaking of awkward draws, Nashua 16 of 16. Luckily, she's very versatile. She's been ridden forward. She's also been ridden at the back. How are you going to ride her this time? Well, exactly like you say, we're drawn wide again. Um, but she'll also be starting over there. And uh, as you know, it's a, long, it's a long run into the bend as well. So you've got plenty of time to make your mind up. Obviously, Holly Doyle knows her very well. And, uh, you know, let's see how it goes. Um, she was the French Oaks winner, of course, and she surprised a few dropping back to the mile last year. Do you think that this nine furlongs would be the ideal trick for her? Yeah, very much. Obviously, she's won three ones over a mile and a mile and a quarter. Um, she's a filly with lots of speed and she's got a good bit of tactile speed as well. So, you know, she'll, you can find a good slot and uh, run a nice race. Now, a horse that everyone is really excited about is Emily Upjohn. Now, she's a little bit of a hot filly. She's got the hood back on. Do you think she's going to handle the pressure of World Cup night? As you know, yeah, exactly. She's. Um, She's a filly, she's got plenty of character, but uh, you know, she came out here this morning on the lights, she's done it all very well. She's travelled over well, it's her first time travelling abroad too, so she's never been outside the country. Um, you know, she hasn't spent a night away from home for a long time, but she's taken it all in her stride and, and you know, she's adapted to the situation very well. Hopefully, you know, she can uh, put a good show on, on Saturday. Was she meant to come over last year? She, that was initially the plan to start with, but then, you know, as with, with fillies in this spring, it's always difficult. And uh, you know, it's very cold weather. Trading them into these races over here is not the easiest thing. And obviously, if they're not 100%, they, they shouldn't bring them. Now, Kieran Schumach's riding for the first time. Has he had a good feel for her at home? Yeah, very much. He's ridden her in her work. He gets on with her well. Um, you know, he's a very exceptionally talented jockey. He knows the track well here. And yeah, looking forward to it, I'm sure. So these two fillies, Nashua and Emily Upjohn, physically incredibly different. Yeah, very much so. They're, they're different, two different looking fillies. Um, interestingly, they both had a similar start to their careers. They both ran in the Oats together. Um, and then since then, they've obviously diverged. Nash was a filly who she's best at a mile and a mile and a quarter um, at the moment. She's a, you know, a well-built filly, plenty of speed to her, a lot of substance. And uh, of course, being my friend, it'll helps. And um, Emily Upjohn, she's a filly, she's a little bigger. She's um, a filly who's you know, more suited to a mile and a quarter, a mile and a half. And she's a filly with plenty of size and quality about her. And, you know, they're both two, two radio-looking fillies and obviously two exceptionally talented fillies. And you say the mile and a quarter, mile and a half is maybe her preferred trip? Yeah, you know, obviously she's one group ones over that. And uh, she'll enjoy the mile towards here. You know, it's a very fair track. Um, they're pretty sharp into the bend, but apart from that, it's a long straight and nice, nice sweeping bends on the turf course and hopefully she runs well. How do you find with the size, if they are a bit bigger, sort of managing the way through these bends? Do they tend to struggle to balance a little bit more or it's not too bad? Obviously on the turning ovals, it's important to be on the, on the track lead around the bend. In this case, obviously a left lead. And uh, as long as they do that, which she's, you know, she's an experienced filly now, she's into swimming things. She went around the turf course earlier on and did it well. So you wouldn't have any doubts with that. Who would you say is your best chance on the night? It's a tough question. Um, we'll have to see on Saturday, I guess. You know, they're four, four very good horses and before radio races against the competition. So race four is the first of the thoroughbred group one races. It is the Owl Cause Sprint. Fast and furious on the turf track right in front of the grandstand here. Let's have a look at the runners for the 2024 renewal. Headed up by Bill Hale, it's a good horse for Michael Costa, who's got a chance or two later. A really interesting runner in the form of California Spangle, horse two. Cata Creed, horse three, is back for more. Defending champion, that's Dania, horse four. Uh, Diligent Harry is five, has never won on the turf. Could that change today? Emiratiana, Jasper Crone, King Gold. Pontos, he's got loads of pace. Sight success is back to try and win it again, or win it this year. Frost at Dawn and Star of Mystery, the two three-year-old fillies are fascinating. They met uh, on Super Saturday and Star of Mystery was beaten by this flying filly, Frost at Dawn, who shattered the track record. You can see her right on that far side. Conversely, towards the near side, the blue just bobbing in behind, that's uh, Star of Mystery, who runs on for a forlorn second. I think she ran a good race on her own side. The international betting, when I had a look at it yesterday, had it that Star of Mystery was about a third of the price of Frost at Dawn, which I thought was a tad insulting. 
Yeah, I guess that that is taking into account a, a perceived bias over towards the far side. Macar Barcelona looked to exploit that. It's obviously flipped on what we were used to seeing here, where you wanted to seemingly come towards the stand side. Pontos is drawn three. Uh, Frost at Dawn is drawn one. I'm sure they're going to go up that far side rail because why would Macar Barcelona not try and repeat that trick? I think Frankie de Torre needs to be aware of that out of stool number eight and just aim a little bit left because I think that's where the pace is going to hold up best. For all there is pace to his right um, in the form of Jasper Krone who comes out of stall number nine but I yep. think the strongest pace is going to be over towards the left and I think uh, as long as a star of mystery is is sort of positioned to pick up the pieces towards middle to far side I think it should work out absolutely perfectly for her um, and this, she should win. This time last year, Dottori's obviously riding because William Buick can't do the right weight. We thought this was going to be it for Frankie. Do you remember? Building up to yeah. Frankie's last Dubai World Cup night, but he's back. Yeah. You spoke to him last night, he was in good form. Yeah, I mean, he's got to do 8.5, so he's not, you know, he's, he, he wasn't dancing. No. Um, but he, uh, he, he was, yeah, I mean, look, it, it, the, it, the meeting... Every meeting with Frankie de Torre on a big night is, is better for it, let's be honest. And if he were to cap it off with a win with Lord North later on, that would be magic. But I think this is his best chance. Mm. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's, it's great to see him um, teaming up with Godolphin again. And, he, he, you know, he, he, I think he's on... For all there's loads of quality in this race, I think a, a strong pace over six furlongs at this track is going to suit start of mystery best. It was interesting you say that as well, because um, California Spangle, the trainer's been on record as, as feeling like... You need the 1,400-metre horse to excel on the 1,200-metre straight track here. They need to stay well at six furlongs, which is firmly, I think, what he believes his horse, California Spangle, can go and do. That's just wrong, isn't it? Uh, that's I don't not, see it, not personally. True. No, but I mean... Uh, because you've got a horse like Frost at Dawn, for example, that's going to have that rapier speed and, and look to stretch it out. Yeah. Um, that said, Dania, for example, last year's winner, he stays that little bit further, but he's got that mix of speed and stamina. Yeah, yeah I, yeah, I suppose did win last year, but I, I think it's considered a pretty fast six. Now, that horse, California Spangle, is well the, Hong Kong. The, the best in the race. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you here? I, look, at 123, he, you know, he is exceptional. I just think that six here is, is still going to be on the sharp side, no matter how much pace there is. He might be too good, but I would just counter the idea that this... This six is made for him. Mm. He'll want a pace at it. But, yeah, he's, he, he, it's great to have him here because he is pure quality and the race is better for his presence in it. Let's have a look at last year's uh, success for Daniel. I don't think many people would have predicted this. And also, a real quick word now on um, the man who was riding him this day last year, uh, Dane O'Neill, who sadly this week's had to announce his, his retirement owing to injury. So I know he'll be watching on and it would be quite a poignant success in that regard if he were to go and win it again. Yeah, it was great to, to, that Dane got this win. Uh, yeah. It was his first thoroughbred win on Dubai World Cup night, having won a couple of Cahala Classics. So that was magic. And um, obviously Jim Crowley taking over here. Uh, the horse has probably had a better campaign this time around. Yep. Um, you know, more consistent campaign. They've, they've campaigned him again over the, the seven uh, with two runs there. And, you know, th this, this surprised a few, this result. I just spotted him but, in the run, yeah. And... and uh, I guess the one thing you'd level at him is the Godolphin horse he beats isn't the most convincing. This is a better race 12 months on, and he's another one that needs a bit of a pace meltdown. There he goes. He just got there, didn't he? Um, Dania. I think he's going to win it again. I've put him up. Yeah. I have, yeah. Because I think at, he's had a really good two runs this year, one under a penalty, two runs over 1,400 metres, and... I don't necessarily think, I think the three-year-old fillies are obviously fascinating, but I don't necessarily think you, you're standing in the way of anything that's a monumental challenge. And if he runs that sort of race again, he shouldn't be too far away. I guess my thinking is he's a similar horse distance-wise to California Spangle, and California Spangle is, is a £10 better horse. So if I was mm. going to side with one of those types, personally, it would be California Spangle. But then horses for courses, right? He did yeah. it last year, and there's loads of pace on. So who's yours? My third international favourite in a row, Star of Mystery. Is it? Mm. OK. That's the Dottori factor. That would be class, actually, wouldn't it, if he were to win in the Godolphin Blue here? In... Be, yeah, yeah. That, would, that would be a nice sort of, you know, that would be quite a full circle feeling, wouldn't, wouldn't it? it? Not that this is going to be his last Dubai World Cup night. No, 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 no. You know? No. He got at least ten. He'll, he'll outdo us. Oh, no, um, not a, not. Well, he'll be back next year, so probably will. Yeah, absolutely. Go right. Uh, there are thoughts on the the Al Quaz, which will be the Fast and Furious Group One on the turf. All right, the big three-year-old race is race five. It is the UAE Derby. These are the horses that run the best of the classic generation from here and there. 
They're coming from all corners of the globe for this one. Uh, Auto Barnes, one of a couple of sons of the previous winner of this race, Asiatic Boy for Julio Alaska Waga. He's got Auto Barnes, he's got Oasis Boy, he's got the, the new recruit Rock Walk Ballon d'Or. That horse comes across from Japan. Forever Young, we're going to be talking about that horse in a few moments' time. The first of the Tesoros is George. Then you've got Guns and Glory, Horse 7, Henry Adams. Nine doesn't go, sadly. Mendelssohn Bay, son of the record winner of this race, Mendelssohn. Navy Seal, one of a couple in there for Aidan O'Brien. Pandergate as well. He's a fascinating runner for Christophe Clement under Dylan Davis. Um, let's go back to Saudi Arabia. It is that night that throws together a load of key form runners throughout the card, not least Forever Young, who did win the Saudi Derby over that little bit shorter than this. Now, again, Things weren't perfectly straightforward from the get-go, but this horse has got a lot of class. Yeah, which gets him through here on a track where you can do this with greater ease than you normally can on Dubai World Cup night at Maidan. Um, he just ducked right at the start. He did it on his on his last start back at home as well and just missed it a bit. I guess that's my concern. He's definitely the most able horse in the race. Yeah. It's just that sort of hang-up I have uh, about, you know, getting too far back here is it look it's a it's a smaller field maybe a, maybe a lesser quality field and, and he just gets there with the shadow of the post i'd love him to go and win it that you know and be one of the sort of new japanese superstars on on the scene he probably will but uh, i thought i should try and get a bit creative at least at some point so i've swerved him Have personally you? yeah you no i'm going with him okay it's probably very sensible mm. yeah OK, I've put up one wild card in Dania, who won that race last year, yeah. so it's not even. Um, let's have a look at Pandergate, trained by Christoph Clement. Dylan Davis, has mentioned, takes the ride. This horse is going to be breaking from stool eight. He uh, represents the USA. He's the only US runner in the race. He's quite interesting, though, isn't he? Well, I think the vibes have been quite strong about this fella. And he's not got a dissimilar run style. You know, he's, 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 he's probably going to be a, a patient, wide and late horse, unless they look to change that up out of eight. I, I guess I come back to the fact that with the two non-runners, it's not a massive field anyway. So, you know, if you are coming wide and late, you're not going to perhaps have too many horses to run around. I mean, this was pretty impressive, was, yeah. but it, it's just, I guess I'm, I'm looking for the angle into the race. Can something get away? Can something get out? on the speed and get away from them, which you do see sometimes in this race. That's right. um, obviously, obviously Dermot Sertagaki did it, Mendelssohn did it. I mean, it, it's, uh, we see it at this track time and time again. So that was my angle in to try to find the winner and, and get the two horses who are more fancied beaten. Um, let's have a look at Aidan O'Brien's, or one of his runners, in the form of Henry Adams, who um, it, we don't need to remind ourselves too much that he has been behind the best, the best two-year-olds in Europe, Rosalian city of Troy on this occasion and things didn't necessarily go completely right for Henry Adams who represents Aidan O'Brien who won this race with Mendelssohn he's won it I think a few times as well even when it was on the the Tapita he's um optimistic that being a son of no name ever he's, he's all right for this and like I said Aidan O'Brien's certainly no stranger to to bringing the right horse for this race yeah uh it, it, I guess it's just not a dirt pedigree not really no but, name um, ever out of a Galileo mare doesn't scream um the dirt surface but ability wise uh, you know, I guess getting, you know, within five or six lengths of, of, of City of Troy, we didn't quite do that, but there or thereabouts is, is uh, you know, I guess it's earmarked him as going for an international challenge and, and, and trying to win a, a race like this. Uh, he is group two standard, I think. So I think long and short of it is the ability is probably there, but I'm not convinced the surface will ideally suit. So who's going to win it then, Tom? Uh, well, I think the, the the one I've tried to be clever with is Mendelssohn Bay. I thought he could run really well, yeah. Because he's well drawn. Um, he was better away last time. Now, he has been slowly away a few times, but last time was much better. And if I think if Pat Cosgrave does what he did last time, puts him in a similar sort of position, he's got a great chance of lasting home ahead of the closers. Uh, the he the might rider thinks he run. will. He, did, he certainly did on the, t on the day when I spoke to him after the race. Um, I didn't think there was much fluke to that either. Even um, though he wasn't the most well regarded, he goes into this very fresh... Um, the, the yard do have that slight curveball in the form of Guns and Glory, who only won just a couple of weeks ago. I know that Tiger Shea who rode him that day, thought he, um, he was a UAE derby horse from the very start of the season, so we'll see. But those local horses, and sometimes I feel like we are in, or I'm in danger of just going for something foreign because it's foreign and we've seen what the locals can do. But, but they're all right, a couple of these. Yeah, but for, I mean, history will tell you that's probably the sensible thing because quite mm. often the UAE Guineas winner then finds something too good in, in this from, from abroad, and that happens mm. time and time again. It'll probably happen again here, 
with Forever Young rated £9 his superior, but it's just more run style. I think there's a chance that Mendelssohn Bay can be in the best position and make use of that to make up for the fact that he's not quite as good at this stage as a horse like Forever Young. How many of these could you foreseeably think would be up to running in a Kentucky Derby and running the, there's only probably a couple of them if you know what I mean. One. Yeah, it's Forever Young, isn't yeah. it? So have you come back to your way of thinking that you might have gone for the wrong one? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm, I can't go for four <laughs> international favourites in a row, so I've got to try. No, it's lovely. The box. Go for a break. Right, that was a look at um, the UAE Derby. We've differed with our opinion, but um, that's what the game's about. That's race five on the card today. Uh, race six, a fabulously wide open race. It's got last year's winner in the Golden Shaheen, but it is a race where the international challengers come with claims and there are a load of them. It is the Golden Shaheen. Let's take you through the horses who run in this, as mentioned, extremely deep and competitive race. Bold Journey comes across from America. Bill Mott, the trainer. Trainer of the legendary cigar, first ever winner of the World Cup. Colour up. Let's hope he runs well for the locals. Don Frankie, Freedom Fighter. That horse is trained locally. Hopkins, another US challenger. Trained by Bob Baffer, Igniter for Japan, Keodori for Japan, leading spirit, that horse for um, Touch Gold Racing, gave him a great day uh, on Super Saturday a few weeks ago. Muhib, he's trained locally, he's interesting. Nakatomi, another in there uh, to come across from America, Wesley Ward, the trainer. Remake for Japan is here for another go, run classics, Abelius, who won it last year, and Tuz. He's in there, and on his going days here, he's very, very good indeed. Right, let's have a look at Nakatomi. Nakatomi, who we're going to have a look back on the, um, the run in the Breeders' Cup sprints. That was behind Elite Power. He's since run and been a bit unlucky behind Sibelius. Actually, he was a bit unlucky this day. I think um, you're expecting things to drop right for him at some point, and if it does, he's got a big chance. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess, you know, he, he ran well here. Uh, he, was, he was, you know, fairly well held in the end. Yep. Um, so I, he will probably have to step up a bit on this, I'd have thought. Um, you know, stall number seven, uh, Jamie Spencer, I, I think, will will want to be fairly proactive out the gates just to just to get a position and having having within sort of, you know, uh, challenging distance, if you like, mm -hmm. turning in. Um, I thought there were others who were similarly fancied with a stronger chance personally. What okay. do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm not going for next. I, I found sort of reasons why I thought he probably should have won last time against Sibelius and he didn't and we'll talk about that horse I know half fancy that that form's going to be maintained come what may let's have a look at last year's running of this race Sibelius won it are you with Sibelius no I'm not okay. he beat look at Ryan Moore that incredible ride in the the yellow colours over on that far side he went for that daring run up the rail it paid off perfectly Switzerland was the challenger down the near side head bobbing finish and this time around the trainer Jerry O'Dwyer is more confident because he knows what happened last year they did it, they shipped him over at the same sort of time, he prepped in the same race, he's done it before, why can't he do it again? Yeah, I if, thought he had a great I thought he had a great of all those in the group sort of that are fancy towards the top of the market internationally, I thought he had the most solid claims personally. Did you? I almost think that the, the draw in stall six is gonna be better than last time around because he had to take kick back and go for a dart up the inner, which is not the way to go here. It's not always easy to do. So I think stall six he might just be served better. Basically I took a positive view of that form yep. that he did well despite where he came from and he should have a better, smoother passage round this time around. So uh, I think he of all of them has the, the best chance of winning personally. I think he ticks more boxes than the rest. Right, let's go back to Riyadh for the, the dirt sprint back on the 24th of February. Tuz didn't run any kind of race really because the track was too deep for him. I, I think he's just a happier horse here, so hopefully it hasn't uh, left too much of a, a legacy with him. Further up and in the better positions, Kia Dori, Bold Journey and the actual winner, Remake. My one thing with this is, Japan just don't win this race, do they? They haven't won the Golden Shaheen, unless I've got that completely wrong. And I don't really see any reason why Remake's going to come and win it this well, year. It's the, same, it's the same thing I'm going to level against him that I've levelled against the horse in the derby that I'm going to level against a horse like Ushba Tesoro. If you are supporting horses to try and do it in that style at this track, more often than not, you're going to get it wrong, I think. So, yeah, I'm sure one of those three will win, but I'm not, 
I'm not, I can't support Remake to do it that way here. I mean, he didn't do it last year. No, he didn't. I mean, I know we got within a couple of lengths. I mean, he was at the back of the team. Why, why would he beat Sebelius this time around? I, I don't see it personally. Well, well, I guess one thing that will help him is you've got pace in the form of Dom Frankie. Yep. Tours is a pace angle. Um, Igniter out of one possibly will probably have to go forward. He's quite rapid. There's, a, there's another one in there I, I know I'm missing. There are four, at least four solid bits of pace, Hopkins. So that will help, definitely. But he still never looked like winning last time and he was still beaten two lengths. So I think, I, I think he might get too he far could, back. He could run on after the race has been lost. Um, but with all that in mind, I'm going to go for a closer who I think is a class act. I'm excited. I yeah. don't know. Uh, I, I'm I going to go for a horse that's drawn in 13. Muhib. Yeah. I can see it. Can you? Yeah, yeah don't worry. That's what happened last time. I think he... I thought... <laughs> I don't want to underplay it. I thought that win was brilliant on the 26th of January, on Fashion Friday. Um, he's going to go into this incredibly fresh. It doesn't, it doesn't worry me that he's got a wide draw. He's not going to do what Zenden did all those years ago and absolutely fly across. Um, he'll settle in. Michael Costa thinks they've got him in a brilliant place. And I can see him tanking on the home bend before finishing with a real flurry. I, I think Ron Wood in the Racing Post is a great judge. He's napped the horse, so I was pleased to see that. Wow, he's yeah, napped, napped the horse. The horse yeah. that's, that's brave. Yeah, but, but he doesn't have to sit here and talk rubbish like we do. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to nap him as well. OK, good. That is... <laughs> I'd, it'd be great, wouldn't it? For my, the season yeah. he's had, it'd be great for Michael Costa and Ben Cohen to, to have to, a, a, Yeah, a to punctuate it success. with this one, because no, yeah. no disrespect, no one's going to remember a load of the winners at Jebel Ali and perhaps some of the lesser winners here. But the second that you go and win a Group 1 on World Cup night, that's when you've, you've really launched yourself. Agreed. So yeah, going good, good luck to him. I, I'm going for Sibelius. OK. Back to the international favourite. Good man. He's a good-looking horse, that as well, isn't he? Yeah. Um, as it, as like is, you, incidentally, in equine form, <laughs> past it. Don Frankie is a beast. Let's, I, I'm He's looking big, forward to seeing a monster mm. horse. Yeah, good, good. Um, that was a golden chain. That was race six, which we're very much looking forward to. Uh, race seven. We're moving on into the big three. We've got the Dubai Turf, which is the first of the final three races, which are very much headline events. Let's have a look at the runners for the 1800 metre Group 1 feast. And that is exactly what it is. Cairo's there, it's new colours. Went our favourite for the UAE Derby last year. Uh, Calif, trained by Fauzi Nass over in Bahrain. Uh, Catnip, horse number three for Michael Sidham, who's won the World Cup. Dan on Beluga, ran on really well for second in this last year. Uh, De Deuce does get a run this year, fascinating runner. Factor Cheval, good French horse. Lord North, can he make it four in a row? Remarkable. Luxembourg, horse eight. A ten row sky for Japan, measured time. Remarkably, Charlie Appleby and William Bilk have never won this race. Eleven is real world. Back to form, isn't it? Yeah. You would just wouldn't have thought it. Anyway, so that could many, change today. Yeah, so many good horses for us. Sand, Sandinato, straight Aaron, Voyage Bubble, Namur. Very international, this. And um, what about Nashua? She could foil her own stablemates' party. She could beat Lord North, but we'll see. Plenty of them could, I think, um, including De Deuce, who gets the run this year. Sadly, we didn't get to see him on World Cup night last year. Um, he's... Um, Best horse in the race. Well, he's interesting. He's in this race, isn't he? Is yeah. that fear of the other Japanese horses in the Shima Classic? Probably. probably. Like, yeah, could, probably. Because Yutakataki believes his run style will be suited that much better to this race. And the Japanese record recently, with the exception of Lord North, is irresistible in this race, isn't it? So, Yutakataki, every time he rides a horse, does something similarly. He holds him up, he lets him find his rhythm, he's not afraid to challenge on a bend. I mean, he absolutely bolts up here. He's a, he's a strong travelling horse who will probably be fine back at the distance on the face of it. It's more the run style and will there be enough pace? I mean, maybe Cairo in there, who I think is probably there a little bit for Luxembourg, will help Luxembourg, on that. Well, run. Luxembourg could get a little bit. Do you think Ryan might just try and elect to go on? There was no pace in this last year, do you remember? None I, at all. I don't think that will suit him ideally, personally, because I think he's a little bit of a thinker. And, I, and, and do you not think he probably that, should have won last time. Yeah, but over this distance, sending him on that, might be Maybe. that a little bit more straightforward. Look, look, who so I don't, judge I don't, what Ryan Moore does? He should, I don't mean he should have won in Saudi. He, he should, I, I think he should have run the, the, the start before that okay. um, in, in Hong Kong, personally. But, yeah, um, possibly he will. Possibly. God, honestly, there's, I, I've been around the houses here, uh, and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not sure who's going to win. I, mm. I mean, I can't believe that Charlie Appy hasn't won the race because he must have so many horses for it. And measured time, again, is he's very difficult to knock on what he's achieved. But it's interesting they said Master of the Seas to Keeneland and this horse runs here. I know he is the Dubai horse, but you'd think Master of the Seas would have a good chance in this race. So it probably, 
it probably lends in the direction of, of measure time. We can talk about him in a minute anyway. What about Lord North? I mentioned there was no pace when he won this last year. Dan on Beluga caught the eye when running on, but Lord North has just been this incredible horse. I know he shared it with Panther Lassa, but it's been his title for three years. He is just exceptional. The trouble is, and Frankie suggested this last night, this is a this is a deeper race than last year. It has to be. That second surf. Look at, just watch the way he closed. Yeah, in a better a better pace, he would have been. But Lord North, yeah. Well, I think, but I think again, that's a that's an ability thing of the horse to lay up in a good position. Um, you know, Lord North is he's drawn eleven here. He will want pace. He'll probably get it. I think it's a tough ask. I think it's I think it's hope more than expectation if you're expecting Lord North to, to go and win this year's renewal. But I don't. Are you with him? No, I don't. I don't no, think no. he will win. No. Oh, okay. But I don't think he, I don't think I've ever thought he'd win, and he's done it three times. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. Who's the idiot? I don't think. No, I agree. I don't think he. he I don't. He's not the most likely winner, but it would be. It would be magic. Um, do, do you fancy measured time? No. Okay. No. <laughs> Just loads of no's. <laughs> no. Let's go through some more of them. Real world. So that I don't know. No. Let's now look at the the Jebel Hatter, which has its new home, of course, on the the Fashion Friday in late January, which gives a good old break for this horse. I mentioned the fact that they could have run Master of the Seas. He's gone to America. This horse is here. Do you remember on um, that December meeting, Festive Friday, we had the the legend Kieran Fallon in the parade ring, and William Buick had opted for this one rather than a couple of other good horses. And this was coming off a defeat. That horse uh, measured time, and he said that this was an absolute certainty. Mm. And I think we kind of went against him, or I certainly did. And times proved that um, he was bang right. He's a good horse. And William Buick had the choice of a yeah. couple of higher rated horses went for this horse. I can see it. I uh, just then look at the horses he's beaten, no disrespect to Erzin Jan and Ottoman the Fleet, and go, it's this is hard. a lot better. Like, he's rated 116. I think there are eight horses rated the same or higher than him in the race. Um, so that tells you, I think, everything you need to know, right? He's mm. still got to improve. But he is on the up. We don't know the limit of his ability. I don't know if this is helping. But I, I, he's not my selection, but I wouldn't be surprised. His half-brother runs on the card as well, doesn't he? Rebels Romance. It's been a good family. I thought Facteur Cheval could run well for France. He's got form with the best milers in Europe. But I am going to go with De Deuce, who didn't run last year. But I hope he's going to make up for it this year. Yeah, he, I, I, I think he's the most likely winner, definitely. Okay. But I, I, I'm going to go with Voyage Bubble as a sort of oh, yeah. very consistent performer. And this is his distance. So that's why I'm largely positive about him. Ties in with the best of the form in Hong Kong. Yeah, Beauty Eternal, Golden 60 and, and Romantic Warrior and so on. So um, proper international race, it should be. The Dubai Turf is race seven. Uh, race 8 is the last turf race, and I think for many people, you wouldn't be, well, I wouldn't be alone in saying that. I think this is the race of the night. It's the Longines Dubai Shima Classic, 2,400 metres. Some of the absolute stars from all corners of the world come together for this race. Can't wait for it. Let's see the runners for the Shima Classic of 2024. So often, as Tom said earlier, it throws up a good race, and I think this is no exception. Junko's a brilliant horse in France, went and won it in Hong Kong uh, back in the last year. Justin Palace stays very well, good horse for Japan. Point Lonsdale, horse three is there. Uh, Fred no Brian, but he's not his most illustrious runner in the race. Rebels Romance is back to try and win it this year. Shariar did win it two years ago. Horse five. Uh, horse six is Sim Camila. It's going to be a tough ask. Sis for hand, ditto that comment. Sis, uh, Spirit Dance has been incredible all over the, the Middle East region from Bahrain to what he did in Saudi Arabia. Can he do it in Dubai? The dual derby winner, the Breeders' Cup turf winner, August Rodan is horse nine. Star Mare Emily Upjohn is ten. It's outrageously it's good. Just. Yeah. Stars on Earth, who's got form tied in with Equinox, with the juices there. Um, but in her way, and in all their way, might just be this, this fabulous filly from Japan, Liberty Island, daughter of Juramenta, who went second in this race. She might just go and win it. Let's have a look at her second two. The horse that needs no introduction, the best of the lot, who's sadly no longer uh, in racing. It's Equinox, who won this race last year, the Shiba Classic, and he finished his career with a plum. Something had to finish second to him. It was Liberty Island. She is the best of her generation out there. Yeah, I, I think, and the question I, I've been asking all week myself and others is, is getting to within four lengths of Equinox better than what a horse like August Rodan has achieved in his career? And I don't, I don't know is the honest answer, but I just fancy that right here, right now, Liberty Island is going to be the most likely winner. And on that, Stars on Earth on the international market is probably a fairly big price because she's almost 
priced up on account of the fact that you you know she's not going to go and beat Liberty Island, but that wasn't a bad effort there either. Oh, so I'm I'm very positive about both of them to be honest. And her form could have had that little bit of a boost from De Juice half an hour earlier or whatever it is in the in the Dubai turf as well. Um, so we shall see. Let's have a look at the Breeders' Cup turf. Um, we saw Ryan Moore going for that daring run up the inner on Sibelius last year. In the Breeders' Cup turf, he did something on August Rodan who capped off his three-year-old year with a fine win. Shariar was a little bit unlucky, finished third, he's won this race before, but um, it's just fantastic. A, that he's racing at four, and B, this incredibly valuable stallion prospect is here in Dubai. Yeah, he, that was a brilliant ride, but equally, as far as what the horse achieved, I mean, he had to be, you know, nimble enough to do it, but it went pretty smoothly for him at the same time. I'm mm. not levelling that as a criticism, um, I'm just, you know, it was a an e a brilliant performance and, a, and an even better ride, if you like, I thought, on the night. Uh, obviously, his derby form, we can now, I think, say that this is a derby that, that has worked out really well. Uh, I, I can't really crab him. I, I, if this was the middle of the, of the European turf season, I think he'd win. But it's just, you know, where I know that Aidan won this with St Nicholas Abbey a few years ago, but St, mm. St Nicholas Abbey the year before was also beaten in the race. By Sirius de Zegler, wasn't it? Correct, by yeah. Sirius de Zegler. So... Uh, I just, I guess I have in the back of my mind, where is he going to be, August Rodin, with a long turf campaign ahead of him? And it might be those sort of percentage minutiae that make the difference against a horse like Liberty Island. So I'm just siding with the filly. I'm not, I agree with all of that. Oh, good. Doesn't mean much, does it really? Um, because, and I think that one from Europe is going to be ready for today. And I think that's Emily Upjohn. Uh, so you're with her? Mm. I mean... Her form is... Her oh, freshness is good as well. And the hood on is a massive plus. Like, she, she, she wore the hood in, at Epsom, which was a brilliant performance. She then... It was then whipped off, and, you know, and then she, she didn't handle it at, back at Ascot without the hood on. When the lights come on here and it's all buzzy, she's, that, that hood's going to have to work. Mm. But I can see it. Um, we'll have a look at... Um Doha form from midway through February. Uh, it's good to have Rebels Romance sort of ticking over again. I think that's a, a fair comment. He's, uh, in recent times, not had to be at the level that he once was. Maybe he can come back to that. I don't know. This was an inspired ride from Buick, wasn't it? You were there that day. He, he sort of seized it and it proved the winning of the race. Don't get me wrong, it's a class act, but I still think it was a brilliant ride. Yeah, and the Japanese horse didn't help his chances by under Joe Moreira hanging out to the centre of the track. Do you think this is good enough form to win? This? No. But I was with him last year when I thought he was coming into this in a better place, probably, when he'd won the Breeders' Cup turf and Equinox wiped the floor with them. I'm not inclined to think he ran his race that day. But even if he runs his absolute best race, I still think there are two or three in here who are going to be better. Yeah, uh, all of that. Uh, I think this is not... He, he, you know, he's not quite the... Um, Charlie Appleby Godolphin horse that has won this in the past and my god you are going to have to be every bit the best to take this yeah. this year's renewal Do you, did you want to um, what can else did you want to add to Emily well, up John can we yeah about to say I th because this is the race of the night I think we can have a, a wild card as well or a, an out okay. and mine would be number one Junko who is not he's a Hong Kong Vars winner I know he was beaten in that race at Shanti last time but I think time's going to tell the winner was good it is exactly the route that Andre Farb preps all of his horses that uh, the pre-Darshan he ran all right um, and I think he's been long considered for having a crack at, at this race. And I think Junko, this time around, at 2,400 metres rather than the turf trip last year, is a, a different horse altogether. I think he can run really well. And on the international markets, he was, a, I thought, a ridiculous price yesterday. Uh, Spirit Dancer, I want to mention because it would be unbelievable. Would. And, I mean, you know, he, he loves the Middle East almost as much as we do. So uh, that... Is that possible? <laughs> Maybe not. That 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 it's it's not impossible that he goes and 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 places here, uh, but I think I struggle to see him winning it. The one I thought was a bit discounted was Shaya, winner two years ago last year. Just I think his best chance is if Christian Demuro is positive on him again, because I don't think he's as good as the sort of horses that are going to be in and around him if he's ridden mid division. Mm. I think he should just try and get out and 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 and, and basically make it. Messy old race for anyone, wasn't it? Yeah. OK, um, what a race it is. Um, it is the final turf race. It's the Longines Dubai Shima Classic. But um, the action, well, it just hots up, given the fact that we've got the big one after that, the Dubai World Cup. One of the leading players is going to be the Saudi Cup winner, Senor Buscador. Let's learn a little bit about him. I mean, Todd, have you, have you ever had a horse like this with such guts and constitution? I've had several really gutty horses in my time, you know, maybe not as talented and gutty uh, combined, but uh, 
<clears throat> I've had some really gutty horses for sure. You know, race horses are they're just special animals. You know, they're they are uh, competitive for the most part. Some aren't, some are, but I've had quite a few, but not with the combination of his ability with the guttiness. I mean, when did you really think, all right, I'm onto something special here? The very first time I run him, we knew he is a nice horse, but you know, we've had hopes for other horses that showed a lot of talent in the morning, but we knew he is a nice horse. And then when he ran the first time, yeah, it was pretty impressive. I mean, uh, he's not a sprinter, or especially a five and a half furlong horse, and he just blew by those horses. And then the big test was his next out. You know, we went from five and a half furlongs to his next race being a mile in a you know, a, a, a prep for the Kentucky Derby, the Springboard Mile. And so that was a big test, you know, because a lot of horses are off the pace sprinters, can lay back and fly by horses that are easing up. And uh, man, he, that, when he won the Springboard Mile, we knew we had the real deal. Uh, Joey, this, this horse has now run, I, I think, at 15 different racetracks, if you include this one. Place, yeah. for, for a North American <clears throat> trained horse, that is decidedly unusual these days. How much do you enjoy being a little different, swimming against the tide, being a bit of a throwback? Oh yeah, no, it's, it's been incredible uh, where he's taken us. I, a lot of that has to do with the fact that, you know, Todd is based out of New Mexico, um, but has great people working for him, good, all good horsemen. And so we have the ability to travel uh, and the horse travels well. So, you know, if he, if he wasn't a good traveler, we wouldn't have had these opportunities, but no, he's. He's taken us to the West Coast, to the East Coast. We've run at you know, Oaklawn. Uh, we've been all over the country with him, and it's, it's been a lot of fun. And you seem to be able to combine the fun of this game with the commercial realities of the game quite successfully. How do you, how do you manage that? Because very few people do nowadays, it seems to me. Well, we focus first on the fun part, um, and then hopefully the uh, business side will take care of itself. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's, he's been able to compete at the highest level, and, and Obviously, he's made a lot of money, so that, that makes it all that more special. But um, first and foremost, you know, we want to have horses that can compete at the highest level and, and, and go to races. I mean, Joey, don't, don't spare his blushes here. I, I'm aware that Todd Fincher doesn't like too much praise. He doesn't like being showered with praise. But what has made this guy the go-to man for you? Oh, he's amazing. Uh, Todd's a, a superior horseman. Um, he puts all of his horses first, not just Senor Buscador, all of his horses first. Uh, he doesn't take any chances, doesn't take any risks. If the horse needs time off, they need time off. Um, he knows how to train race horses. Uh, he gets the results. I mean, you can look at what he does in his home state and then how his horses travel and they go out and they can compete with everybody else. So uh, yeah, we're, we're all in on, on Todd Fincher. And uh, if he was training in Dubai, I guess we'd be racing in Dubai, but thankfully he's back in the US. <laughs> How do you feel when you when you hear that? You couldn't get any better praise for a person, so uh, very thankful to have Joe Peacock in our corner. How much do you feel the responsibility of being a flag flyer for, yes, North America here, but specifically for, for racing in New Mexico? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'd love to fly the flag when you have a horse like Senor Buscador, you know. That, he's, he, uh, he represents us very well. Just in terms of this season, this year, how long, if at all, was, was this in the, in the planning? Or has it come as a little bit of a surprise? Uh, there's no surprise that he can compete, you know. It's just, you just, when you're dealing with racehorses, you deal with anything that can happen at any time. So uh, we take it, hate the cliche, but we take it one race at a time, one work at a time, actually. So yeah, we, we dream big, but you, you, you gotta stay in the moment. And really, that, that run in the Pegasus, Joey, I, I wasn't too far away from you watching that. Yeah. It was as agonizing a, a horse race as you could get for a horse who, who closes from, from off the pace. Right. Tell me a little bit about how you felt watching that race. Oh, it was exciting. I mean, gosh, he, uh, he, yeah. was, he was flying down the lane. And I, honestly, I, I, I thought, well, he's going to run a solid second. And then as it got closer, I thought, well, he might win this damn thing. So. Yeah, it was, it was, it was exciting. Uh, we were thrilled with the race. I mean, happy with the finish. We didn't win, but hey, you can't win them all. But yeah, he ran his heart out and, and got really, really close to National Treasure, who's a heck of a racehorse. So yeah, we were, we were excited about the race. Such a wonderful horse, such a wonderful athlete. To, to what extent, Joey, did your, did your pride in him really swell in, in Saudi Arabia? 
Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I think the thing that struck me the most about Senor Buscador lately is he seems to come out of his races really fast. Um, he was rolling in the grass the next day after the Pegasus and jumping and kicking. And I mean, so I feel like he's just really kind of come into himself. Uh, he's got a lot of personality. Um, and it just seems like these races don't phase him. It's just, it's like he almost knows that it's, it's his time to shine. You know, we've always had a lot of confidence in the horse, but now for everybody else to get to see that what he's capable of and what a superior race horse he is, that's, that's really the, the satisfying part of it. This is a, a different challenge. The mechanics of the race look different. Can he be as well suited to this as he was by one turn nine furlongs in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, this horse can run probably at the best in the world from seven furlongs to a mile and quarter, but the fact is he puts himself in a bad position every time and it's nothing we can do about it. He drops back to last. He puts 11, 12, 13 horses in front of him, which are all obstacles. So uh, um, you gotta have some sort of pace. You gotta have an honest pace for him because he's just, he's just gonna put himself in that position. and. Uh, uh, if you have a slow pace, you're not going to run down grade one horses 12, 15 lengths behind. So he'll, he'll make up ground on them for sure, but it's just that quality of horses. He just, he really puts himself behind the eight ball. Mm. And there's no point trying to change his game. He just does his own thing. We've tried. It just, that's <laughs> what he does. But he's, in a sense, do you think that's what makes him what he is? Because he's just taking as much out of himself as he needs to take out. He just puts himself in a bad spot. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's he just puts all the obstacles in front of him. He gets dirt thrown in his face. He never gets a clean trip. Uh, and uh, it's just an uh, attribute to, of how great he really is to, to close on those horses. So they'll, I think they'll be a good enough pace. I'm not, I'm, you, you always worry about it, but uh, he's going he's gonna to bring it every time. He always has. He's going to run great. And Joey, it's, it's well documented that this was the final horse that you bred with your, with your late father. How would he be looking down upon all this now? <laughs> oh, wow. He'd be, uh... yeah, he'd be loving it. Um, but I did tell somebody, I said, no, I'm not sure this ever would have happened. I'm not sure my father would let Todd fly one of his horses halfway around the world. So it may not have happened if he was still with us, but no, uh, yeah, he would love to see what's going on and, and how the horse is performing and, and how well Todd's doing with him and, and be just very proud of the whole effort. As such, a big one, one of the most important races certainly here in the Gulf region, but on the globe as well. It's the Dubai World Cup of 2024. It is race nine, the ninth of nine on the day. And we can bring you the runners for this historic race. Headed up by Clapton, he's disappointed a bit in Dubai so far, but we'll see what he can do today. Croupy's horse number two for trainer Todd Pletcher. Number three is defunded, these days trained in Saudi Arabia. Four is last year's derby winner, Derma Sotagaki. Five is Jura Aredi, another for Japan. Six, what a remarkable story it would be, this Kazakhstani horse, Kabir Khan, who's been making hay here in Dubai now. Uh, Laurel River ran in a sprint two runs ago, and now he's running in the World Cup. Eight is Military Law, who surprised a few when winning a trial for this last time. Nine is Newgate, Frankie Dettori looking to make it a record five wins in this race. Ten is Senor Buscador, the Saudi Cup winner. 11 is last year's winner of this, Ushba Tesoro, and the other of the Tesoros is horse number 12, Wilson Tesoro. Right, let's have a look at the Saudi Cup and what an amazing finish it was. Senor Buscador putting his head down where it mattered to deny Ushba Tesoro. They're going to do battle again and you throw in Derma Sotagaki as well and it's a good mix. Yeah, uh, and again, Ushba Tesoro doing what he did last year in the Dubai World Cup, coming from off it, looking here like he was going to go and win. And then Sunya Buscador coming and just nailing him on the line. Um, he was probably good value for a, for a tiny bit more, given that he had to switch outside Ushba Tesoro just at the start of that clip. But again, I'm going to level at both of them that you can't try and repeat that trick here. Even though Ushba Tesoro did it last year when Panthalassa helped set a, blister, set, set a blistering pace. I don't know, maybe they'll go really hard again, but I just think if you're su supporting horses with that run style, time and time again on this track, you'll get it wrong more often than you get it right, personally. What, do you, what do you think? Well, who's the best to come out of that race for you? The, the best horse? No, the, be the, the best player for today out of that race. Oh, I still think Ushba Tesoro. I think Ushba Tesoro will finish ahead of Senor Buscador. Do you? 
And what about Dermis Sotagake? I think Dermis Sotagake will win. Do you? Yeah. Me too. Oh, no, that's, that's kind of cute. Yeah. I like that. I'm pleased. Good. Yeah. Um, one man who won't want Derma Sotagake to win is uh, Yuga Kawada. He rides Ushba Tesoro among a number of star-studded rides on the day. He's got big chances to come. And, of course, Ushba Tesoro bidding for a double in this race. And from the back of the pack, here comes Ushba Tesoro with a rush on the far outside. Algiers to catch. Ushba Tesoro gains in. Goes by. Ushba Tesoro hits the front. Ushba Tesoro wins the Dubai World Cup for Japan. Were you worried in the early part of the race that he was going to be too far back, or were you always happy? こう、今までの経験 and do you feel in Saudi he ran up to his very best? He was just caught very late. He was it was fine margins. とても具合も良かったですし、ただコーナー so it, it, it sounds like this, the Dubai World Cup, is more his race than the Saudi Cup, right? え、コーナー4つの競馬で2000m で、Tell me about the mare Liberty Island in the Inoshima Classic. How good is she? Well, he's retired, so she's the best. <laughs> she has to be. Yeah, I hope. <laughs> so, that, that performance, beaten four lengths by Equinox, do you feel that that, is, that that still puts her in this race, the standout horse? Or do you, do you fear the rest of the field, the, the rest of the runners? Japan Cup. そこでイクイノックスにしっかりと挑んでしっかり負けましたけどそれもまたいい経験となったはずだと思ってますんでそれを今回どう生かしてくれるのか生かせるのかってところが大きなポイントだと思ってますいつ quite a deep race um a good amount of runners and 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 some very good horses how do you see the race unfolding in in your head with where she will be where you want her position during the race. Are you quite confident in her in her ability? You I feel like you're quite confident that she's very very good. もちろんです。how popular is she with the Japanese racing fans? We know how they you know, can really get behind a horse, particularly on this night, the likes of Armand Eye a few years ago, Equinox. Is she the horse now that the Japanese fans will really get behind, do you think? え、熱い思いを持って見てるんじゃないかと思います。その中でアーモンドアイだったりイクイノックスであったり、こう、このうーん、このワールド And why have we seen such Japanese domination do you think? Breeders Cups, Saudi Cups, Dubai World Cups across both surfaces, dirt and turf. What is it about Japanese racing particularly in the last decade which has made it so strong? まずはその生産者側の企業努力だと思いますし、素晴らしい馬を日本に連れてきて生産した上で 
まあ、調教過程も格段に進歩してますし、まあ、除菌のレベルも上がって全てにおいてのレベルが上がってきたことで整備された馬場で行われる競馬であれば日本馬がもうトップクラスであるということはこの数年たくさん証明してきてるってとこだと思ってます。Lastly, which horse are you most confident about? <笑>それぞれの走りをしてそれぞれの結果を得たいと思います。I was hoping I'd hear one name, but I appreciate the the, the diplomacy.、Um, Yuga, thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you so much. So then, Ushpa Tazoro will bid to emulate Thunder Snow and be the second dual winner of this very race. Came from miles back to win the Dubai World Cup in 2023, and when、well, they were talking in the draw earlier in the the week, guess wherever this horse is drawn, he's going to come. With the same sort of run style and hope it all drops right. Yeah, and at this point, Ben Duga had been up there throughout. It's starting to go backwards. Panthalas has dropped out the back of the telly, and here comes Ushba de Soro to just lower the colours of,、uh, of James Doyle's mount, who, I mean, I thought he was going to hang on, but you know, he'd raced a bit too close to the place, probably. So, I know you look back at that, he was a pretty comfortable winner, wasn't he? I just, is it going to work out similarly? And I'm, I'm, my, my gut just says quite possibly not. Uh, I think it'll be、I、tough to repeat, to repeat that trick. It's a hard race in Saudi.、So、I just have that lingering doubt, you know. I really do. Yeah, I, I guess. I hadn't, I, that's not really something I considered coming into this, but we might see that. I mean, that could be a line in depending on、um, what Saudi Crown does, because he had a tough race there. So yeah, may, maybe there the is. The one that, that didn't is Dermastosagake, in contrast.、Mm. And didn't he, he had an eye injury? He'd been、yeah. fighting one of his. On the plane, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that hindered him necessarily. I just think it's more to flesh out the Derma Setagake case. If you look at the Breeders' Cup Classic, which I think is going to ride a bit more like here than, than Saudi、yeah. translates better to here, you know, he comfortably held Ushpa t a s o r a I think that's the best form getting to within a length of Waita Barrio, even though Waita Barrio was really disappointing in Saudi. I think he, was, he clearly wasn't right. So I think there's an argument that he's got the best form. He's a track winner when ridden pros- positively in the UAE Derby last year. And I think Christophe Lemaire will do, do similar out of eight. He won't be too far back. And I think he you know, wants to be. Brave and ride him like that because normally that is your best chance here.、Um, a horse we didn't even know of. I'm not a big fan of Kazakhstan form or I haven't been following it a lot. This time last year was Kabir Khan, but we certainly know who he is now.、Mm. He, uh, he's amazing, isn't he? Just to look at him as well. The, the style and the swagger in these wins that he's put up since coming across to, to the UAE to join Doug Watson under Pat Dobbs. I, I think you were here for his, his debut and.、Um, He got tongues wagging that day, and of course, what he's done since certainly hasn't dampened any enthusiasm.、Uh, it would be magic. It, I, I would love to see it. I just can't quite believe the form is good enough in a race like this. You've got Fran Strauss, Clapton, Desert Wisdom, Walk of Stars, Military Law, Atletico El Colano in behind. I, I can't. I would love it, like, I, I, but I can't hand on heart, particularly at the price he is on the international market in and around the best of, of the world. I, he, he still needs, I think, to take a big step forward to, to win this. What he could be helped by, if there isn't bundles of pace, and the more I look at it, there, there probably is, with Wilson t o s o r o I imagine, go forward for Ushman. I think so, yeah.、Uh, he, out of two, if he gets out, he could be in a good position to challenge. And we don't know the limit of his ability. No, we don't.、Um... Doug Watson, all round good guy. Is it? And that was his、Big. first Group One win? Yeah,、um, thoroughbred. Always have to caveat that. Cor- I always do that.、Yeah. Um, But, and Pat Dobbs as well. He's been a mainstay in this, this, this place for, what, a couple of decades now? Yeah.、Uh, and、um, yeah, it'd be amazing for Doug to do it. He'll be, he'll be warmer of a pre race than we are right now. Right, let's look. He will. He'll be box walking, I can guarantee you that. Right,、um, Laurel River, winner in the, the Burj Nahar. Well, we, we all thought. Off the back of this, hey, they're going to go and win another good off in mile.、Um, none of it. They're having, I think, the, <laughs> what was the, the quote? There's 12 million reasons to try the Dubai World Cup. Exactly. I、yeah. guess there's obviously going to be doubts over the draw, doubts over the stamina. But one of the best compliments I thought was paid to this horse was actually from his former trainer, Bob Baffert. He said he really respects him. And he said, if they don't go quick enough, all horses can stay. It was funny that he came out and mentioned this horse as one that he was a bit worried about. Now he trains against it. Yeah. And, 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 You know, out of 12, it's not impossible. Thunder Snow did it from there or thereabouts under Christoph Sumio. You need, he needs to get out and get a position and then try and slow it up. Like, I think, I think he, he stays the trip. It's just how strongly run it is and how much work he has to do to get there. Like, and he's probably not a strong stay at the trip. On pedigree, I think he'll be okay at the trip.、Uh, I think he's good enough. 
but I, they would definitely have preferred to not have to do so much to get to the lead pretty sharply into that bend out of 12. I'd be more positive if he was drawn lower. But I, I have not finishing second. Do you? I think he'll go forward and just be caught. All right. Um, so, Derma Sasagaki to win it from Laurel River. Who's your third? Dura Eridi. OK. Who has obviously got the form from the UA Derby last year. And... Again, I, I, I'm just playing the angle that there's not going to be as much pace as 12 months ago. Maybe there will be, and he won't get too far back. I thought he was a bit overlooked at the prices, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm effectively trying to be clever and get the one-two from the Saudi Cup out of the three here. You? I'm going to go, as mentioned, Derma Sosigaki. And then in second, I've got Kabir Khan. I really hope he maybe do something like Algiers did last year, a similar run to that. And, and then I think of Shibata who I don't think is going to win it this year. I think he'll run on, but um, it will be for minor money we'll see um right let's um for the people that have just paused this bit and and wanted to fast forward to the selections at the end to get all of the the waffle out of the way this is your moment you can hear tom's selections starting off with the probably the most obvious one of the night which is asfan al khaladia in the kahela classic saudi crown to i think make all in the godolphin mile coltrane who goes well fresh star and mystery to be the first three-year-old to win the Alcoz. Mendelssohn Bay, bit of an outsider. Sibelius to win that race again. Voyage Bubble in the turf. Liberty Island, uh, the first of my Japanese hopefully winning selections. The Star Mare and Denver Sutagaki in the big one. Uh, we'll be hearing from international racing expert Kirsten Duke. She'll be part of the team a little bit later. And obviously our esteemed commentator, Pat Comerford. What a night ahead for him. Uh, these are my selections, going with Tom for the the star, Asfan Al Khaledia in the, the Kahila Classic for Saudi Crown. Scarni to go one better this time in the Gold Cup. Dania, can he win it again? Tom doesn't think so. I'm going to take a chance he might. Forever, no, he's forever young. Uh, Muhib is my nap on the cards in the Golden Shaheen. Dodeus in the turf. Uh, Emily Upjohn to win the Shima Classic and Derma Sotagake in the World Cup. I wonder how that's going to look by the time we get to 10 o'clock tonight or whatever time. Nine o'clock. Yeah. We lose an hour, don't we? No, 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 it's nothing. That's not in the UK. It does, does, no. doesn't happen no. here, just in the UK. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a tough night, isn't it? It always is. It, is, yeah. I think it starts easy and then it gets harder. Good. Um, thank you. Looking forward to it? Yeah, I, I can't wait. It's, it's, as I said at the, the top, everything, everything you want running, every horse is, is just about here. And the, the right connections are here as well. It's, it's always just about the best night of racing anywhere and I can't wait. There we go. Right, uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, we're getting closer and closer now to the first race. Uh, but before then, let's hear from some of the leading connections with our own man, Rishi Passat. Bupal, let's just jump straight into it. Laurel River going for the Dubai World Cup when a lot of people thought he may have gone for the Godolphin Mile, me included. So what was the thinking behind that? We thought about it and I think you asked me that after his last win. Um, but look, he wasn't stopping in the mile. You know, he was, um, if, if Tiger really wanted, he could have won that race by 10 lengths or 15, whatever, you know, by a wider margin. And, um, you know, I know he's by into mischief, but he's never been tried mile and a quarter, but his pedigree does scream at the bottom side of his, um, from, from the damn side of his pedigree. It does scream of mile and a quarter. Well, I guess the way you've campaigned him has left us open to thinking he's got a lot of speed, as well as his form stateside, where he showed a lot of speed. He started off sprinting here, then he stepped up in distance. What has encouraged you in what he does, is it his relaxed nature, to think that it's a possibility getting the distance in the World Cup. Well, I believe he could be like the next uh, ghost zapper. You know, he won, a, he won a six furlong group one and he won the Breeders' Cup Classic. You know, the good ones, they have to have speed. And, um, and then, you know, they will find out the stamina. But I think, I think he does have it. The other thing as well is that he used to be trained by Bob Baffert stateside. Uh, you spent a fair amount of time uh, under his stewardship. What was that like? It was an unbelievable experience. Um, we all know he's a, he's a legend of the sport and uh, he's won all these triple crowns and Kentucky derbies and now we're running against him. And what did he tell you about Laurel River? Um, obviously, he seemed to think he had a lot of speed as well. Yeah, he sent me a, he sent me a text message for his, uh, on his first race. He said, don't mess it up. <laughs> and, and, you know, we lost the race, so I didn't have a comeback at that. 
judging about the way he's gone through things, you talk about that win last time, and you speak about the ease of that victory. One thing that was noticeable was the beautiful rhythm he got into at an early juncture in his race. Has he always been like that in the way he goes about things at home? You know, Ty galloped him the other day, and um, what I saw, he just does everything too easy, you know? Um, he just doesn't even know he's had a gallop. And he did the same exact thing at the races as well. After the race, if you see, you know, he was, he was trotting back after the race and he had his ears pricked and it looked like he wasn't even blowing. So, you know, I think those very good horses, they can do that. And um, yeah, he's probably one of those. Tell me a little bit about your regard for the World Cup at World Cup night and the experience. I've always looked up to it. You know, when I was working with Satish, it was a dream that we'd have a horse to run in the World Cup. And, you know, we got horses like North America and we had, we had a couple of good horses to run there. And now to get a license under my name and, you know, with my team, it's just so proud to have horses in the World Cup. Have you considered the tactics in the race and how it may unfold? Obviously, he goes very well from the front. Well, he is a, he is a generous horse in front and, you know, this is how it's going to be if they want to if they want to come and go with him, they, you know, they'll have to go a proper, proper pace. So, you know, this is what he does. You know, we're not going to change anything. I know that he has, he has settled in America in those mile races. He has come from the back. But I think now he's got plenty of speed and if they want to go with him, then they'll have to go very hard with him. And have you considered what it would be like to win the World Cup? You know, you have those expectations, but you got to you got to keep a lid on it. You know, you can't get ahead of yourself. You're not um, going to tell us on camera. Well, you know, you obviously run those horses in those races because you think that they'll win those races. You know, and um, we've had North America as favourite, and he he and he missed the break, and you know, so you can you can you can get your dream shattered very quickly. So, and that's why these races are championship races because it's so hard to win. It's so hard to do it. And uh, yeah, look, we're, we're, we're going in there with confidence. A horse is good. Hopefully get a good draw, got a good jockey on him. So, yeah. And I'd like to ask you a little bit more about Tiger Shea. He's been perennially one of the leading riders here. No one's ridden more winners than Ty in the UAE. What's that relationship like between the two of you? It's a wonderful relationship because Ty is a very hard worker. He never stops, you know, even and. Um, you can get a text from him at nine o'clock at night and, you know, he's going to be talking about a horse. And, you know, he's got the will to win, um, you know, and he knows that track very, very well. So there's a, he's a, he's a, I think he's a very good jockey. I'd like to ask you about some of your other runners on World Cup night. We'll go to the Godolphin Mile. You've got three in that race. Uh, Walk of Stars, I think the principal chance of the three. But you've also got Remorse, who I think is a horse that you put up at the start of the season as, as one to follow. Uh, and Southern Artist, who's one of the outsiders in the race. Tell me about how they all compare against each other and who you think might be the principal hope. Well, I think Southern Artist is actually a young pretender. He's very inexperienced. Um, I think it's only his sixth or seventh start. And, you know, he's, he's hanging with the big boys. But I think mentally it might just come a little bit too early for him. But he has to go into these races to learn. But I'm not taking anything away from him. On talent, he's got immense talent. Then we've got Walker Stars. He is another one, super talented horses. You know, Charlie, Charlie ran him in the Epsom Derby. And we bought the horse thinking that he's going to be a World Cup horse. Um, he's another one of those who's uh, a little bit quirky. Uh, he goes with a pony every day. It's his fourth start on the dirt, plenty of speed. He's got a good draw if he just sits behind them. And if the stamina kicks in, you know, I think, uh, I think it'll be good to see. And remorse, so we saw uh, your lovely, a better half, Caroline, on board this morning. Yeah, he's in, he's in fine pedal, actually. Uh, he was a little bit late to get ready. We ran, him, we ran him on Super Saturday. He was only probably 60% fit, and he even surprised me that he ran actually so well. He's a, he's a horse. He's, a, he's run in two Dubai World Cups and a Saudi Cup. Mile might be a bit short, but you can't rule him out. He's a very classy horse. Let's move on and talk about your runners in the UAE Derby. Uh, some really interesting horses, because they're all unexposed. Obviously, there are a lot of unexposed horses in the race. Talk me through them. I won't trade them for any other horse. I know the Japanese horse is unbeaten, and, you know, they say that he's, he's only here just, just for a run to go to the Kentucky Derby. But uh, we all have to do this and run and see what happens. Um, 
Mendelssohn Bay. Uh, he's got a lot of stamina. He's by Mendelssohn, who actually won the UAE Derby and I think broke the track record. And then he's he's out of a Curlin mayor who's won the Dubai World Cup. So, you know, I think two definitely good combination in there. And he's drawn three. It's a perfect draw for him. And then we got Guns and Glory, who's by a great sire, um, gun runner. And he won by 12 lengths. So, yeah, you know, I won't trade them for anybody else. Three chances as well uh, in the Dubai Golden Shaheen. Talk me through the three runners this year. You've got Freedom Fighter, uh, Leading Spirit, and Tuz, who I think would be the main contender for you. Yeah, Tuz would be the main contender. I mean, his weapon is his speed. He's got plenty of speed. He loves fast ground. When he won here, he was very impressive. He ran a quicker time than the Golden Shaheen last year. Uh, I think he was 1104. Uh, if he gets a good draw, but he's just unlucky with the draws, he always gets a car park draw. So hopefully we are, we're, we're due for one, you know, we're due for one now. So if he gets a good draw, he gets out there and rock and rolls, he's, he's very good. The other two are of our interest, Re Leading Spirit's been a wonderful horse for you for some time. And I love the way Freedom Fighter seemed on such good terms with himself here this morning. I think we've had a good straight run with him this time. Physically, he looks good. Richie, Richie Mullen galloped him the other day and he galloped really well. Um, I think he's gonna, he should run his best race this time. And then we got Leading Spirit who always comes from the back and picks up the pieces. So it's usually a very hot pace in the Golden Shaheen. And if that is, the, if that is what's happening, then he'll pick up the pieces. What would it mean to the stable to have a winner on World Cup night? I know you've had the experience before, but how does it, uh, how does it define your season? Or does it define your season? Well, it's the pinnacle of our season. You know, this is what we work for all year. You know, it's uh, what we, everybody works for all year. And uh, World Cup is our is a World Championship or Olympic finals. You know, so it it means a lot. This is what we work for all year round. So if that happens, it's it's definitely going to be, yeah, it's going to be brilliant for the stable. You've had a terrific season by anyone's standards, anyway. I think you've had 26 winners at Maidan. Charlie Appleby, everyone's raved about the fact that he had 24 and he's had a, a wonderful time dominating on the turf. But how proud are you of, of what you've achieved there this season? Yeah, Charlie and I, we're great friends. And uh, we've always got a little bit of a banter that, um, you know, whoever leads at Maidan's got a Range Rover as, as winning prize. So, <laughs> so I told him, I said, listen, last three years I've, I've, I've led the championship at Maidan anyway. He goes, you know what, this year I'm just going to buy you one. So it was a, it was a, it was a funny banter. But... Uh, I mean, you know, Charlie, but the thing is, I, I get a little bit of a head start. You know, Charlie only starts, Charlie starts quite late in the season, but I mean, you know, it's brilliant to do it. It's, um, it's a great team effort. A Laurel River fascinating local runner in the big one later on tonight, race nine, which is the Dubai World Cup. We learn a bit more about some of the leading contenders for the whole night at the prestigious gala dinner staged in the heart of downtown Dubai at the Burj Khalifa, the Armani Hotel, a little earlier this week. I'm not worried about the draw. Um, as we saw in Saudi, he actually likes being dropped in. And um, when he won the Winter Derby trial at Southall, uh, we actually dropped him in over a mile and a half and he had the pace to pick up and uh, beat the then um, future derby winner or winter derby winner. So the form was good that day, but he can, he loves to settle behind and, and finish strongly. So the, the draw doesn't bother us now. You're happy now. Do I look happy? Very. Yeah, yeah. happy and relaxed, oh, yeah. And so is and so's he, he's in, he's in good shape. So um, yeah, we're very happy with him at the moment. I'm really pleased, I think, being drawn next to William Knight's Billy, that was a course record uh, breaker last time, um, gives me confidence we're drawn on a pacey side and I think to, to get the right sort of lead into to a race of this calibre, um, we're coming here in good form, I'm very happy. Really pleased the way he's travelled, um, uh, he's eaten really well, he's only lost, he only lost five kilos in, uh, he recovered a few kilos and, and yeah, we're five kilos lighter than we were when, when we left home. We made some nice entries for him last year and I'm really pleased he's here to take his chance. He's got to prove it, but I think um, we're, we're pleased that he has shown us enough to, to, you know, respect his chances really. It's a step up in trip for him, uh, a bit unknown, but Richard says, you know, he's done a good piece of work and, you know, he's always finishes, his, 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 both races he's finished well still strong and jockey said pulling him up was a 
bit of a go. So yeah, I think all the signs are he should 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 make the trip. We have to have confidence in two things: the pedigree of the horse, without question. Franklin's a fantastic, and a young jockey, of course you know, is a calm, really tactical, very tactical young jockey. And I think with those two things, it gives us a chance. When he presses that button, he gets him in position. He's twice he's come finished like a train, and hopefully he can do it again. Yeah, draw was good. We drew a good spot, and we got move, room to maneuver. Uh, we have a long way to the first turn, so we got plenty of time to move over close to the rail. We're happy with it. I mean, it's hard to say what's going to happen when they open the gates, right? But. Um... Our horse's running style hasn't changed since he was a two-year-old. He's going to be towards the back of the pack, um, and then when he gets good and comfortable, he'll start running, and he'll be flying at the end. We you know, just hope that that's enough. You just never know. He loves the track here, so he worked over the track with Clapton the other day. They worked really nice. Both those horses did, and uh, it's a good sign. Well, I'm joined here by Pat Comerford, race caller for the meeting. Pat, how fantastic is it to be here? Yeah, good to see a familiar face too, Kirsten. Thank you very much. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's very exciting. As we can see, presenters like yourself, horses, connections, we've come all over the world to, to I guess, come into this big feature event and, and I guess strut their stuff and hopefully be able to pick up some of the great prize money on offer tonight. And also, it's not only the money that's involved in the races as well, it's it's the it's the prestige that is winning a, a big race on Dubai World Cup night and um, yeah, there'll be, uh, there'll be plenty of people hoping that their horse is the one that crosses the line first. Absolutely. It can turn you into a household name, that's for mm -hmm. sure. Now, how are the nerves ahead of calling a meeting like this? A bit of a change from Australia, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, it is. certainly is. Um, it's, it's, it is nerve-wracking, uh, that's for sure. I think because you know how important these races are to a lot of people and there are going to be some quintessential moments throughout the meeting where it's you know it's going to be in the memory books for a very long time so there is that pressure but at the same time you know you, you can't be more I couldn't be more prepared for tonight uh, tonight and, and what's to occur in the in the afternoon kicking off very soon and uh, yeah I'm just looking forward to getting it all underway I think after a couple of races I think the nerves will start to ease a little bit it's always a bit like that isn't it the anticipation is mm -hmm. kind of the hardest mm -hmm. bit but once you get rocking and rolling mm -hmm. you'll be off and gone sure. now the big one mm -hmm. have you got a tip for us yeah, look, I think Kabir Khan is the untapped potential in the race. It'd be a wonderful story as well. Um, he He's obviously a, a horse that, you know, to, to many people from a, from a selling point of view, was a bit of a forgotten horse. He was a last day purchase uh, at the uh, at the Keeneland sales for $12,000. But the story, the fact that his father's won the race before, it would just be an amazing achievement for not only him, but also for Doug Watson, who's had to really manage this horse uh, over the last few weeks. They probably would have liked to have had a start in between runs, but it, it didn't pan out that way and um, he's coming into this uh, probably with a little bit more of a gap uh, than, than most of these other runners uh, in regards to starts so that's going to be a big question mark I think if there was a horse outside of him that I think could threaten him the most uh, I don't think uh, Derma Sotogake had too much of a gut buster uh, in Saudi Arabia on Saudi Cup night so uh, he'll be fighting and ready to go and, and Christophe uh, Lemaire one of the one of the best in the business on board I think he'll be uh, he'll be steering him he'll be giving a side at some point he's in safe hands that's for sure and we were just talking off camera how exciting is Laurel River oh very exciting yeah uh, he's uh, you know great to see the Judmont farm colors you know really uh, you know with it with a decent chance on the program as well he looks to be a horse I think will will be going forward that that gate is going to make make him have to be I guess force the issue a little bit early and look Ty Gaucher he knows this track better than most he's, a, he's an 11 or 12 time winning uh, premiership winning rider here uh, over the journey he knows this place like the back of his hand and if there was anyone who who was, you know, you want on, on the back of a horse that they're probably going to have to figure out, you know, where can we give him a breather in, at certain parts of the race? When can we press the issue uh, with a front-running horse like Laurel River? And especially considering we don't really know how he's going to go over 10 furlongs. So um, he's a big question mark in the race, but uh, he's a very exciting addition to the race as well. And you know what else is exciting tonight, Pat? You're What's making that? history. You're yeah. 28 years old, yeah. the youngest race caller to be calling at Maydan. Mm -hmm. How does that feel? Yeah, it's really good. It, it's a big honour, uh, you know, that, that I've been given 
in here to, to call this race meeting. And um, at the end of the day, you know, you, you look at it, you say, you know, it's very fortunate at, as, you know, the youngest person. But at the same time, I'm also coming into this uh, this job tonight with, with less experience than most of the other callers. So um, there's a there's a there's a big pressure with that. And, and hopefully all I can do is, is uh, well, I'm prepared as much as I possibly can. And hopefully I can I can deliver a, a good call for uh, for all those tuning in. We're in the same boat. Don't worry about it. We'll be fine. <laughs> it's going to be a fantastic night. Enjoy. Looking Cannot wait for the call. Thank you very much, Kirsten. Cheers.
The Dubai World Cup is uh, a prestigious event and uh, we have at Wanza Beer a very prestigious building, lifestyle focused, involving you know, many premium elements. We have two hotels, offices, 367 apartments, 103 of which are one and only branded. We feel that it's very much uh, aligned with the premium offering of the uh, Dubai World Cup. We are slowly uh, moving forward with the leasing for the office, which is a follow-up to the recent announcement that Wanzabil will sit inside the Dubai World Trade Center free zone. The racing is an amazing quality of you know, horses and uh, very high caliber competition. Uh, but also the social scene is, is, is fantastic also and it's a really an amazing event. Uh, it will be my pleasure to say uh, good luck to everybody and uh, obviously best, uh, may the best horse and rider win the race. We create a lifestyle in Imar and also we support tourism. This is why we support uh, Dubai World Cup. We'd like to see more people coming to this uh, lovely city. We have so many developments coming, especially uh, the Oasis, which is close to uh, Expo uh, City. And also we are expanding uh, in Alain Road. We enjoy uh, seeing people very happy because we are in lifestyle entertainment. And we are very happy to see people enjoying life during the Dubai World Cup. We'd like to see all of them working hard, be optimistic to enjoy the success. Altair Motors is all about customer service excellence. We are laser focused on our digital experience in addition to our world-class facility that are spread all across the UAE. We also have a long history of excellence, having won numerous accolades, including several Importer of the Year trophies and awards for record sales and service excellence. So you know, we have so many memories of the World Cup and each year we add new memories. It's such a fantastic event and like our business is ever evolving as well. Altair Motors is one of UAE's leading automotive dealerships representing international brands such as Jaguar Land Rover, Ford, Lincoln, Ferrari and Maserati. So it's incredible to see this spectacular international representation that we have this year. All I can say is my best wishes to each and every one of the participants coming here and reaching this level itself is a huge accomplishment. As they say, may the best horse and the best team win and all our good wishes to each and every one of them. We're a Dubai-based company. We were established in Dubai. We're a real estate developer. And our main function is to build communities. We, as a, as a developer, we have so many projects in the pipeline. There's uh, 40,000 uh, units under construction as I speak right now. Every race has been beautiful, but there was one uh, moment a few years ago when, when a horse that, was, that belonged to His Highness uh, and made the win, uh, he came out uh, celebrating and, and the whole crowd started to celebrate. It was just a, a super happy moment. We've been very fortunate to, to participate in, in big events uh, and I know how much work goes behind it. So I want to I wanna, you know, wish all the, all the competitors uh, the best of luck. And I know it's, it's a lot of work flying all the horses and everybody coming in and, and putting all of this work together and the team behind it. So um, uh, thank you so much and, and, and best of luck and uh, I wish everybody uh, a wonderful race and uh, looking forward to participating in this. Atlantis the Royal is really so proud and honored to be affiliated with this iconic race and we're in an iconic destination in Dubai and we feel and believe that Atlantis the Royal is this iconic resort that means so much to the world. Well, we're going to continue to grow and develop our brand. We're going to continue to expand our food and beverage portfolio throughout the destination. Uh, we're still going to continue to be driving and doing everything that we can to deliver the very best, which is what we all do here in Dubai. As we watch this great competition, uh, the very best of the best throughout the world coming together to race. So the spirit of competition is quite special. And also what we enjoy too is the drone show afterwards. And I think that all of that combined together really makes this a, a great communal moment for us all. Our message to the competition is obviously we want them to have a safe race, but we look forward to this thrilling competition, this moment, this opportunity, and obviously to the great winner. So we wish them all the best of luck as we endure on race five. 
DNA and uh, we are very proud uh, sponsoring this event. Uh, Nakhil has been be, uh, busy delivering a lot of projects around the city. We recently launched uh, some projects in uh, Dubai Island, Palm Jabal Ali, we launched the first phase of villas and uh, many more uh, to come. The winning of uh, Dubai Millennium, uh, it was an amazing uh, night and uh, I think everyone enjoyed uh, that race. I wish everyone uh, best of uh, luck. We look forward to having an amazing event. We look forward to receiving a lot of our uh, guests uh, from around the world in, uh, in Dubai. Horse racing is an important part of our culture in the UAE and has been for a long time. It shows how much we value hard work and always aim for the best. This year is special because it marks the 10th year that we have supported this fantastic event in Dubai. I have attended every Dubai World Cup for the past decade and I have seen it become bigger and better every year. The event brings together fans and professionals from all over the world and it is a great opportunity for us to connect with our partners, with our customer and with our local community. At DB World, supporting the Dubai World Cup matches our core value and we are proud to be part of it. And just like this sport, we will continue to push the boundaries and change what is possible. I am looking forward to seeing friends, both old and new, at the event this year and I wish the best of luck to everyone involved with the event. Over the past years, Longin timed the most important record-breaking performances in the world of horse racing. This was the case last year at the Longin Dubai Shima Classic when Equinox registered a track record timed by Longin. Equinox was named in 2023 Longin World's Best Racehorse. On the same evening, Longin timed yet another record when Broom took home the trophy with a new time record. Longin today maintains its close association with the most important horse racing events around the world, such as the Dubai World Cup, the Japan Cup, Prix de Dien Longin, Kentucky Derby, Royal Ascot, and many others. The brand is today recognized globally for its excellence in timekeeping. We are looking forward to an exciting new edition of the Dubai World Cup this year and celebrate timing excellence and history in the making on Saturday. We're quite pleased with the sponsoring of uh, this event, the Dubai World Cup, which is going for almost uh, over three decades. Uh, it brought in a lot of momentum and a lot of attention of the world. So there is a major expansion to new opportunities and new places that will be flying. Emirates is going through a major network expansion with more fleet is coming in. There is an, uh, a major revamp to a retrofit program that we're carrying uh, in terms of uh, embedding the premium economy as part of the product offering as well. We do respect uh, all the efforts, all the commitment, all the hard work and the skills uh, that they are putting uh, together in these races and all the preparation that they're making uh, to be ready for such uh, challenging uh, races. We do wish all of them uh, all the best and, uh, and uh, a fair and uh, healthy competition will, will carry on.
اهلا وسهلا بكم في النسخه الثامنه والعشرين من كاس دبي العالمي بمضمار ميدان اهلا بكم في سباق يؤكد مكانه دبي كوجهه رياضيه عالميه المستوى ومركزا رئيسا على خارطه رياضات الخيل العالميه في فعاليه سنويه تتنافس فيها افضل الخيول بالعالم امسيه تتخللها العديد من البرامج الترفيهيه التي أعدت خصيصا لجماهيرنا ونختتم بحفل عالمي خاطف للأبصار سيحطم العديد من الأرقام القياسية متمنين للجميع أوبدا Welcome to the 28th edition of the Dubai World Cup at Maidan Racecourse Dubai once again hosts a race that showcases its prominence as a premier global sports destination while enjoying a pivotal position on the international equestrian map. This annual event features the world's finest horses and riders converging in a display of unparalleled skill and competition. Tonight, we are proud to present a lineup of specially curated entertainment programs for our esteemed guests. The evening will culminate in a spectacular closing ceremony set to shatter numerous records and leave an unforgettable impression on all who witness it. Please enjoy the evening. نحتفي معا اليوم بقدرات الخيل الرياضية وروح المنافسة العالية فهنا وفي هذا الحدث العالمي يسعدنا الترحيب بواحد وخمسين فارسا وسبع وسبعين متدربا من مختلف أنحاء العالم ونستقبل في ميداننا قرابة مئة وعشرين خيلا يملكها مئة وخمسة مالكا من أربعة عشر دولة للمنافسة في تسع سباقات Today, at this global event, we gather to celebrate equestrian sports and the spirit of intense competition, welcoming 51 riders and 77 trainers from around the world. In our expensive arena, approximately 120 horses from 105 owners representing 14 countries will gallop and compete in nine diverse races, showcasing their skills and passion for the sport.
It's one of the biggest uh, race nights on the planet and every top jockey around wants to be involved. Kieran Schumark, no exception. Thank you for joining us. You've got two very exciting rides, um, both Trawlerman and Emily Upjohn, but I suppose the overview is just the opportunity to be linking up with these horses in the first place. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, two good chances, two very, very talented horses. And uh, starting with Trawlerman, he you know, had a pretty impeccable record last year and uh, he's very versatile. He goes on quick ground, he goes on soft ground. So the challenge he faces today, I'm sure he'll overcome in terms of the ground. And uh, obviously we're drawn out in 16, but I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, it's a long way to that first bend and hopefully he can overcome that too. Um, what have your experiences been riding here at Maidan? Um, can you ask me that again afterwards? <laughs> <laughs> um, has it been quite, a, quite a, um, an enjoyable involvement though every time you've been out here? Absolutely, yeah. yeah I think this is my third uh, time at the World Cup meeting. Yep. I, arrived, I arrived here on Wednesday evening and I've um, ridden track work for a couple of mornings whilst I've been here. and. Yeah, it's, a, it's an amazing place and uh, it a, really is a privilege to be a part of the whole occasion. As a young man, as a young rider growing up, is it, is it the kind of meeting you watched on from afar and wanted to be involved in? Oh yeah, of course. You know, um, John and Thady, they've uh, experienced plenty of success out here and I remember watching William Buick winning on Dare Me for the sa same owners uh, back 10 plus years ago. So. Uh, Hopefully I can replicate something like that. Well, it is exactly that symmetry, isn't it? Emily Upjohn for the same connections in that race. And from your perspective, just how strong is that Shima Classic today? Incredibly so. Um, August Rodan, I believe, probably sets the standard. Uh, a Derby winner, Breeders' Cup winner. And then the Japanese horse, um, Liberty Island, that's a, you know, a Group 1 winner over 8, 10 and 12. Um, uh, Japanese guineas and a note, so incredibly strong race. Um, Emily Upjohn, I believe if she can replicate some of her coronation form and that performance, I think she'll need a career best here today, but uh, she's a very talented filly and uh, mare, and uh, I believe she's in a good headspace. She's still quite lightly raced, and I guess looking at her profile, getting her fresh can be quite a good angle. Yeah, she seems to turn up well fresh, yeah. and uh, She's training very well, her work's been good and uh, she seems to have settled in here very nicely. I really hope to be speaking to you as a winning rider tonight. Um, Kieran, best of luck with the two rides, thank you for talking to us. Thank you Nick, thanks.
Well, welcome along for the first time on Dubai World Cup Night 2024 to the saddling enclosure ahead of the first race, and it is the Dubai Kahala Classic. And we're going to just let you have a, a peek at one of potentially the leading home players, at least, in this race. Don't forget that this is the purebred Arabian race on the day, the unique race. And number one is Al Wajel, who is trained by Ernst Ortel. And fair play to Ernst as well, because they considered retiring this horse. This very lightly raced horse for his age. He's only had four runs since December of 2021. Just gives you the context of how little we see him. But he ran that massive second to Sonny Duloup on Super Saturday in what is ostensibly the trial for this. And they've got unfinished business in this race. Al Wajel, he finished second to Derian in the 2021 running of the Kahala Classic. Hopefully, he hasn't left it all behind him last time because he's a big player. Next up is number two. Uh, that is Jamran, AJS is Jamran, who's an improving raider from Doha, comes across the Gulf. Winner of the Qatar International Cup last time out at the top level. This is, though, the first dirt start, so that's a question. Number nine, that is Hadi de Carrea, raider from France, who comes into this good and fresh, quite a, a versatile horse. Was third in this race back in 2022, and that same uh, year won a big prize in Saudi Arabia, so really interesting runner. Um, behind, number three, the grey, first of a number of greys actually, and that is uh, Alakam, who's still so lightly raced. Just four starts in the career, two wins, excellent second to Baraka in round two of the challenge back in January. That doubtless gives the horse a bit of a chance, and he's still at the beginning of his career. Still improving, we'll see. But this is the one that they're all going to have to beat. This is number four that we come to. Just feast your eyes on the the Frankel of the purebred Arabian world. This is Asfan Al Khalidia, who has hit the track 17 times, and in that time, not one horse has managed to beat him. Look at him walking around nice and calmly. He's an outstanding purebred Arabian. He's um, stepping away from Saudi for the first time, but his success last time in the big purebred Arabian race in uh, Saudi on the, the Saudi Cup weekend was outstanding. A lovely, smooth traveller. He's got a nice enough draw in seven, and history tells you this horse doesn't get beaten. So we'll see whether we can repeat that feat today. Number five, that's one of the best of the locals. That's Baraka. Now, Baraka has had a strong season, and he's on the improve as well. Just touched off in this race last year by Hayan, and I think he is the best. I think he's the best of the locals. And um, last seen winning the Al Maktoum Challenge round two back in late January. And the Yard won another strong trial for this. So they've got quite a good handle, the, the Ahmad bin Hamash team. So we'll see what he can do. Baraka, that's horse number five. Behind is six, Durga Mathbar, who probably comes up a little bit short. Seven is Falah, who's been performing with a, a bit of quality over in Oman and ran second in round one of the Almac team challenge back in December. Not beaten that by far by uh, RB Rich like me. Have a look at number eight. That's another grey. That's first class who won this race in 2022. Ran third in it last year as well. So he's got a pretty good relationship with the Dubai Kahala Classic. Admittedly, he hasn't looked as good this season. But um, let's walk out number four. Let's just see if we can catch up with him. It's just a couple of horses in front. We'll just feast your eyes on, on this horse. As I said, 17 from 17. Powerful traveller. It might be that the biggest threat is going to be in the same colours. Tilal Al Khaledia, another of the Saudi Raiders, but we'll see. And I'll just let you have a look at the horses who come across from the other side. Number nine being the first of them. Admittedly, we've talked about Hadi Karer because he crossed. But behind is 10, and that is Kingmaker, who's best form certainly on the turf. 11, that's um, RB Rich like me, who's been a brilliant purebred Arabian. It's just never happened for him in this race albeit he's coming into this off a bit of a disappointment. Number 12 is Sonny Deloupe, who won the trial, that excellent battle with Al Wajel last time. And we'll finish with 13. This is Tilal Al Khaledia, who's also got a racing of 128, like the illustrious Asfan Al Khaledia, another huge talent, and um, was a winner of a grade one over Saudi Cup weekend as well. So that is a look at the vast majority, certainly the big players, for the first race, the Dubai Kahala Classic. Welcome along to World Cup night.
Right ahead of the $1 million Dubai Kahala Classic, here is horse number one in the paddock. It is AF Al-Wajel, previous winning connections of this race, Ernst Hotel in the colours of Mr. Halil Khalifa al Nabuda. Tiger Shea takes the ride, as was the case last time, when just touched off by Sonny Deloop. Uh, this is number two, who's going to break from store six. This is Jamran. Chef Ambajour knows the horse very well indeed. He's an improving horse on the raid from Doha, winner of the Qatar International Cup last time at the top level. This is, though, the first start on dirt. The horse behind is pretty consistent on this surface, two from three on the dirt, rated 118, so does have something to find with the top rated in the race, notably the next horse we're going to see who's rated £10 superior to Alar Kam, but he is just a five-year-old, so uh, there should be plenty of upside. He'll keep progressing. OK, this is the, the one that many will think is the one to beat. Hasn't been beaten so far in 17 starts. This is Asfan al Khaledia, who was all class when winning over in Saudi Arabia last time. He steps away from his native land, so we'll see what he can do at Maidan. Baraka knows what it takes to win here. That was uh, the case last time when beating Al Arkham. Uh, prior to that, had won over 2,200 metres on the turf at Abu Dhabi. This is a six year old. He's versatile surface wise. And if it wasn't for the Saudi horses coming over, he'd have a leading chance. But with those, he might just have to step up a little. But he, he carries uh, live, realistic hopes for the home team. Number six is Dergam Athbar who did run fourth, beaten ten lengths or so in this race last year. And seated the rider when no factor at all in the big Saudi race last time. Not sure what actually happened there, was way far back, but uh, didn't complete. Dergam has got plenty to prove. Seven is Palah, Bell's just gone. And Amar al Raspi will get the leg up very soon from Ahmed al-Balushi. Uh, Palah rated 114, will have to improve on what we've seen so far. Uh, including when just touched off by Rich Like Me a couple of starts ago. And this is horse number eight, and this is a previous winner of the race. This is first class, who was a uh, winner of this very race in 2022, around third in this last year. He's these days trained by Doug Watson. He doesn't look to be quite as good as he was, but first class is back to try and win his prize back. Nine is Hadi de Carrere. Maxim Guillaume rides for trainer Thomas Forsey, who is no stranger to success on the international stage, particularly in the, the Middle East, with these purebred Arabians. Carrying the cars of Mr Khalifa bin Shail al Kuwari Has cut it with the very best of them back home in Europe, and is one from three on the dirt. This is number 10. This is another of the greys. Plenty in here. This is Kingmaker, whose best form is most certainly on the turf. Hasn't run on the dirt this season. And comes into this offer. A career best in the President Cup last time, back in mid-February. Richie Mullen, with such success in the PA sphere out here, yet to win this race. Richie Mullen on board. There is Adi Davies, who's on board rich like me. It hasn't worked out in this race before for him, but he does like this track. The question is, does he stay this distance and will he get out and get on the speed? The big plus this year for the 119 rated son of Majd Al Arab, rich like me, is that he avoided the Saudi Cup meeting to come here fresh. Uh, this is number 12. This is Sonny Duloup, who today is ridden by Jim Crowley. Connor Beasley was on in 101 on Super Saturday. Connor's on Baraka instead. But it was an epic battle between his horse and Al Wajel, with this fella coming out just on top. Sonny Duloup looking to follow up Super Saturday success. And Tilal Al Khaledia lines up for trainer Nasser Mutlak. Al Qatani and Ada Al Faredi won at the Saudi meeting uh, this year. That was the race on the Friday, having previously won the big race on the Saturday. So he's changing it up. Uh, Til Al Qadir did in the Saudi Cup. And he's still one of the leading chances, but considered probably just below the quality of stable companion Asfan Al Khaledi. Okay. Um
First race on Dubai World Cup night is the Dubai Kahala Classic and um, that race needs no introduction to the man who's joined us, Ernst Ortel. Must be a very special race in the calendar every year, Ernst. Yeah, well, this is the, the pinnacle of Arab Arabian racing and um, of, of world racing. You know, Sheikh Mohammed's put this, this meeting on and um, we all aim to come here. You've got the top horse. AFL Wajel, who um, he's got unfinished business in this race, and I know that you've you've worked hard, you and the team, just to just to get him racing again because he's missed so much time. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, this is his swan song, and um, okay. he, he had a, he, he's had a great career, and um, we we're wishing to go one bit one better today. Um, I know that I spoke to you before Super Saturday, where he went down by an absolute bob. It was on one hand an epic run, but I guess on the other hand a little bit disappointing. But did it sort of give you a bit of heart coming away from that, knowing that he was still a big player? Exactly, and uh, you know, and that's why we kept training him because we knew he's he's ready for for a big challenge, and um, he's been second in the Kerala once, and um, hopefully we can go one better. I hope you can, Ernst. Thank you. Thanks. Well, there it is, 1,000 US dollars. The race is one to eight, and then 2,000 for the big one to each of the winning grooms. And well done to our winning groom, which is Madan Singh. Uh, he is in front of us now. He's the winning groom of first class. He's been a judge, best turned out. Thank you to Mr. Ali Essa, the CEO of PHI Advertising. And thanks to PHI for their generous support, particularly on Dubai World Cup night, of the best turned out award. Best turned out winner, horse number eight, first class. Let me remind you before we get into this race that the registration for the style stakes closes at 3.30. So if you want to be in your, with a chance of winning in the style stakes, then you need to register before 3.30. Some of the gentlemen, Nick, will be wearing a suit. Some will be going for the jacket trouser combination, which is what you've gone for. So yes. tell me about the reasons why. Um, the sort of boating look. That's what right. I've gone for. I, like um, I did get my style in entrance in nice and early today, Good. so fingers crossed. Good. I've seen and you haven't made the cut. So, <laughs> who is going to take this? It, it almost seems obvious now. The feeling is that the horse in shot, Asfan al is the, the, the most likely winner. Are there any potential stumbling blocks? Well, funnily enough, I've just had a, a chat with expert on the subject, Stephen Molyneux, who's um, very famous in these parts, and he said... He's been asked that question a lot, and he comfortably believes this is going to be the best race this horse has had to run in. He thinks the threats are strong. He thinks Baraka is a tough horse and a big player in this. So it might just be that this Saudi Raider is going to bump into one that's pretty tough and has got some local wherewithal. Are we giving any chance to horse number 11, who loves it here, rich like me? However, the question is, can he dominate in this field? Does he need to? And does he stay this far? Many questions. And is he in, in the right place now? That's got to be a question, given the fact that it's never been his race because he's probably taken a, a route that's left it a little bit short for him. But the one time now that he didn't go to Saudi, he fluffed his lines a bit. He fluffed his lines on Super Saturday. And off the back of that, it's very hard to make a, a convincing case for him. When he's good, he's really good. But as you say, things need to factor for him. Yeah, I'd love it to happen because I know how frustrating it's been with this horse that it's never quite happened on this night. But maybe avoiding Saudi and, and bringing him down a different route will be what he needs. He might just need to 
hang on for a bit norm longer than, yeah. he, than he perhaps normally does. We'll yeah, see. we'll see if he's travelling early. Um, best of luck to Ernst, because I think he's won this race about nine times. And um, our AFL Wild Jill is going to be his swan song. He's been retired come what may it seems after today. He finished second in this race a few years ago. And the fact that he's only had, what, three runs in three years? Um, he's fragile but I'm hoping he's got one big run in him. I feel like you, you're giving a realistic chance to number five, Baraka. I like him. I think he's improved loads. What was he, second in this race last year? I think he's better than that now. Don't get me wrong, I think it's going to have to require a better level to, to beat what Hayan did last year. But I think he's improved. And when we last saw him, he was impressive. Sonny Deloop was the winner of the trial, and Connor Beasley was on that day. But I kind of got the feeling that Connor Beasley would prefer Baraka come what may. OK. He's rated 125, four pounds superior to Sonny Deloop. How much you put home advantage worth a few pounds or not? Home. For a horse like, horse like Baraka, for example. Well, uh, look, I, I think it's a positive in comparison to the Al Khaledias who are coming over here and have got to prove that they handle this track and the potential kickback if indeed they do get it. But uh, I still think it's most likely that Asfan Al Khaledia will come out on top. We're about um, to get off and underway, aren't we? If Abdullah al does win, Godspeed to you, sir. Absolutely. I will um, look forward to interviewing, hopefully, plenty of the winning jockeys at the end of the race. All right. Runners are loading up ahead of the first of tonight's races, the Dubai Kahala Classic. And the man that will call them home is Pat Comerford. All yours, Pat. Thank you, gentlemen. Looking forward to the first event here of the afternoon and into the evening. It's nice to start here as well for the purebred Arabians. One million US up for grabs. So they'll go 2,000 metres here. We are looking forward to seeing how a few of these will fare against the Saudi Raiders. They certainly have the resumes to suggest that they are going to take a power of beating here. From the Dubai World Cup start of 2,000 metres, we will jump here for the Dubai Kahala Classic as AJS Jamran loads away. So that'll leave only a few runners to load forward. Durgar Mathbar will come up into line very shortly. RB Rich like me, AFL Wajal in his swan song race here. A horse who has certainly impressed in his last start. And RB Rich like me comes up to complete the field. We are set here for the $1 million Dubai Kahala Classic for the 28th World Cup meeting, and we are underway. And they broke to a nice start as well, to the inside, working forward, Talal Al-Khaledia, AJS Jamran working up into the first division, Baraka, AFL Wajal wants to press the issue early and will lead at the post with a lap to travel. Deeper out, first class, tracks up into it. They will be wide into this first turn. Alakam joining him, and RB Rich like me is about six deep into the first bend as they make their way off the running. Then came Asfan Al Khaledia, the international market favourite. He's buried in traffic at the moment, spotting the lead four lengths from Sunny Deloop. Then came RB Kingmaker. It was two and a half lengths to Durgar Mathbar and Hardy D. Carrere. The Omani is at the back of the field as they make their way down past the 1350. Early sectionals, 15.04, and they've gone the first 400 there in 26.83. As they make their way onto the back section of the course, it's AFL Wajal. He leads the way by a half length. Three deep travelling along well, Baraka, and in the centre was AJS Jamran. Then came next in running Alakam. He's got a back despite being wide. Then came Talal Al Khaledia from RB Rich Like Me, first class. Asfan Al Khaledia just being nudged along here at the moment, not travelling the best, uh, if you could say that. Uh, the inside was uh, Falar, followed by first class. Then came RB Kingmaker, Sunny Deloop. Uh, Durgar Mathbar was next, and the last one there was Hardy D. Carrere. So off the back, 750 metres left to go. Pace has been okay. AFL Wajal holds the inside advantage of AJS Jamran. Baraka third and three deep. Talal Al Khaledia tracks into it. Already nudged along here. Asfan Al Khaledia with half a dozen to pick up. They approach the top of the straight. 500 metres left to go. Alakam was next. RB Rich like me. RB Kingmaker probably the last one that can win as they straighten into the lane. And Asfan Al Khaledia has a big job to do. His stable mate Talal Al Khaledia goes on by. The local Baraka sticking on here into the minor placings with Falar. And also there was AF Al Wajal. It's Talal Al Khaledia, though, for Saudi Arabia, hitting the 200 metre mark and drawing away here. He's got five lengths here on Baraka. Asfal Al Khaledia tries to run into the late stages, but Talal Al Khaledia has run them ragged. A dominant display of class here in the Dubai Kahala Classic. 
Talal Al Kaladia. Six lengths on the line. Baraka second, third across Asfar Al Kaladia. Followed there next in running by RB Rich Like Me, AFL Wajal. Then came Durgar Mathbar from Fala Alakam was next to cross over. Then came uh, crossing over next was AA, AJS Jamran from RB Kingmaker, Hardy D. Carrere, Sunny Deloop, and first class, the last one in. Yeah, dominant display from Talal Al Khaledia, who ran in the, the different race in Saudi this year, having won the feature on the Saturday, the Abair Classic. He then switched to the Friday, and stable companion Aswan Al Khaledia ran in the big one and won that. Well, Talal has come out here, he's got a better trip throughout the race. He looked happier than his stable companion throughout. He got an excellent positive ride from Adal Al Faredi, who has got that spot on, switched out in the straight and it never, ever looked in doubt. To touch on the international favourite, Asfan Al Khaledia, he was never really travelling, he was never happy, and the reason for that, he got kicked back. Kicked back on this surface for the first time in his life, which not all horses handle. He was not close enough to take it in the chest. He was at a distance which meant he was kicked up into his face. He didn't like it, and I am sure that that is what has cost him here, and that is what has what's caused him the trouble. It meant that his rider could never get him into the position that he wanted. He had to switch widest of all then turning in, and that, I'm afraid, was game over for him. Barak has run an excellent race. He has run bang up to form Baraka, a horse who is rated 125, best over this distance of the, the home charge and he's run another excellent race here. He has just found a horse who unfortunately for him, for Amma bin Hamash and Conor Beasy, who is just too good. And that on this occasion was Tilal Al Khaledia. Got an excellent ride and uh, was comfortably on top. Nice to see Rich like me running his race in, in, in this contest but he wasn't given the forward ride that he offered is because they wanted to make sure he got the distance. Well, he's probably seen it out okay, but turning in, he was never going to go and, and reel in the, the horse who kicked clear at this stage. And very, very comfortable it was in the end. Well done to Tilal Al Khaledia, Adal Al Faredi, and the trainer, Nasser Mutlak Al Qatani. Yeah, hopefully we're going to get a very quick word with the winning trainer, Nasser Al Qatani. Congratulations indeed. Two huge horses to run in the race. What a big performance. Oh, I'm very happy. I take a Kaila Classic the second time for me. The love and the love. I'm happy for this champion today. How good is this horse? Excellent. He's the best. I have the best horse in Kaladia. This is the best horse. Arabic horse in a hold. Did you expect yeah. this to be the winner, not yeah, number four? I know. I know I'm going to win today because I have good horse. Thank you for Prince Khaled and thank you for Prince Fahad and thank you for my father, right, Sheikh Mutlaq Mishrif, and his manager for his sake. Thank you and come here in Dubai. Special. Thank well you. Done. Thank you.
The winner, ladies and gentlemen, the Dubai Kahala Classic, sponsored by One Zabil. Please welcome back in horse number 13, Tilal Al Khaledia. Correct weight has been given in the Dubai Kahala Classic. Correct weight in the Dubai Kahala Classic. 13, 5, 4, and 11. Your numbers in race one. Correct weight, your winner, Talal Al Khaladia, Saudi Arabia.
Time for the presentation for the first of our nine races. That was the Dubai Kahala Classic, sponsored by Wonderbeel. To make the presentation of these three trophies, please welcome to the stage Mr. Matthew Shaw, the general manager at Wonderbeel. Thank you, Matthew. And he will be presenting the Kahala Classic trophy to the winning connections. We'll see the winning owner, then we'll have the winning trainer, and then the winning rider. Thanks to Matthew, Mr. Matthew Shaw. And he will be presenting the award, first of all, to the winning owner of Tilal Al Khalidia. Please welcome to the stage Prince Farhad bin Khalid. Well done to Al Khalidia Stables. And now the winning trainer, please welcome to the stage both Nasser Mutlak Al Qatani and Sheikh Mutlak bin Mishrif. $580,000 to the winners. They're part of the purse of $1 million for the Dubai Kahala Classic, sponsored by Juan Zabil. And now to take the winning rider trophy, please welcome to the stage, Adel al -Faredi. to the Alpha 80 family. A huge success for them, and everyone will come back together again, please. Matthew, thank you, you stay there, so we can have a group photo with everyone on this success in the Dubai Kahala Classic, sponsored by Juan Zabil. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Tilal Al Khaledia.
Right, time for the Godolphin Mile, Group 2 for Thoroughbreds. Again, the purse of $1 million, $580,000 to the winner. And horse number one is in shot. That is Caramel Chip for Christian de Muro, Jose D'Angelo. Rated 104, so a little bit to find with the principles here. Comes out of stall number seven and arrives here in good form over the distance. And the next horse, this is Desert Wisdom. Andrew De Vries takes the ride. He's been a fine horse for connections. He's been mixing it with Dubai World Cup horses in recent times. And um, although he was beaten a long way in this race last year, he did spring a surprise second, perhaps, in this contest two years ago. Eastern World could have realistically lined up in a, a Golden Shaheen all this. Uh, but has, has come here for this, rated 111, has form in and around the, the best of the sprinters over here. Whether or not it matches up with the, the, the best of the rest of the world over this trip remains to be seen. He's drawn in one. Next up is number four. This is Isolate. He is the defending champion and he bids to join Lost Soldier and Firebreak as dual winners of this very race. He was awesome in this last year. But what about draw 11 with loads of pace? It's going to be a different task this year. This is a son of Spitestown, it's Karib, who's rated 103, so he's a little bit away from the quality you'd normally need to, to win this contest and the principles in this race. He was second to Laurel River, who lines up in the Dubai World Cup later on. That was his last start when dropping back in distance. Well, this is horse number six, this is Remorse, who's a, an ever-present fixture on this card, but he generally at least for the last two years, runs in the World Cup itself. So this will be different for Remorse, who has got a wide draw and it is a tough task. Horse number seven is Saudi Crown. It's great son of always dreaming. Florent Giroux rides, as was the case last time when he was third behind Sonia Buscador and Ushba Tesoro in the Saudi Cup. Uh, that form I think it's fair to say makes him the one to beat, particularly back over potentially a more suitable distance. OK, this is horse eight. This is Scotland Yard, as we welcome back Nicola Bachelard, um, formerly of this parish. He, of course, trained over at Jebel Ali. He's now based further afield. Didn't run a bad race, but outclassed ultimately in the Saudi Cup. That's Scotland Yard. One of the most exciting runners for the Hayes tonight is Southern Artist. Son of Munnings comes out of stall number 10 under Antonio Frezu. No stranger to, to plenty of winners here and indeed on this night. And again, he's one of those that is just off the very best of them. Uh, it, it, for him, probably wants a bit of a pace meltdown to come out of stall number 10 and run him down later on. Uh, this is number 10, this is Swing Vote. Comparisons have come in with, with Algiers, but um, it didn't happen for him three weeks ago, four weeks ago even, when he ran a little bit below par on Super Saturday. He goes to the Simon and Ed Crisford team who had last year's Dubai World Cup second. Eleven is two rivers over. There he is, struck a record breaker a couple of starts ago and then just came up short last time. Um, lines up here for Doug O'Neill under Edwin Maldonado, rated 106, has pace but will probably just sit off them coming out of stall number eight. I'm going to skip one and um, get to number 13. That's Pacholi, the mayor. There's a new acquisition for Julio Lasco Argos, come over from South America. Ten times a winner in the homeland. Uh, Julio sounded happy with her, so we'll see what she can do. There's Caramel Chip going out, see most of them here. I think the, the fascinating conundrum, if you like, is what Isolate does out of stall number 11. I'm almost certain that he's going to want to try and dominate. 
but he does have plenty of pace on his inside. Does he sit just wide of them in a forward position, or does he actually try and go over and dominate? We'll find out soon enough. So, yo, you were a best turned out. Winner will do that very soon, finding out who that is as the runners make their way out onto the track. Well done. Uh, Simon and Ed Chrisford have got a very interesting runner in the form of swing votes. Ed very kindly um, lending his thoughts before the race. What did you learn from his run here four weeks ago, his first try at Maidan? Well, he found it tough in, in the sense of it was very different what he's done before. This American style racing, he'd come from France and Jebel Ali. Um, but he was just a bit slow out the gates and took that kick back. At least he's had that experience now. And it's all about that early speed. And if he can have that early speed with the visors on today and get, get a good pitch, I, I think he should run a good race. Um, come what may, he gets more experience today, more experience at Maidan. You were saying that next year you've got one hell of a horse to look forward to. Look, he might be a, a golfing mile winner by then, but next year's an important one still. You know, absolutely. Um, you know, he's a four-year-old now. He's very lightly raced still. Um, as a five-year-old, I mean, he strengthens. He could, he could turn into a good horse. And it always takes a few runs mm. on this track. Um, but, you know, hopefully he can run a good race today. It's a very competitive field and you've got those very, the front two in the, in the betting are, are very good horses as we saw in Saudi Arabia. So uh, let's just hope we can run a good race. And last thing, knowing your history at, at, in Dubai and this whole, this whole scene, what has this meeting meant to you and your family? Well, the Dubai World Cup meeting is just huge. It's always huge. It's, it, it's you know, we, we, we like to bring horses out here in November, October, November and build through the season. We've had some winners here, but you know, you're building towards this World Cup meeting and to be able to have just a runner here is fantastic. I wish you well, thank you. Thank you very Thanks. much.
Right, time for the best turned out award for race number two. $1,000 to the winning groom, which in this instance is the groom of number 13, Pacholi. Well done to Abdul Bassett, who takes home that prize of $1,000 US dollars. And our thanks to PHI for their support of the best turned out award. Presenting it currently, Mr Ali Essa, who is the CEO of PHI Advertising. Thank you to him, to PHI, and well done to Abdul Bassett. Right, there is horse number seven, Saudi crown, under Florent Giroux, coming out of stall number nine. Nick, I think the early battle for the lead is going to be very interesting and all telling as to what happens in the race. Yeah, I kind of half wonder whether, is it going to be the point the race is won? Maybe not, but it's certainly going to be where it could be lost for one or two of them. Um, this horse is all pace. You saw that over in Saudi, um, stuck about until the dying moments when the, the World Cup horses came and beat him, Saudi crown. Um, They've noted that he's got stall nine. They've got isolate towards that inside. I'm just fascinated to see how he goes to play this Florent Giroux because if he's fit and firing a month after Saudi and he can run like he did that day, he's got to go close. Best dressed gentleman competition of 4.10. 4.10 at Apron Views. We will see you there after this race, the 4.05. That I'm is the best now. dressed... You're a non-runner right, and the best okay. dressed man. All right. No, but, you know, there's, there's always... Well, no, that's it. You're not winning anything else. So good luck to all taking part in that. Good luck to those taking part in this race. Number two, the Godolphin Mile, sponsored by MR. To call them home, Pat Comerford. Thank you very Thank much, you very Tom. Much, Tom. We are uh, halfway through the loading process here at the mile marker here for the Godolphin Mile. Race two, our first event of eight for the Thoroughbreds this afternoon and into the evening for our Dubai World Cup night programme. They are filling the stalls. Swing vote has come up into line. Up comes Eastern World, and a big welcome to the World Pool viewers who are beginning to tune in now for the remainder of the program. We wish them the best of luck. As Scott on Yard, Caramel Chip come up into line. And that will leave the last two horses to load away in Isolate and Remorse. Isolate back on the home deck looking to make his impression felt. Here is Remorse loading away to complete the field here for the Group 2 Godolphin Mile. Set to run. Shane Ryan hits the lever. We are underway in the second event and Eastern World anticipated the start well. Pressing up with Saudi Crown who sold forward early with Walk of Stars and deeper out. Isolate is going to beat Saudi Crown to the lead. Southern Artist was next, three wide improving from Two Rivers over. Then came Desert Wisdom as they come onto the course proper. From Karib, working through runners in the centre was a caramel chip, followed there by Swing Boat, who drops back now. Passed on the outside by Scotland Yard and Remorse, who's deepest of all, without a back and in the back half of the field. Pacholi is the last one, the mayor up against the boys here this afternoon. First early splits here, 13-7-8. Uh, and uh, they are bowling along at a nice tempo. It is Isolate the leader who takes over the running here from Walk of Stars who's holding him off the fence. Then came next in running there in third position was a Saudi Crown who's about half a length off the speed. Now a length followed by Two Rivers over. Then came Eastern World Southern Artist being pressed along. Caramel Chip was next from Desert Wisdom. Then came Swing Vote, who's only got four behind him. Uh, they were Scotland Yard, Remorse, Kareem dropping away, and Pacholi has been at the back of the field and is almost been eased out of the contest with two furlongs left to travel in the Godolphin Mile. And Isolate comes up to the outside of Walk of Stars. These two pair off from two, two rivers over. Eastern World, Saudi Crown not travelling, running into the minor placings, potentially Southern Artist, who's trying to pick up some ground. It's Isolate here, back to the UAE, trying to get the win here in the Godolphin Mile. Two rivers over, he's pegging them back here on the outside. Walk of Stars, the running rail. Walk of Stars hits the lead. Two rivers over. Isolate finds a little bit more. Two rivers over the outside, though. Two rivers over. Two rivers over takes the Godolphin Mile. Second across a photo. Walk of Stars just over Isolate, who's held the final place in the frame. Then came Desert Wisdom, followed by a Southern Artist Caramel Chip. Swing vote never got warm in the late stages. Scotland Yard was next from Eastern World, who knocked up with Kareeb Remorse. Saudi Crown, a tad disappointing here in the Godolphin Mile, and Pacholi was the 
rear horse the entire way for the entire eight furlongs. Wow, Two Rivers Over has worn them down late on in the Godolphin Mile. Two Rivers Over for Edwin Maldonado. Doug O'Neill, another winner at Maidan for Doug. And it has gone to the States, but not perhaps where we thought it might go, because this Two Rivers Over has grounded out late on with a hot pace in front of him. It was Isolate that got the lead. An excellent run from Walk of Stars. Massive run out of three, a career best under Tygo Shen. But turning in, this horse who hadn't done too much early was in an excellent position under Maldonado, and he has worn the two leaders down late on. Saudi Crown, he couldn't dominate. That was disappointing, but I think he needs to, to be at his very best. Maybe, as Nick suggested in our preview, we'll look back at that Saudi Cup race, see he had a really hard race up at the pace throughout, and that has taken its toll. Is that something to bear in mind? going forward to the World Cup later on, because he has not run up to his best. There's no doubt about that. But this horse has two rivers over. He found a few too good, including Newgrange last time, over 1,800 at Santa Anita. But that would have put him right for this off the back of a bit of a break. And he is back to his track record breaking form from a couple of starts ago, over the 1,700. And a test at this trip is what he wants. It's what he got. And Todd Cady and Ty Leatherman, bred by Alid Racing Stable, ridden by Edward Maldonado, trained by Doug O'Neill, two rivers over, with the red nose band now in shot, takes out the Group 2 Godolphin Mile. Two Rivers Over has won the Godolphin Mile. Edwin Maldonado, well done indeed. A huge closing run. Talk me through it. Uh, we just wanted a good break, you know. He, and uh, he kind of broke a little slow and I had to rush him. Then I had a little trouble trying to get him back. But I got my position, I got him where I wanted. And uh, he did the rest. We knew he had it in him. He's been training great. You know, Doug O'Neill and all the connections have been doing a great job with this horse. Uh, since the last race, he got so much bigger. And I kept saying, this horse is getting better. I just, I'm just happy and thanks for all the connections and the owners. I'm just over the moon right now. How special is this therefore for you to, to do it here on World Cup night in Dubai? Uh, I can't describe it, it's just, it's a blessing. And I'm just, I'm happy. Edwin Topman. Thank you. British Vision of results here for the Godolphin Mile, sponsored by Ima over the 1600 metres, 11, 12, 4 and 9. Two rivers over your winner, time 137.49, margins three quarters by a nose, 11, 12, 4, 9, race two.
Your good old Mar winner, ladies and gentlemen, good old Mar, sponsored by MR. Please welcome back in Two Rivers Over. Weight has been given in the Godolphin Mile, sponsored by Ima. 11, 12, 4 and 9, your numbers. Two rivers over, the official winner of race number two. 137, 4, 9, margins, three quarters by a nose. Correct weight, race two.
Uh, the biggest smile in the golf is um, broadly on the face of the man who's joining me now, Leandro Moore, assistant to Doug O'Neill, who can't be here. He will be watching on and happy, but Leandro, that must mean an awful lot. Thank you very much. I'm extremely happy about how we work out for us, and I'm more happy that uh, the name of the race, Godolphin. Yeah. Sheikh Mo was here watching his race that he created. I cannot be more happy than that. It's a beautiful ride from Edwin Maldonado, strong performance. He was great. Thank God we uh, asked him to come over here. He was very confident. And uh, we asked him to go close. For early place, did not work that way. But when he knew he was a little bit on the tr in trouble, he started riding and the worst uh, respond for him. I know you've had some great days here. You brought Hot Rod Charlie over here most famously. You love your visits here, don't you? Uh, why, why is it so special? I love it here. People are super, super, super classy. And they treat us very, very well. Couldn't have been any better. You're coming back next year? It's a huge possibility. Leandro, we'll see you then. Well done. Thank you very much. And we'll see Leandro Moro up on stage very shortly to make the presentation for the Godolphin Mile Group 2, sponsored by MR. Please welcome to the stage Ahmed Matrushi from MR. Thank you ever so much, Ahmad. He'll be presenting those three awards. And we'll see our winning owners, and then Leandro, and then the winning rider. So first of all, that fine Godolphin Mile trophy to the winning owners of Two Rivers Over. Please welcome accompanied by families, both Todd Cady and Ty Leatherman. Well done to both Todd and Ty. The winners of the Godolphin Mile, winning owners. And now we will see the winning trainer or assistant trainer. Doug O'Neill not here as yet. So collecting the prize, please welcome to the stage the assistant trainer, Leandro Mora. And the winning rider who can make his way up to the stage. Leandro, well done to you. We've heard from him already, and now we'll see him collect his trophy. Please welcome Edwin Maldonado. Edwin accompanied by his wife. On a huge day for him, a Dubai World Cup night winner in the Group 2 Godolphin Mile, sponsored by Emma. Everyone could come back together now. Our thanks once again to Ahmed Matrushi for presenting the award. Have you take your trophies? Yeah, take your trophies, that'd be lovely. We want to see all you holding your trophies. And what is a big night for you. Well done. <laughs> that was never in doubt. Ladies and gents, the winning horse of the Godolphin Mile, two rivers over.
Emark gift card worth, wait for it, over 36,000 dirhams. A 4,000 dirham voucher by Ascot and Chapel, 50,000 Skyward Miles, sponsored by Emirates Airlines, a gift certificate worth 4,000 dirhams at the Dubai World Cup for next year, an 1847 signature facial worth over 750 dirhams, a handmade tie sponsored by Exarena, and a Gare candle sponsored by Anifasic. Those are the prizes that are up for grabs. We've got best dressed couple coming up a little later on. That's the next of the category. So if you are one of the best dressed couples uh, or are gunning for being the best dressed couple, do stick around because we will be adjudicating on that one after the Dubai Gold Cup, which is the next race on the schedule. So the judges have worked their magic. They have come up with their top 10. We will be announcing the top 10 in just a few moments. So we've got two late arrivals. So we've had our best dressed man, uh, best dressed couple, 4.45, best dressed couple, 4.45. Well done to our best dressed gentleman winner, the first winner of the night in the style states. All right, it is time for the first instalment of Faces at the Races, where you could win 4,000 dirham. We've got four. Break out a smile and keep the smile for our cameras to find your smile and your winning face. You can claim your cash prize from the Rewards Centre, Level 1, Concourse 3. But who is tonight's winner of Faces at the Races? Well, I think... I think it's you. Don't hide that face behind a phone. We want to see that winning face because you have won, madam. Yes, you. It's like you're filming yourself. I'm concerned you don't know you've won 4,000 dirham. You've won 4,000 dirham to you, madam. Congratulations for that winning smile and a beautiful phone. The first of tonight's winning faces at the races.
eight horses are in the paddock ahead of uh, Dubai Gold Cup, sponsored by Tyre Motors. And Al Nair is horse number one. Al Nair, who's been ridden by Christoph Sumi on his last couple of starts, both here and in Saudi. Ran really well here behind Siskini on first start. Didn't quite back that up back in the handicap last time. But a return to him may bring about a bit of improvement, Nick. Yeah, it was um, ride of the year last year for that horse, or for Sam Hitchcock on him when he won season or so ago. That's when he was trained by Doug Watson. This is Coltrane. Machine Murphy rides and Coltrane. I know that Tom Stanley fancies this horse and um, it's not bad judgment whatsoever when you fancy one, Tom. So we'll see. He's a super stayer, runner up in the Gold Cup at Royal Ascot, one at group race level at York. And um, if he's fit and firing, he's a big player. Three is Durham. Mythos has an awful lot to find at the weights under Oscar Chavez for Musaba Al Mary, who's switching back to the turf, yet to win on this surface. Number four is Eldar Eldarov, who's won a couple of St. Ledgers at Doncaster and at the Curra most recently. And James Doyle only recently returned from injury, which is great to see him back. He's had success on this very night. Eldar Eldarov, we'll see what he can do. He's still lightly raced. Enemy ran well in Saudi again last time, not beaten too far, just ahead on that occasion. And he's gone home in between that start and this because he stayed out here last year and it didn't work out for him. He was disappointing in this race, hopefully better this time around. Horse number six is next and that horse is Gia Velotto, who is trained by Marco Botti. Uh, ben Cohen had looked to end what's been a really good spell out here with success on the biggest night. This horse was third in Riyadh behind Tower of London and Enemy, but he's better off at the weight, certainly with Enemy. He's um, a good stayer and I hope he's going to run well. A seven is Japanese raider Iron Barrows for Christian de Muro, and Hiroyuki Yamura. Uh, well behind Tower of London last time, and Dodus actually the time before that, but was in winning form over 3,600 metres prior. Probably wants a test at this trip. Horse number eight is one of the Godolphin runners, this is Passion and Glory, who finished fifth in this in 2022. He was well beaten in this race last year, and certainly when he's run in Bahrain in recent times, he's probably not quite the force he once was. But we'll see. Sai Bin Saroz certainly won this race before. Nine there is Roberto Escobar. Now with Gary Alsop racing, as was the case last time for the run in Saudi. That was disappointing. Whether or not it was the uh, the ground or, or not, I, I don't know. But he was he, he was disappointing. He is probably better than that, as he proved on his uh, couple of starts back when in winning form over 3,000 metres. The next one is horse number 10, that is C. Stone, who ran an excellent second to Siskani in the Nadal Sheba Trophy last time. It wasn't the clearest run either. I imagine it would have um, been right up there with what Connections would have hoped for and C. Stone, maybe a sporting outsider. And here is Siskani, who runs very well at this track, just touched off in this race last year. He's got cheek pieces back on now and maybe he'll just be waited with a bit longer than was the case this time 12 months ago. Uh, but he comes here in, in very good form off the back of that Group 3 success last time. Andre Farb runs a couple. He's got this one, Sober, and also Savannah's Knight, Sober. Sober, um, who was second at Chantilly three weeks ago, Group 2 winner in Europe last year. It is Andre's way to prep them at Chantilly at the beginning of March, and it's been a tried and tested route for him. Right, Trawlerman was disappointing in this race last year. He's drawn 16, was, isn't going to help. He's got his usual hood on, but goodness me, he's been foot perfect since disappointing in this race 12 months ago. And maybe that'll put him right for this, but stall 16 is not a help. Number 14, that is Libyan Glass, trained in Japan. Down the field behind Tower of London in Saudi last time. We'll seriously need to improve on that. The trainer, Ishizu Yahagi, won this very race with Stay Foolish two years ago. Here is the aforementioned Savannah's Knight, the other one for Andre Fab, Mikar Barcelona taking the ride. And the horse who wasn't beaten too far last time in that uh, Chanty prep, as uh, Nick was suggesting, over 2,700. Uh, prior to that, had some pretty consistent form around about this distance. And last but certainly by no means least, this is Tower of London last year for Aidan O'Brien and Ryan Moore. It was Broom. This one, Tower of London, they're looking to follow up and make it two from the last two in this very race. The four-year-old who kicked off his 2024 with that last gasp success 
in the Red Sea turf. The race didn't pan out perfectly, but the results certainly did. They are your runners for the 2024 Dubai Gold Number Cup, four, sponsored BTL. by Altaya Motors. Time for our best turnout award then. And it has gone to Elder Eldarov, horse number four, well unto Abdul Wahid, leading the horse around a few moments ago. And now shaking the hand of Mr. Ali Essa, the CEO of PHI Advertising. He receives 1,000 US dollars, and that is on behalf of PHI Advertising. Well unto the winning groom of Elder Eldarov. Yeah, it's fair to say that um, Enemy is no stranger to racing here. Horse 5, trained by Ian Williams. Thanks for joining us. Um, he ran an absolute belter in Saudi, but I guess that's just what this horse does, doesn't he? He turns up and does the job. Yeah, he turns up, he does the job. This is really tough today, and there's no getting away from that, but uh, he merits his place here, and I'm sure he'll run a big race for, for all concerned. Uh, how's he done since Saudi Arabia? I think he's done a lot better this year than he did last year. Okay. Uh, I hope I'm saying that in about five minutes' time. But uh, yeah, I think he's had um, he's had a lot better run into this race than he did last year. Yes. Um, and he was on top of his form in Saudi, so I'm hoping he's still that way. And there's something about the track here and the, the tempo and the race. It, it, it all seems to suit him. He's run very well in a lot of carnival races. Yeah, he loves to be held up. He loves to pass horses. Um, you, you're reliant on there being a strong pace and getting a little bit of luck up the up the straight. But you know. He'll be running on towards the end, hopefully, and, and running a fine race. Ian, wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. So the runners are loading up for the Dubai Gold Cup, sponsored by Altaya Motors. To remind you, best dressed couple competition 
4.45, 4.45 for that. But the runners are loading up ahead of this group two for the thoroughbreds over 3,200 metres, another million dollars on the line. And they're loading up pretty quickly. Nick, quick reminder who you fancy. Uh, solid Siskany. He got beaten in this race last year. I think he might go one better this year. His track record is impeccable. OK, Coltrane for me, who is of this level, we know that, and he's a really a regular Group 1 performer, though he's yet to win one. Goes well fresh, think he should go pretty well. There is uh, one of the Andre Farb runners, Sober, just backing away slightly under Maxime Guillon. Trawlerman with the rug on, back of shots. We'll see what he does. Big moment for Kieran Schumacher. Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Two big rides he's got. You spoke to him earlier on. How did he seem? Um, obviously, I think he's excited. Who have we got? A jockey on horse four. Now, that is Elder Elderov. I'm not sure he's going to line up. Uh, we will let you know. We will. Yep, Elder Elderov has been scratched. Horse number four, Elder Elderov, has been scratched. So, the rest of them are lining up ahead of the Dubai Gold Cup. Here's Pat. Thank you very much, guys. Yes, a uh, bit of a sensation there at the back end here of the loading process. Eldar Eldarov comes out here. Scratched on veterinary advice, he comes out. So we'll not be taking his place here for James Doyle and Roger Varian. So commiserations with the connections as the loading process continues. Al Naya comes up into line. And that'll leave only a few to come forward. Iron Barrows loading up here for Japan. Christian Demuro with the ride. Here's Trawler Man, one of two rides for Kieran Schumacher tonight. And one of three runners here in the Royal Blue for the Dubai Gold Cup. Here's Gia Volotto. Or Team Botti. And we look almost set here for the Dubai Gold Cup. Racing at the two-mile marker. And getting away very, very fast here over onto the near far side part of the course was Passion and Glory. Libyan Glass working up in the early stages with Al Naya. They were followed there by Siskani. Iron Barrows coming across and Trawler Man using every bit of the track here coming down the centre part of the course racing in isolation. Further back, just worse than midfield here was Gia Volotto along with Sober. Seastone in that three-wide passage along with Darramethos, Savannah's Knight, then came Coltrane. Tower of London now third to last from Enemy and Roberto Escobar is the last one. Eldar Eldarov scratched at the gates. So inside the 2,600 metres, Kieran Schumacher leads a narrow margin here on Trawler Man as they come to the post on the first occasion and eventually will work over to sit to the outside of the Japanese runner, Libyan Glass. Iron Barrows, another Japan runner sitting in the top three from Passion and Glory, Blue Colours, Red Cap. There was a gap of three and a half lengths as they make their way down the front to Al Naya, who settles down fifth. Now coming across to the fence with Siskani, Gia Volotto, allowing them to cross there about eight and spotting the lead about seven or eight lengths here as they make their way off the front past the 2100 metres. Then came Seastone. In the centre of runners was Sober, followed by Darramethos. Then came Savannah's Knight, two lengths back to Tower of London, who's now fourth to last. Coltrane drops back in the field. Enemy for Ian Williams into second to last, and Roberto Escobar sees them all as they make their way down past the 1800 metres and as they make their way onto the back of the course Libyan Glass leads a narrow margin a half a length fractions are moderate Trawler Man the outside in second stalks this leader and sits on his girth ready to pounce back on the inside it is Passion Glory lays third the rail in the 1-1 was Iron Barrows followed there next in running by Al Naya He's fit and has shut off well from Siskani, who's sixth. Then came Gia Volotto from Seastone, who's been deep and wide without a back at the moment. Forced to improve a shade from Sober. Then came Darramethos. Savannah's Knight was next from Tower of London, Coltrane Enemy, and Roberto Escobar still last. So 1,200 metres left to go. Libyan Glass still having it his own way up in front under Ryuze Sake. Kieran Schumach not pressing the issue, riding a patient race on Trawler Man outside of the leader. Followed there by Passion and Glory, who's on the right horses back here. Then came Iron Barrows. Next was Isle Naya, who's three back on the inside. Pace still very moderate here with 800 metres left to go. Siskani was next from Gia Volotto Sober. Then came Seastone, who's had to do it the hard way out wide. Then came Darramethos, Savannah's Knight in the OTI colours from Tower of London, who gets on Seastone's back and starts to improve a few pairs. Then came Coltrane, followed by Enemy as they make their way into the lane here in the Dubai Gold Cup. Roberto Escobar, the last one. So they come into the straight here inside the 450, and Trawler Man now takes over and is asked for. Al Naya just lugs in a little bit in behind the leader, but starts to present now. Gia Volotto 
Trotter working through. Siskaini deeper out here under William Buick. Tower of London starting to launch the outside. Al Nyan claims Trawler Man. Tower of London deeper out in the Valley Doyle Purple. Takes Al Nyan in the late stages. And Valley Doyle are on the board early. Takes the Dubai World Cup, does Tower of London and does it well. Two and a half on the line beats Al Nyan. Trawler Man may have held on for third from Giovolotto Siskaini. A gap to Savannah's night followed by Iron Barrows. Then came Enemy. Sober, Passion and Glory. Livian Glass knocked up. Roberto Escobar beat only a couple home. They were a uh, Sober along with Enemy, Coltrane, Darramethos and Sea Stone. He was in the cheap seats the whole way around and never got a good run in transit. Well, that was very, very impressive. It was very comfortable. He got a lovely patient ride from Ryan Moore. He switched out. He got rolling down the wide outside. And I thought a long way out, you could call him the winner. He had a nice clear run at them. And there was never really a doubt that he was going to go and pick them up. Now, the question is just how much has he had to do to, to get there? How much do we mark up the performance? Because it seems as though the pace has held up pretty well, given that Trawler Man was never too far away when he was sitting on the girths of the long-time leader, the Japanese Raider, who's uh, run well for a long way, Libyan Glass, but starts to go backwards. Al Nyers run an excellent race. Chorleman, much better than 12 months ago. Seems a, a much more tractable, um, more polished performer this time around off the back of an excellent, consistent season in the UK. And he's stuck on gamely to his task. They're coming down the wide outside, but never really getting there with Siskan. I mean, he stayed it. He was just passed so comfortably by the winner who has got rolling down the wide outside and has done the, the stayers double, gone from Red Sea Turf handicap success to winning a Dubai Gold Cup for Derek Smith. It's John Magnier, Michael Tabor, Westerberg, Aidan O'Brien, the winning trainer, and Ryan Moore with a host of good rides this evening in the winner's enclosure. There is our winner then. Tower of London into shot at this point. Some of them never got involved. The likes of Coltrane never really in it. But this horse was perfectly produced by Ryan Moore. Tower of London winning again in the Middle East. Yeah, this is a horse who's fast conquering the whole of the Middle East. Um, Ryan, well done indeed. He is an improving stayer at a rate of knots, isn't he? Yeah, he was better again today. Um, pace slackened down the back and I had to move forward. He quickened up very well. Quickened up very well and he was impressive. Would he, was he that much sharper than Saudi? Yeah, he was better today. Ryan, um, just a very quick word on the derby winners to come, August Rodan. How much are you looking forward to getting back on him later? Yeah, look, he's been a, he was a magic horse last year and he's in a very deep race today. There's 10 Group 1 winners, but everyone seems happy with him and hopefully he'll run very well. Ryan, well done. Thank you. Thank you.
Welcome back into the winner's enclosure. The Dubai Gold Cup winner, ridden by that man, Ryan Moore, trained by Aidan O'Brien, Tower of London. Correct weight has been given in the Dubai Gold Cup, sponsored by Al Tire Motors. 16, 1, 13, and 11. 16, 1, 13, 11. The numbers in the Dubai Gold Cup Tower of London gets the win in 317.29 margins, two by one and a half. We will commence the presentation shortly. And we have the Dubai World Cup opening ceremony at 5.05, best traditional outfit competition at 5.20 and 8 from views. And now it's time for our second instalment of Faces at the Races, where your smile can win you 4,000 dirham. Break out that smile, keep a look out for our cameras. Who are we going to choose? I want a big smile to win 4,000 dirham. You need to head to claim your cash prize. The reward set to level one. Concourse 3 is you. It's you. You've won 4,000 dirham just like that what a night for you and a beautiful deserved winning smile congratulations
What a performance that was then from Tower of London. Winning from stall 14, we heard from Ryan Moore. We'll see here with Aidan O'Brien very shortly for this presentation for the Dubai Gold Cup Group 2 sponsored by Altire Motors. To make the presentation, please welcome to the stage the pairing of Ms Kay Hart, the president of Ford International Markets Group, and also Mr Ashok Khanna, the chief executive officer at Altire Motors. Thank you both. They'll be presenting those three awards to the winning connections. And we'll meet three of the winning owners. Just debriefing with Aidan O'Brien in front of us very shortly. Well done to the Cornwall team. They'll be receiving the first award. Please welcome to the stage, accompanying winning connections, Mr Paul Smith and Mr MB Magna and also Mr Michael Tabor. And they take that large trophy on the left. Well done to the Cornwall team for that success with Tower of London in the Dubai Gold Cup. And now... We can welcome the winning trainer of Tower of London, ladies and gentlemen, Aidan O'Brien. Another success on World Cup night for Aidan O'Brien. That's the first of a few this evening and possibly for this man as well. Your appreciation for the winning rider, Ryan Moore. Ryan receives that trophy. And the winning horse takes the share $580,000 of the $1 million prize money purse. And everyone will come back together if we can, please. Michael Tabor, MB Magnia, Paul Smith, Aidan O'Brien, Ryan Moore. Alongside our presenters, Miss Kay Hart and Mr. Ashok Carter. And we can take our representative trophies. There we are, Aidan can take that one and our winning owner's trophy. The winner of the Dubai Gold Cup, sponsored by Altaya Motors, Tower of London.
All right, we will have our opening ceremony with our fly pass very shortly, but I want to announce the car winner. Congratulations to Hiseo Kamata. Hiseo Kamata, you have won yourself a car. Thanks to our tyre motors, Hiseo Kamata has won a car. نترككم الآن مع لحظات مليئة بالفخر والاعتزاز وإرث الوطن مع السلام الوطني الإماراتي العزيز على قلوبنا جميعا لذا نرجو منكم الوقوف كما نتبعه بعروض رائعة تختطف الأنفاس مع إكس دبي متمنين لكم مشاهدة ممتعة We're about to immerse you in moments brimming with pride, honor and the rich tapestry of our nation's heritage as we play the beloved Emirati National Anthem, which holds a special place in all of our hearts. We kindly ask you to stand for this. Following this, get ready to be enthralled by breathtaking performances by X Dubai. Wishing you an enjoyable experience. Yeah. 
After the, um, well, the outstanding display of aviation we've just seen, we're going to see some flying machines on the track in a few moments' time for the Al Quas Sprint, 1,200 metres, turf, first thoroughbred group one of the day. And the action just hots up and up. And there's some fairly famous colours sported by a man who knows all about them, Frankie Dettori in the Godolphin Blue, which is great to see. He can do the weights on horse number 12. And that is Star of Mystery, who's got to reverse the form from Super Saturday with the other three-year-old fill in the race, Frost at Dawn. But different day, maybe less of a perceived bias. And that extra furlong, the extra 200 metres could play into her strengths. Charlie Appleby's won this race a couple of times. Most recently with the brilliant blue point, and she's a star filly. William Buick couldn't do the weight, Frankie can, and as such, he's a board star of mystery. Number three is Casa Creed. He's back for more. He finished fifth in this race a couple of years ago. Comes into this fresh, having been best of the rest behind the Godolphin pair of Master of the Seas and Morge in the Breeders' Cup mile. So, proves versatility by running at 1,200 metres here. And the Dubai World Cup winners combined. Lewis Saiz, who won it on Mystic Guide, and Bill Mott, who won the very first Dubai World Cup with the Mighty Cigar. So Castle Creed is horse number three. Time for the best turnout award for race number four. And it has gone to horse number four. We've got a few fours tonight. Danya, last year's winner, has already won something tonight. Best turnout winner. Well, it's a Rab Nawaz. He's there a few moments ago speaking to the horse. And now receiving the award of $1,000 from Mr. Ali Essa, the CEO of PHI Advertising. Huge commitment to the prizes tonight. A total of $10,000 US dollars being given out. $2,000 for the feature race. Well done in this instance to the groom of Danyar, that is Rab Nawaz. OK, we've seen um, Star of Mystery, Casa Creed. What about that one nearest to us? As you can see, that's Frost at Dawn. The filly who bids to follow up success from Super Saturday, where she broke the track record over 1,000 metres, showed incredible speed over on that far side. And given where she's drawn this time, you'd imagine she'll be getting good and prominent over on that far side as well. She's got stall one. She was excellent last time. And this improving three-year-old She's rapid and she's on the up. She'll bid to confirm form with star of mystery, Tom Stanley. I think she will. Do you? Oh, sorry. I think star of mystery will come out on top. So I think she won't. OK. I'm dizzy after the plane. It was good. Yeah, I've only just got out of it. So, uh, no, I was pleased. Pleased what I did. Nose dives are quite a difficult they, skill, they, aren't they? they? Are, How many hours do you I, need to perfect I, them? I've been doing it for a long time, mm. so I think I timed everything, everything right. Um, aviation yeah. expert as well as form expert. I ex probably more an aviation expert, yeah, yeah, yeah. judging by how it's gone so far. Um, I think the pace is going to be really interesting because Macar Barcelona, <laughs> Macar Barcelona went up the far side last time. Surely he's going to try and do the same thing. Has to. Has yeah. to. It worked perfectly. Um, I guess there is a, a, a school of thought that I would think the Godolphin Philly is going to be better at this trip than she was over the thousand metres. But we shall see. There is Barcelona. I really hope Dania for Shadwell and also for the now retired Dane O'Neill, who, of course, so sadly has had to well, retire own to injury. He won on this horse last year. I really hope that horse puts up a bold show to sort of tribute his career. Yes. Unless he's gutted, he's not riding it. So, you know, either way. I'd, I, I think it's a better race this year. So we'll see. I'm going to walk down to the finish and see if I can beat them down. Good, go for it. Good luck. Nick's going to start running now. Pat's going to call him home. Thank you, guys. Looking forward to this uh, six furlong dash. Our sprint for the evening. 
King Gold starts to come forward. California Spangle, one of two runners here for Hong Kong. Side success, Ryan Moore looking for an early race to race double on the card. Here's Casa Creed. Going to go better than uh, the, the fifth we've seen him run in this race in the past. Pontos, the Czech runner, will be the last one to come forward. Up into gate number three. They will fly along here for the Alquaz Sprint. Set to run. Line cleared. Starter hits the lever. We are underway. Frosted Dawn caught it well. Pontos pressing up there on the far side also. Then came California Spangle in the first few. A diligent Harry and tracking them, Bill Heil. Coming down the centre of the course here. Dania looking to go back to back here with Casa Creed. Sight success. Emirati Anna King Gold. Uh, Star of Mystery not too far away. And heading over onto the near side part of the course. Only one. And that is Jasper Crone racing on his lonesome. Where it's Pontos at the 700 metres who's out by two lengths. From next in running there was a Frosted Dawn from California Spangle who's got them in his sights then came next in running was Diligent Harry who's close enough with Bill Heil Emirati Anna Frankie de Torre starting to weave a passage here through on the Philly Star of Mystery then came Casa Creed Jasper Crone over on the near side has got the disadvantage next was King Gold Daniel well back with sight success it's California Spangle who takes over the Cantonese bullet hits the front here from Diligent Harry Star of Mystery in pursuit along with Bill Heil but it's California Spangle and Brenton Abdullah Star of mystery is going to have one last crack at him but it is hong kong in the alquaz three quarters of a length beats home star of mystery who was brave sight success is running the top four with diligent harry then came bill hile casa creed followed by emirati anna danya not his day today king gold was next over jasper crone unfortunately the near side has been off all season and that was on show there this evening he's running the back few along with pontos and the last one home was frosted dawn Pure class, rated 123. California Spangle takes out the Alcor Sprint. A horse that wants pace at this distance, got it. And we heard that the horse's trainer thought that this test with pace would be ideal. How right he was. And great to see Hong Kong back in the winner's enclosure on World Cup night. That's what this night deserves. What it needs is international success. I don't think Frankie Dettori could have done much more. He crept into it on a filly that's very, very talented. And I think she's just found California Spangle too good in this instance. He was too game and he wasn't going to stop at the line given that he's got form over further, tying him with the very best of Hong Kong, the likes of Golden 60 Voyage Bubble, who we're going to see later on in the Dubai Turf. It did play out middle to far side as we thought it might. Jasper Crone near side, cloud alone furrow up the rail. That didn't work out. That's not been the place to be all year. And big celebrations from Brent Abdullah. Well done to the winning rider. He's absolutely loved that. And Frank Kittatori crept into it on a filly that probably got the race run to suit. But I, I, I think she's just found this horse, one of the best from Hong Kong over seven, too good. Uh, other horses that have run with great credit Diligent Harry's run an excellent race. Best form probably at home on the all-weather, but that opens up a good turf campaign for him this season. He's had, again, the race run to suit, a bit of a test at this distance. Didn't go to all-weather finals day, has chosen to come here instead and been rewarded with a not-so-insignificant matter of $150,000. But there's your winner, California Spangle. Six-year-old son of star Spangle Banner. And he has scored for a delighted Brenton Avdullah.
I think you could uh, hear what it meant to the man on my right on board the winner, California Spangle, Brenton Abdullah. Just, just give us a, a feeling of that emotion as you cross the line. It's uh, pretty special. Um, you know, if you asked me 12 months ago, would I be in Dubai on World Cup night representing Hong Kong on a horse like him? would have told you you were dreaming, you know, and I've, I've been enjoying Hong Kong a lot and I pulled up and, you know, Frankie said well done and well, I'm 33, I remember being a kid watching Frankie yeah. and on the world stage and to now knock him off in a group one on Dubai World Cup night, like, this is just things you dream of, you know, and yeah. things that you don't think are possible from a little boy from Melbourne in Australia and uh, it's very special to do it for Tony and to represent Hong yeah. Kong. Uh, yeah, how good. And I will say, I know he stays further, but I, I gather the track record's gone. He's rapid. I just basically let him run to where he wanted to, and I just backed his ability. I knew he could sustain speed, and uh, it's worked out well. Brenton, you've won on Dubai World Cup night. Go and enjoy that moment. Thank you. And provisional result here in the El Quaz Sprint, sponsored by Azizi Development, 2.12.5 2.12.5-1. California Spangle, 107.5, three quarters by three quarters, 2.12.5-1, your provisional numbers. Hong Kong success on Dubai World Cup, but we may well have more later on as well. But please welcome in the winner of the Al Gore Sprint, sponsored by Azizi Developments, California Spangle.
And Tony Cruz, the winning trainer of California Spangle, joins me. Um, you've tried before here in Dubai, so to land one of the big races, the big turf sprint, how satisfying is that for your training career? Oh, you know, in every trainer's life, you know, you always expect to do what you expected to do. It's to win the big races, you know. And uh, I got this opportunity today, and uh, I, I came with a lot of confidence to win this race. So, because this is my 10th time lucky, and it's sure to happen. I know it's going to happen sooner or later. It's, you know, as I say, it's better later than never. Yes. So I'm so happy to have won this race today with the families here, the whole California families here, and the late uh, Howard Liang, that he's passed away. I uh, really like to dedicate this race to him. So without him, we won't be racing today. Nice trip here. You did say he obviously stays further, but you feel you need a 1,400 metre horse for the 1,200 metre track here. Yeah, I believe that too. Uh, you know, California Spank has always been a sprinter miler, and uh, he's used to win a lot of races in the mile race, but I believe he's really a sprinter than a miler, you know. As you can see in his, um, uh, on his debut, he won 1,000 metres in the record time, 1,200 metres in the record time in Hong Kong. And I believe this horse got the class to run this kind of race here. So uh, he proved himself today. We've got a trophy to go and collect. We won't let you, um, you. miss that one. Thank, thank, you, thank you. Thank you so much. Presentation time for the Alcor Sprint, sponsored by Azizi Developments. To make the presentation, please welcome familiar faces out here. Mr. Merwes Azizi, the chairman of Azizi Developments, and the CEO of Azizi Developments, Mr. Farhad Azizi. Thank you so much, both of you, for attending and presenting these awards for the race. Sponsored by Azizi Developments, the Alcor Sprint, which went to California Spangle. To receive the award for the winning owners, first of all, Please welcome the winning owners of California Spangle, both Chester and Luana Liang. In the colours of the late Howard Liang, Yun Xing, both Chester and his mother Luana receiving the award to great delight. Well done to them and to California Spangle. And we've heard from the winning trainer, and he'll now, now go and collect the award. Welcome to the stage, Tony Cruz. International success for Tony Cruz. Well done to him and to the winning rider. We heard from him after the race. He loved that success. Please welcome Brenton Abdullah. Well out to Brenton, you stay there, Brenton, and Tony will come back in, as will Chester and Luana Liang, and all the executives of the estate of the late Howard Liang Yum Shing. Thank you to both Merwes and Fahad Azizi. The Alcor Sprint, sponsored by Azizi Developments, goes to California Spangle.
Horses making their way in ahead of our next contest, the UAE Derby, but it is time for faces at the races. It's the third instalment, there's 4,000 dirham up for grabs, and this winning face is going to win 1,000. 1,000 dirham going to the winning face that we pick out. We want smiles at the ready, you can wave if you want. Maybe a bit of, bit of thought into your attire. You might have made a poster, I don't know. And a big smile is going to win, but who's it going to be? A thousand dirham coming the way of our winner, which is... The tension is building. I know who I choose, but it's not up to me. You, sir, what a beautiful smile. Look at those pearly whites. You've won a thousand dirham. I am delighted for you. Please go and collect your cash prize from the reward centre inside the stand. You have won 1,000 dirham. Well done, sir. Horse number one ahead of the UAE derby is Autobahn. Macar Barcelona for Julio Olasquaga, son of Asiatic boy, winner of this race in the past. In the colours here, Sheikh Mohammed Big Khalifa, Al Maktoum. Found Killer Collect too good last time, needs to step up to mix it with the best in the world. Okay, moving on to the next horse. Horse number two, that is Oasis Boy, who's another son of Asiatic Boy. Uh, Asiatic Boy who won the UAE Derby back in 2007. He's got lots to do, I imagine, but um, Julio Lascoaga is firing a few bullets in the race. That's horse number three, that is Rock Walk. Nine's up for Joe Moreira, uh, another one for Julio Lascoaga. We come out of stall number one. His form relatively difficult to weigh up against the rest of them in the field but he is the top rated of Julio's trio. Oh, yeah. Okay, horse number four comes next. That is Ballon d'Or, one of the Japanese runners in the race, perhaps not quite as heralded as one or two of the others in here, but we shall see, lovely white blaze. You'll spot that in the run, doubtless. Ballon d'Or tying in with Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who is here. Of Did course. he win one? No, I don't think so. Mm. Let's not go there. Let's okay. not bring it up. We don't want to make him angry. Forever Young comes out of store number 11, rated 113. Forever Young was the winner last time in Saudi. He is potentially the next dirt star from Japan. I'll be interested to see how he breaks here. That's key, isn't it? Um, how he finishes, I don't think it's up for debate. Uh, next up will be number six, another Japanese runner. And this is the first Tesoro to run on the night. We've got Ushpa and Wilson in the World Cup. This is George. Let's see what he can do stretching out over the distance. Uh, Yuga Kawada, of course, he spoke to Tom. He's got lights of remake, Liberty Island, Ushpa Tesoro to come as well. Seven is Guns and Glory for Jamie Spencer and Jim and Fitzgerald Hey, Bupat Simar. 
There was a winner last time from El Arbery, who reversed that form from their start two starts ago. But again, one of the home team that needs to find a bit of improvement, likely to, to mix it with the very best of them internationally. Next up is one of the Aidan O'Brien runners, Aidan and Ryan. They're on the score sheet already with Tower of London. They'll be looking for a double. They've got Henry Adams. And of course, Aidan O'Brien, he's, he's won this race three times, including with that monster win for Mendelssohn in 2018. Henry Adams describes a, a lovely, big and uncomplicated horse by the trainer and interesting stepping onto the dirt. Now, this is horse number 11, the other Aidan O'Brien runner, Navy Seal. He's the son of Dubawi, out of a Camelot mare, doesn't scream dirt necessarily. Uh, the horse was last seen in that Dundalk contest and often used as a, a prep for this. As prior to that, they had some good form back at home, but you know, not out there with the best of them necessarily. We'll see how he handles the surface out of 10. How about number 12? This is the sole US representative in the race. This is Panda Gate trained by Christophe Clement. Um, he's on occasion looks quite awesome. We'll see what he can do out here. He is the son of the late great Arrogate who won the Dubai World Cup six years ago. I gather this fella's obtained a few fans with his, um, his behaviour and his all-round demeanour at track work in the morning. That is Pandagate. Now, this horse came in a little late. This is Mendelssohn Bay. He was the Guineas winner, is still the Guineas winner. He beat Killer Collect last time. That was 64 days ago, a little break, and looking to go on to do the double, both the Guineas and the UAE Derby. He's rated 104. He is improving. He's well drawn. He'll be making his way out now under Pat Cosgrave for Bupat Sima. Thanks to PHI Advertising, the only digital network in Dubai for their continued support of the Best Turned Out Award. $1,000 to the winning groom. And that winning groom, leading round horse number seven, Guns and Glory, a few moments ago, is Abdullah Mohammed. Our thanks to Mr. Ali Issa, who is presenting the award. He is the CEO of PHI Advertising. Mr. Ali Issa shaking the hand of Abdullah Mohammed, who's receiving $1,000. Well done to the winning groom. Now, there he is. 
Abdullah Mohammed of Guns and Glory. find us but we'll start. Uh, Dr Jim Hay joins me. Uh, he's got a fascinating runner in this race in the form of Guns and Glory who um, we saw well shattering a bit of a field here three weeks ago. It's a, a step forward of course to be in the, the derby but based on that and the regard he's always been held in are you quite excited by him? I have. We think he should run well today but he, he still is a very unfurnished big baby. Yeah? Um, Next year he'll be a, quite a different animal. So today, um, if you're not in, you can't win. So <laughs> now that's that's what we're doing. Yeah. I did read in um, or, or listen to Tig's post-race interview. He did say um, he thought he was a UAE Derby horse from the very beginning of the season. So maybe it's just that little bit of a late bloomer. Yeah, it's taken him quite a bit of time. And if you look at him wandering around here, he still yeah. is quite un unfurnished. Is the technical term. Um, um, well, I just want to get, because time to get us a very quick word on Nakatomi in the Golden Shaheen. How exciting. Uh, Wesley Ward has um, been preparing this horse since the Breeders' Cup for this race. Yeah. Um, OK, the prep race at Tampa didn't go, <laughs> go to plan no. and they get stuck in the rails, but uh, these things happen. Um, unfortunately, Wesley got kicked in the head on Tuesday by a horse. Um, he's badly concussed, so he can't fly, but he's OK apart from that. Well, I hope this is a good tonic when he's that horse be, runs. It's going well. to be watching, so all the best, Wesley. Jim, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Good day from Dr. Jim Hay there with a live chance in here, joined by Kirsten Duke, our Australian correspondent. And we've had international success already, one from Hong Kong with California Spangle. Are we going to get a Japanese winner here, Kirsten? I really hope so. I think uh, Forever Young is going to put in a great performance here. And just touching on that Australian connection. I felt so proud watching Brenton Abdullah get that win there on California Spangle. I was so happy for him. And he was buzzing. And we're, you know, it's never lost to me. We love seeing that celebration on World Cup night. I tell you what, Brenton, not only is a great rider, but he's also such a showman. He brings so much to the track. And you could see by the way he celebrated there. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll see another fantastic uh, celebra celebration here, Tom. Yeah, I mean, Ryuji Sakai, when he, he got this horse to win last time in, in Saudi, I mean, it was by the skin of his teeth. He came from way off it and made up a huge amount of ground. He's a horse that's going to going to provide excitement, I think, given his run style. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think, um, I mean, as we're watching them load here, they're all looking absolutely fantastic. And yeah, my eyes are definitely on Forever Young. Arrived in Saudi Arabia with such a big reputation and just uh, was way too good, really. He just, he had no right to win last night, and he did. Yeah, he, uh, in the end, was dominant, but we'll see how he breaks here. Uh, can one of the local team do it? Medelson Bay would, I, I suppose, be the leading chance. Maybe as a a bit of stepping up to do. How are you enjoying the, the Dubai World Cup night? Your your first experience working it, all good? It's been fantastic. I mean, how can I not with people like you? <laughs> I don't know. Some, some may be struggle, I don't know. You're very kind. <laughs> uh, we'll hear from K uh, Kirsten a little bit later on as well for our seventh contest as the runners and riders are loading up ahead of this, the UAE Derby, sponsored by Atlantis, the Royal Pack. Coming for all yours. Thank you, Tom. Here the gate comes up to complete the line. Set to go here for the UAE Derby. Dada has a look at them, likes them, and hits the lever. We are underway in the UAE Derby, sponsored by Atlantis, the Royal. And it is it is Julio Holohara in the early stages with his two of his three runners coming up to contest as they make their way off the front. It is Autobahn in the blue cap. 
from Oasis Boy spotting the white distinguishing cap. Then came next in running there, Guns and Glory, who's a little wide into the first turn, along with Forever Young, who's having to do a fair bit of work there in the early stages, and Ryuze Sake decides to slip back. Mendelssohn Bay finds himself into the box seat now, just in behind the leading division. Behind Forever Young sees George Tesoro with Pandergate. Working alongside there as well was Navy Seal. Then came Rock Walk from Henry Adams, and Ballon d'Or is the last one. So out past the 1,200 metres they go, and the pace is OK. 8.55, 19.24, those early sections there for that first uh, early part. And up in front now taking over Oasis Boy. Heads over to the fence here from Autobahn in second. Then came Mendelssohn Bay, sliding up Guns and Glory, Forever Young. The international market favourite has been no better than three deep and punching the breeze the entire way so far. Then came Pandagate, Navy Seal opting to get on the right horses back here. Then came Ballon d'Or from Rockwalk and dropping away Henry Adams who's getting further away from the field. Inside the 700 they go and up in front, up on the running rail, Oasis Boy leads a narrow margin. Our Autobahn goes up to apply a bit of pressure, Forever Young still travelling despite being deep as they make their way into the home stretch here in the UAE Derby. Then came Mendelssohn. Bay, deeper out Navy Seal, not too far away, Panda Gate still with four to pick up. As they get into the running here, Autobahn takes over, Forever Young on the one rein there, but balances up now, comes up to the outside of Autobahn, who has to be brave. It's Forever Young though for Japan, who comes up to the outside of Autobahn, goes past by a length, Forever Young drawing away here in the late stages, and it's another Japan domination in the UAE Derby. Autobahn very brave in second. Third across Pandagate from Mendelssohn Bay, then came Navy Seal, Rockwall, Guns and Glory, crossing over the line there with Ballon d'Or, and a long last, dropping away Oasis Boyd, a crossover with George Tesoro, and the last one home, Henry Adams, who was pulled out of the contest. Yeah, that was much more straightforward than Saudi. And as Nick had said earlier, as Kirsten just told you, very difficult to see past this winner. And it was all pretty straightforward, I think. He loomed up on the wide outside and then he kicked clear to go and score from Autobahn. He's run an excellent race. That's a big step up. And I thought at one stage he might just have a chance of holding Forever Young. But these two have pulled nicely clear. It was the point turning in where Forever Young just used his pace to go with Autobahn and left the others in behind, almost standing still and, and put five or six lengths between himself and the rest other than Autobahn, who's had the run of the race. And he's extended away to Rin really nicely. This is a hugely exciting horse. He went to Japan and Derma Sutagaki last year. He obviously now lines up with the leading chance in the Dubai World Cup. And that, you would imagine, is how this horse will be campaigned internationally going on to next year. He'll have all the big races on the dirt back home and both internationally on his agenda and you have to wonder whether he'll go to Kentucky it was something that his trainer after Saudi Yoshita Yahagi mentioned whether or not he would have enough points to get in there he wasn't sure but off this surely he will and surely that is where we will see him next or we hope that is where we will see him next uh, they've tried it in the past they tried it of course with Dermot Sotogaki with different connections last year but uh, this horse well he ticks all the boxes doesn't he forever young he's won very nicely from autobahn panda gates run on for third mendelson bay best of the home teams run well in fourth but nothing a match for this star son of real steel forever young
provisional results in the UAE Derby. 5, 1, 12 and 10. Forever Young, your winner, 157-8-9. Official margins 2, unofficial margins 2 by 4 and 3 quarters. 5, 1, 12 and 10, your numbers here in the UAE Derby. Well, give him his space. He deserves it. He's conquering the Gulf. He's done Saudi and he's now done Dubai. Ryusi Sakai, the rider of the brilliant Forever Young. That's exactly what he is. Just take another turn, if you will. This is a very exciting racehorse. Yeah, he's an amazing horse. So I want to say thank you, Ona and my boss, Mr. Hagi, and the groom and all the stuff. And his condition was better than the last race. And he's great performance. You had to be wide throughout. Were you ever worried that he was going to have over race? We had to be worried about, but he doesn't like kick back, so I trust him. I know what this night means to you. I spoke to you when you won the Godolphin Mile. How special does World Cup night prove to you every year? Yeah, it is very, very special, special for me. And could this horse be the Kentucky Derby horse? Could he be a World Cup horse next year? Yeah, he's still improving. Uh, I'm looking for next Kentucky Derby. Well done indeed. Well, our first Japanese winner of the night, perhaps the first of a few under Raisi Sakai for training as Shito Yahagi, the winner of the UAE Derby. Please welcome Forever Young.
correct weight is given in the UAE derby over the 1900 metres. Forever young in a time of 157.89. Margins two lengths by four and three quarters. Correct weight, five, one, 12 and 10. Well, potentially another Yoshita Yahagi trained superstar in the form of Forever Young, who has won this UAE derby sponsored by Atlantis the Royal. To make the presentation, please welcome to the stage Mr. Timothy Kelly, who is the president at Atlantis Global. Timothy, thank you. He'll be presenting those three awards, the largest as ever, to the winning owner, who we'll meet very shortly. And that is, please welcome to the stage, the owner of Forever Young, Susuma Fujita! Congratulations to Mr. Susuma Fujita. His colours carried to success and Forever Young is trained by this man, please welcome Yoshito Yahagi. Well done to Mr. Yahagi. And now please welcome the winning rider. More success on Dubai World Cup night four. Ryuse Sakai. One of the real stars of an international weighing room now. The continued global success for Ryuse Sakai. Well done to him. Thanks to Timothy Kelly, the president of Atlantis Global. Uh, he's presented those three awards, and everyone can take their representative trophies, please. Mr. Yahagi can pick up his trophy. Uh, Mr. Vegeta as well. Your UAE derby, sponsored by Atlantis, the royal winner, Forever Young.
Loads of chances to win on Dubai World Cup night. We've had our best hat competition, which would have gone to Yoshita Yahagi, but he had to collect the award for the UAE Derby. We've got Best Dressed Lady coming up, and we've got our fourth faces at the races. A total of 4,000 dirham on offer. 1,000 dirham to the winner that we will pick now with the best smile going. You can hide your face all you like, but you're smiling. You're smiling. I can see. I can see you are. It looks like you've got nothing to hide. What a beautiful smile that is, sir. And you've won 1,000 dirham. Head to the reward centre, level one, concourse three, to collect your prize. What a smile. It's further success on Dubai World Cup now for Yoshita Yahagi, the winning trainer of Forever Young. This is turning into a very special horse. Thank you very much for bringing him. I really appreciate Dubai Racing Club look after us very well. Thank you very much. Was that the kind of performance you were expecting today? Yes, I expected this performance because, uh, you know, much longer, a uh, little bit longer distance uh, compared to Saudi Cup. Also, condition is also getting better than Saudi Derby too, so. You've bought some very good horses here. I wonder where does he rank and will it be America next? あの、まだ3歳のハードで今ランキングをつけるべき時期ではないと思います。アメリカには行きます。uh, he's still three years old, so I couldn't make decision for like a ranking. I should not do this. So, but we will go to America. Yes. And maybe this time next year, are we going to be talking about a Dubai World Cup horse? Dubai World Cup. I hope so. There you go. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Excuse me, you might have a word. Right, we're about 10 minutes away from the start of the Dubai Golden Shaheen, sponsored by Nakheel. Horse number one is Bold Journey under Frankie de Tori for Bill Mott. A Bold Journey who wasn't beaten too far last time when run down by Remake, who lines up again. He'll make a bold bid here out of stall number four. Horse number two, this is Colour Up is in a star for connections and I hope he runs very well indeed. They've skipped Super Saturday to come here. Doug Watson didn't expect the horse to win at Jebel Ali last time but he duly did so we'll see 
he might just outrun expectation. Don Frankie is number three, possible pace angle for Takashi Sato. Uh, Christian Demuro rides. Uh, this horse is near the top of the ratings, 112, so a little bit off them, but an improving five-year-old. Another local hope is number four. This is Freedom Fighter for Richie Mullen, who won this race with the great Reynaldo the Wizard 11 years ago. Might be a bit fanciful to think Freedom Fighter can emulate that horse. We'll see. He's got a wide draw. Number five is the horse in shot. Nice big field here. This is Hopkins. Louis Sires rides for Bob Baffert. He was behind Sibelius in this race last year. Since then, he's held his form pretty well. Out of nine, could go forward. As could this horse, who's bouncing around the parade ring. This is Igniter, number six. He's got the inside draw in one. Beat Remake in November in their homeland. Two-time NAR Horse of the Year and very, very well regarded in Japan. Another Japanese raider in the form of Kia Dori, who was well behind Remake last time. Christophe Lemaire takes the ride. He'll need to better that to feature here. Wonder if the best chance is to get a nice forward ride, because it's set up for the closers last time. This is number eight. This is Leading Spirit, who won the Mahab Al Shamal on Super Saturday and gave Connections that huge success. Is well worth his place in the lineup. His first run on World Cup night and doubtless a thrill for all connected. Now this is Muhib, uh, perhaps best of the, the local chances. Rated 114, the horse that Nick fancy napped. Nick's nap. Yeah. Good. Nap. Uh, come out of store number 13, but what a bit of a pace. Meltdown was good last time, lightly raced. <laughs> uh, this is number 10, this is Nakatomi. It'd be a, a sonic for the, the trainer who sadly had a bit of an accident back home. But um, his owner, Fitri, oh, Jim Hayes, looking for a, a big run from Nakatomi. Had a bit of a troubled run behind Sibelius and the Pelican Stakes. So we should see, with a clear run, what Nakatomi can do. And here is 11, Remake, who was a winner in Saudi last time. He's held his form really well. Got form ahead of Don Frankie. Behind Igniter, mind, when Igniter got loose on the lead and ahead of him. He showed what he does best last time, making up ground from the rear. However, uh, he had a bit too much ground to make up last year. Number 12 is Run Classic. Trainer seems confident. He was a, a Gulfstream winner in February, strong success that day. And Jose D'Angelo reporting his well-being. He's confident this horse belongs in top company, and that's exactly where he is today. Last year's winner is Sibelius. He came out of a low draw last year, went up the inner. He's drawn higher this time, but six should be absolutely fine. I think you can mark him up on that performance last year. And since then, he's been... Fairly foot perfect, certainly on his last couple of starts. Ryan Moore back on board for Jerry O'Dwyer. It's got quite a big fan club, that horse. Everyone loves Sibelius. Um, I hope we can find Tuz. Tygo Shea's going to ride him. I don't think he's come out yet because right over our shoulder, he is last into the parade ring. And by some way, the other horses are heading out onto the track. He's only just arrived. Tuz, the former Russian runner. Um, he is capable of the spectacular. It wasn't to be in Saudi when the deeper track didn't suit him, but here at Maidan, he's got a bit of brilliance about him and it certainly wouldn't be an unknown for the trainer and the jockey to win in this race. They won with Switzerland just a couple of years ago.
Time then for the best turn that winner's gone to run classic. Well done to him and to the winning groom, Angel Manuel. He takes home the top prize here, generously presented by Mr Aliesa of PHI Advertising. The only social network in Dubai, thanks to PHI. And well done to our winning groom of Run Classic, Angel Manuel. Uh, one man who's had a, a fantastic season domestically is Michael Costa, and it would be one hell of a way to cap it off by winning the Golden Shaheen with Muhib. Um, how is he since we saw him put up that blistering display in January? This is easily the greatest we've had him. His work this week's fantastic. He's a super horse fresh. And this has been his target. We gave him a very light year by design. We, we didn't go to Saudi. We, we kept him here to, to really peak on the night. And it's, uh, you know, we couldn't have him any better from his mental, um, physical, everything about the horse. He's just a very happy horse. How did you assess the draw, given his run style, slipping in maybe? Yeah, slipping in is a, is a horse which settles off the speed and we anticipate a lot of speed. So we've got a great jockey on board, which has been fantastic for us all season. Yeah. So he knows the horse and we've got to leave it in his capable hands. But he'll slot in somewhere and I, you'll be seeing him run home late. This is what you want, isn't it? You come here to be a resident trainer and take on the best horses from the east, the south, the north, the west. And this, this is what Dubai World Cup Night's all about. It is. It's, uh, you know, growing up as a kid, you, you know, idolise Aidan O'Brien and the other trainers and you bump into them uh, here, on, here on the night. So you do have to pinch yourself a little bit. But, um, you know, we've got a job to do and uh, we've got to get winner, uh, winners for his honours. Wish you well. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Loading process underway, one of the most open races of the night. You can make a case for loads of them, including last year's winner, Sibelius. Of course you can, the likes of Nakatomi. Remake was really good last time, and not so much in this race last year. And plenty more besides. They are going in, the stores. All seems well at this stage. It won't take a, a long time to run this contest. Uh, the track record is 109.01. Last year, Sibelius came back in 110. 69. Anything around the 110 something mark is pretty impressive. And we will see what happens with your race caller tonight, Pat Comerford. Thank you very much, Tom. Looking forward to this uh, sprint here for our dirt runners. We do go over the six once again here as Kai Dori comes up into line. Japan still looking for that first golden Shaheen. And they do have four runners here as well. So we'll see if may occur tonight. Freedom Fighter loads away. Rear attendance just having a little bit of a concern here with K.I. Dory. But he comes up into line now. Only a couple more to load forward. Sibelius looking to go back to back. He'll be one of the last ones to load away. Nakatomi coming here with plenty of anticipation. Muhib drawn a little sticky. And have no doubt in your mind that the stable have him in tip-top order after a wonderful season where we have seen the stable of Michael Costa go from strength to strength. Nakatomi loads away. Colour up. The Jebel Ali sprint winner is the last to load for. 1,200 metres, they'll fly along here away in the Golden Shaheen and Tuz caught the start well, going up with Don Frankie. A deeper out on the course, Hopkins gets into the first few. Colour up burns across as well, coming across with Freedom Fighter. K.I. Dory up in that first half dozen with Sibelius. Then came Igniter, a length and a half back to Bold Journey, working alongside uh, Run Classic there in that early part of the race. Uh, behind them, Nakatomi from Muhib, remake, and leading spirit is the last one. So inside the 750 metres they go, Don Frankie puts it to Tuz. 
Colour Up also applying some pressure. They're flying along here, three deep at the moment, providing Hopkins a little bit of cover along with Freedom Fighter. Sebelius is already starting to be felt for here. Ignite at the inside, then came K.I. Dory, Bold Journey, Run Classic Remake. Nakatomi third to last from Muheem and Leading Spirit. Into the, into the lane they come in the Golden Shaheen. And up in front, taking over the running here now was Don Frankie. Puts up three quarts of a length here on Tours, who's game to fight back. They draw away now from Colour Up, Igniter coming from the back in the field, leading Spirit up the running rail, but look at Tours! Tours in the final 200 metres has burned away from them! What a win! Tours for the locals goes on to win by five lengths. A magnificent performance in the Golden Shaheen. Beats home Don Frankie, Nakatomi was getting home late. Potentially run third from Remake Igniter, leading Spirit, run Classic Muheeb, back to K.I. Dory from Bold Journey, Sibelius. And the last couple to pull up here were Hopkins along with Freedom Fighter and Colour Up, who was three deep for most of the way. Wow, where did that come from? That's astonishing. I mean, he had every right to win the race, but not like that. Just has bolted up in a deep renewal of the Dubai Golden Shaheen, sponsored by Nikhil. I mean, I, as, a, as someone that's followed this horse's career very closely, that was electric. Now, he's done it before when he's got away on the speed, but not off the back of a disappointing run last time in Saudi. Whether or not that was going to take it out of him was a question mark. How was he training coming into this? The vibes weren't actually great, but goodness me, he got a perfect sit on the inner. And then a bit like last year's winner, Sibelius, who hasn't backed up that performance at all, he shot up the inner and he has pinged clear to win from the long-time leader, Don Frankie. We talked about there being loads of pace in the race. It, it sort of didn't really materialise. Two got away on the speed, tours up the inner, corners brilliantly. And that was not easy to predict. I'm fairly stunned by that. Now, there was a bit of a schmozzle, as you see with our excellent head-on cameraman, making sure everything's kept in shot, pulling out there as things were pinged wide. Great effort that, because it wasn't easy to see that happening, but we, we did see everything that happened, really. I'm not sure who caused it, and I don't want to cast aspersions. Um, you will see that Sibelius wanted to come out. He was being kept in at this stage by Hopkins. It's hard to see from that angle, but there were a few that were hampered. It didn't make a difference, because this horse was always in the best position to challenge, which is something the stewards will look at and consider. But... Tiger Shea won't care because he has got his horse in a perfect position to challenge. And Bupat Seymour in the winner's enclosure on World Cup night. This will tell us a little bit more of the overhead angle. Keep your eye on the pink hat of Sibelius. Hopkins on his outside in the yellow hat. The closers round the wide outside start to come. And Tuz has already shot up the inner. That is where they start to be pushed a little bit wide. Oh, it was the horse coming out. The horse coming out on the inside, uh, I think the horse is, I think it was, it wasn't Nakatomi, um, but whoever it was caused the right old show was, and it might have been Keir Dory. Either way, it didn't make a difference to the result. Tuz, your comfortable, brilliant winner. Ah, uh, the biggest smile in the UAE from the champion jockey. Tuz has given Ty Gauche another win in the Golden Shaheen. Just talk us through that explosive performance. Yes, he's very fast. Um, we had a great gate number, but we were getting pressured, to be honest. Uh, he had to be good and tough. I was getting pressured a long way out, you know. Um, there wasn't much room for manoeuvre down the inside, but I had a good willing partner, as you can see. He's a he's a fine big horse. Um, but when he straightened up and he went through an Ivan Eadle, you know, I was I was a lint down off uh, Christian on the home turn, and I gave him a squeeze, and the response was... Uh, the response was immediate, you know, he's a he's a high-class horse and uh, when he gets a rail to shoot at, uh, he's very, very, very good. Well, nearly lost the microphone, I'll try again. He He's capable of the spectacular. Was there a taller worry he might have left it behind in Saudi? Yeah, we were worried, but look, when it wasn't happening in Saudi, you know, I think I gave him one flick behind the tail. Um, like, this is his playground here at Maidan. Track, I thought, I felt rode quite deep in Saudi and that's not his gig. Back here on a good track and uh, as I said, he when I won on him here before Saudi, he clocked a better time than 
his stable mate Switzerland did when he won the Golden Shaheen. So yeah. we knew the talent was there. We just had hope hit that the real toast rocked up. You are the champion jockey, and this is what these nights are all about now, isn't it? Because this is the time you express it, what you guys can do against the world. Yeah, look, I've said it numerous times, you know, we don't get many opportunities as opposed to Australia or Europe where there's group ones every other weekend, every other weekend. But like, we've only probably a chance to ride in 15, 10, 15 group ones in a season here. And that's Super Saturday in the Dubai yeah. World Cup night, possibly 10, I'd imagine. So uh, to win one of them is very special. And uh, to win the first one here on, on, on Switzerland and, and now back it up in this lad, it means the world. Yeah, you nearly did it as well last year. Ty, go and enjoy it. Well done. Thank you. Thanks very much. And the numbers in the Dubai Golden Shaheen, sponsored by Nikhil, 14, 3, 10, and 11. 14, 3, 10, 11. Tuz is your winner in a time of 110.19. Margins, six and a half by three quarters of a length. So here he comes. The locally trained winner will be a popular one. Multiple champion jockey out here, Tygo Shea. On board the Bupat Seymour trained Tuz.
Well, a brilliant performance from Tours, and we will commence the presentation shortly. We are waiting for the result to be classified as official, and Dubai World Cup night taking place during Ramadan. Of course, as you see, the result is now official. Tours has won the Dubai Golden Shaheen, sponsored by Nakheel. We will have time for prayer very shortly, and then commence with the presentation after that. It's time for Maghrib prayer according to Dubai's local time. May Allah accept your deeds.
Right, it is time for the presentation then for the Dubai Golden Shaheen. And Tours was remarkable. The Dubai Golden Shaheen, sponsored by Nakheel, to make the presentation. Please welcome to the stage the Chief Assets Officer, Mr. Omar Khoury. And he will be presenting those three awards. And what a fine trophy it is for the Dubai Golden Shaheen. Iconic trophy. Thank you, Omar. And he'll be presenting to the winning owners, that is Daki Stable. Please welcome to collect the award, Yevgeny Kapushev. Well done to Yevgeny. And everyone at Dakar Stables. That's, that's meant to happen, it's perfect, it's happened before. Right, well done Yevgeny. And now the winning trainer, please welcome Bupat Sima, accompanied by Caroline and Sharla. A very popular winner is Bupat out here. With more chances to come, including in the Dubai World Cup itself. And now the winning rider, ridden twos to perfection there to score once again on World Cup night. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiger Shea. Well done to Tiger. Everyone else can go up. If any family want to go up, everyone can come together. Get Tiger's boys up there for a photo. And everyone can come together. Yeah, come on up. You can come on up. Come on, Ty's kids. Off you go. We'd love to have you up there. Well done. Get everyone in the shot together. Ladies and gentlemen, the winning connections of the Dubai Gong Shaheen winner, Tours. It's another Golden Shaheen for the man who's joined us, Bupat Seymour, who's the successor. Um, just, just tell us how that felt when you saw him zip up the rail and go and do what he did. Yeah, I thought it won't happen because he was getting intimidated by, by the other horse who was second. And, um, and you know, Ty, Ty gave him a good ride, he kept him right in there. And uh, when he switched leads, you know, when he gets on a fresh leg, he's a different horse and he picked up, he was very impressive. I know it didn't happen in Saudi, but th this is his happy hunting ground here, isn't it? And well, we were just saying he's really capable of the spectacular at Maidan. Yeah, you know, the ground in Saudi, is, um, it, it, it's, it's a very good track and very safe ground, but it's a, it's a, it's a little bit slower, deeper track. And uh, this horse, he loves fast ground. And then, it didn't, same thing happened to us with Switzerland as well. We took him to Saudi, didn't work out, came here and won the Golden Shaheen. So I think he's been lucky going to Saudi, actually. Oh, yeah, fair enough. It works out OK. Um, to you as the trainer here that you are, what does it mean to you when you are beating those that come from the north, the south, the east, the west? They come here for World Cup night, but you come out on top. Well, this is what we, what we work for. You know, for us, this is the pinnacle of our racing. Um, since, since I was very young, I was watching the Dubai World Cup and, you know, I could, I could never think that I could have a winner there. So now to win a second goal in Shaheen, it's, it's very, very special. Do you pinch yourself sometimes just to, just to check it's real? I will in a little bit, I think. Uh, it, it, it still hasn't sunk in yet. And how will you be, and the team, I know you're an extremely um, social team, I always think. Um, how will you be celebrating later? 
Not sure yet. We're gonna we're gonna find out. We still got one more good big race to go. Well, um, I was going to say yes. It could be topped off. Well, let's hope. Let's hope. We uh, we've had a decent enough result today, and uh, hopefully the the last one's going to be icing on the cake. Everything okay for the World Cup? All good for the World Cup. Well done so far. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>
Right, let's have a look at these. Number one, we'll rattle through them for a brilliant renewal of the Dubai turf. Number one is Cairo. He lines up for Wayne Lorden and Aidan O'Brien. Uh, first start for 42 days off the back of the run in Doha, when uh, not beaten too far. Good performance that was. Two is Calif, uh, Fazinas and Adjun de Vries, rated 112, bit above Cairo. But, but again, not easy to see him taking this, although he ran pretty well behind Spirit Dancer last time. OK, next up, we're going to find number three, and that is Catnip. Trainer has given some pretty pleasing updates since he got here. Michael Stidham, who won the, the World Cup three years ago with Mystic Guides. Catnip, who's third to warm heart in the Pegasus World Cup turf invitational, reads quite well. Horse number four looks really well alongside, actually. It's uh, Dan and Beluga. You've got the headgear on, you can't really miss. Joe Moreira rides for Noriyuki Hori. Uh, obviously, he's got the Equinox form in there. Well beaten by Equinox. Uh, but I, the, the key run coming into this, just touched off by Lord North last year. And next up, we're going to jump to number six, Facteur Cheval, a challenger from France with strong European form. He was second to Paddington in the Sussex Stakes and second to French compatriot Big Rock in the QE2 when last seen. The trainer has sounded quite confident. Ah, Lord North would be great to make history. Look, I think it's going to be tough this time around, but can he win four consecutive Dubai turfs on World Cup night? It would be amazing. Similar sort of prep coming out here this year, but he's eight, won't be easy. Horse number eight is Luxembourg. And Luxembourg could give Ryan Moore and Aidan O'Brien a double on the day. Shouldn't be forgotten about. Could be that he drops down to this distance, so actually for the first time since he ran in a classic in the 2000 Guineas, this sort of distance. It could be that this is what he wants. I don't think that defeat in Saudi was too bad. And Luxembourg, always highly regarded, an interesting player. Some are making their way out. Materno Sky lines up for Mikio Matsunaga and a Nihiro Yokoyama. Uh, was a winner last time, uh, ju just by a neck. Uh, and again, it is a largely consistent performer against some of the best back home. Number 11's Real World. He's been to this race night a couple of times around by World Cup not so long ago and he was back to form or back to the winners enclosure at least in Bahrain three weeks ago which was good to see he was beaten six lengths in this last year Saeed Benzeru looking for a record extending seventh win uh, just to let you know Do Juice has gone out Do Juice making his way out number five onto the track Do Juice so he is one of those that has gone early just before the bell has gone also Dan on Beluga just gone out too there is horse number 12 and that is San Donato good form here tends to stay on late I was a winner here earlier on in the season I think the triple suit but again needs to step up Thirteen is straight at Aaron. Could it be a beautiful double on the night for Brenton Abdullah? He was on the crest of the wave after California Spangle earlier. Casper Founds, the trainer, suggesting he's got more quality than a horse called Senor Toba, who in the end faced a forlorn task against Equinox on this card last year. He's a versatile horse, and we'll see how he plays from stall 12. And there's horse number 14, Voyage Bubble for Ricky Yu. Mikhail Barcelona takes the ride. He's drawn one. He's got some of the form with, with the best back in Hong Kong. The likes of Romantic Warrior, Beauty Eternal, Golden 60. Must be a player based on those peak performances. And this trip could be ideal. 15 comes next, Christian Demuro. He's aboard Namur. Now, she's another of the Japanese runners, and they have won... This race with Mez in recent times, of course, Vivlos and the magnificent Arm and Eye. They were in a very good bracket indeed, but Namur's got some pretty good form. Uh, this is Nashua, the filly. She's a French Oaks winner. Uh, she's a daughter of Frankel. She won over a mile last year. 
Uh, she's versatile, how she's ridden, but she's not helped by stall number 16. She's got the red hood on. OK, we're going to find Dodeuce. Number five, a lot of people are going to want to see this horse and why wouldn't they? Fingers crossed it's all gone to plan this year. Sadly, we didn't get to see him on this card last year, but this time we do. And it's a different race altogether. Japan have won this five times in the last nine years. And this is a very, very strong contender. Measure time is coming down the tunnel, just so you, everyone is aware. Measure time with the red hood on is slowly making his way down the tunnel under William Buick for Charlie Appleby. And there's another out on the track. And that is horse number two, Calif. We've already done Calif. There we are. Uh, so I think we just tell you measure time. It's just, as I say, coming down the tunnel currently. Been really progressive this year. We'll have a look at measure time very shortly. Uh, let's head over and join Kirsten Duke. Well, I'm here with Ricky Yu, trainer of Voyage Bubble. Ricky, he's fast becoming one of Hong Kong's best horses. Yes, he's an upcoming uh, good one. You know, for Hong Kong, I think you know, well, one of my best in my in my yard. How confident do you feel going into this? Uh, he adapted really well here since he came over, and I uh, strongly believe that he'll, he'll, he'll run a terrific race. Last start, he missed out to Romantic Warrior by just a neck in the Hong Kong Gold Cup. That was over the 2,000 metres. Today, he steps back to the 1,800 metres. Does that look to suit him? Yes, I think um, he's been my uh, expert 2,000 metre horse and uh, I still managed to finish second to him. And he won over the mile before. And I think 1,800 uh, would be at this stage would be his best trip, you know, best distance. Fantastic. Who do you think is your biggest rival in this race? Uh, feel. I think uh, one of, one of the, uh, the, the uh, Japanese horse. Yes. Uh, and then... Um, the Japanese horses are very strong this year. Yeah, and uh, horse number eight and ten. Well, we're wishing you the very best of luck in this. Thank you. Now there's Lord North who just did a quarter turn before... Uh, try again. I'll come to Lord North in a minute because there's measured time. Just making his way out with the red hood on. Measured time has been really progressive so far this year over this course and distance, including winning a Group 1 last time. Still has a bit to find, rated 116, but he is progressing and we don't know the limit of his ability. Our thanks to the only digital network in Dubai, PHI Advertising, for supporting the Best Turn Out Award. It's gone to Lord North, the triple winner of this race. There's Aldir Centurial, the winning groom, a few moments ago, just keeping a lid on Lord North. 
And Aldir in front of us now receiving his award, his prize generously presented by Mr Ali Essa, who is the CEO of PHI Advertising. Huge prize money for these winning grooms. Well done to them. The best turned out winner, Lord North. Right, the runners are amassing down at the start. There's Do Deuce, who went out early. And he will come out of stall number four. I guess the really interesting thing is what his very experienced rider, Yutakataki, does from stall number four. He is, Kirsten, the best performer, the best runner in the race. But again, it's what the rider does, because he is normally patiently ridden. Absolutely. I think this is going to be really interesting the way that this uh, so this race pans out. I mean, it, it always is with with these types of races. So you don't know the way they're going to jump, the, the speed that's in this race, and it's going to be interesting. Yeah, and you've got horses in there who are probably quicker over a more suitable distance. But there again, this horse's form ties in with the the best in Japan. Uh, I quite fancy Voyage Bubble. What did you make of Ricky Yu? Yeah, he seems pretty confident. He said it's one of his best horses in the stable. And uh, look, he said he's traveled well over, so you can't really ask much more of the horse. Um, he thinks the Japanese runners are going to be his biggest rivals in this race, which is very much understandable. But uh, he's feeling confident. And obviously, John and Thady Gosden. You spoke to Thady earlier on in the week. He's well represented in this race with Nashmore and Lord North. And if Lord North wins, their roof will come up. Yeah, I mean, if anyone's going to train a winner in this race, I think it's uh, John and Thady, isn't it? And uh, they seemed really happy with the way their horses had travelled over also. And, uh, yeah, I kind of want Lord North to win just so we can see that eruption, to be I, honest. I, I, that's what my, my heart would love. I don't think it's going to happen, but, you know, any World Cup night, any night around the world where Frankie rides a winner, it, 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 that, that's to the night's advantage. And Lord North to make history would be, would be really well received. Go on, I, who, who do you think is the most likely winner? Oh gosh, it's tough, isn't it? Do you know what? Let's go. Let's go, Voyage Bubble. Let's go, Voyage Bubble. Oh my goodness, we're Team Voyage Bubble. Oh, we're both Voyage right. Bubble. Right, you're no. gonna, you're gonna, no, that's fine. We're Voyage Bubble. You can stay with me till after the race, and we'll wrap it up together. And hopefully, hopefully, we'll both be cheering. Yeah, hopefully. Um, I don't know. It's open, isn't it? And I've got nothing right so far tonight. Okay, there's still a few more out the back to load, including Measure Time, who's very progressive, son of Frankel, and really appreciates this distance. And just a few more to go forward in an ultra-competitive renewal of the Dubai Tour, sponsored by DP World. Let's join Pat. Thank you, Tom. We get into the business end of the meeting. Three more races to go. This one for five million US. It is the Dubai Turf, and Lord North, a three-time winner of the race, looking to continue on his win streak here, comes forward for Frankie de Torre. And the field are set here for the Dubai Turf, sponsored by DP World, and they are immediately sent on their way. Now, Lord North came out a little awkwardly there. Frankie went up on one foot, but back down and running and hasn't been hindered as a result. Catnip out fast here in the early stages, going up at Luxembourg. Then came Materno Sky, who's pressing on, and putting uh, plenty of pace into the race early. Lord North's going to be able to hopefully slot in here very soon. Measured time. Lord North three deep at the moment. Voyage Bubble keeping him perched out there. Uh, Nashua using every bit of the track. He's midfield, along with Real World, who's on the rail. Then came Factor Cheval, three lengths to Danon Beluga, followed by Straight Arrow. Aaron Cairo, Dodus is fourth to last, followed by San Donato, then came next in running there, second to last was Namur, and the last one was Calif. So 1,100 metres left to go, first uh, 400 there in 25.25. Materno Sky eventually takes over the lead, and Nashua goes up to the outside in second, working across to sit outside the leader. Measured time, box seats third, will be sweating on a run very shortly. Luxembourg was next, followed by Catnip, who's improving three deep. Lord North on his back, followed by Real World. Voyage Bubble, three back the fence. 
Cluttered up at the moment. Factor Cheval, Danon Beluga also there uh, in that midfield division. Dodoos has had a horror run so far. He's well back on the inside for Yataka Take. He's going to have to weave some magic here. Cairo in the back part of the field as well with Namur. Uh, then came San Donato and the last one, Calif. Into the straight they come. Up on the outside, Catnip puts it to them. Nashua goes with him. Then came Measured Time. Lord North on the outside, starting to stoke up here. Deeper out, Factor Cheval, straight Aaron. Namur the deepest. Plenty of winning hopes here as measured time comes through the inside 200 meters left to go factor cheval the outside factor cheval a narrow leader from namur they claim measured time factor cheval namur the outside try he's tight photo finish not much in that a nose either side factor cheval and namur come down to the line together then came crossing over next was Dudu's who got going late with measured time down on beluga straight Aaron. San Donato was next from Calif. Lord North dropped away with Real World. Then came Nashua from Cairo. Voyage Bubble was hemmed up there on the inside. The last couple home here are Luxembourg along with Materno Sky. And that is about your race here. And unfortunately, it does seem that the catnip has gone amiss here in the late stages. And rider Christophe Lemaire sitting up here at the 50 metre mark. Well, we're bringing news on um, uh, Katnip Christophe Lemaire seems OK. That is good news. That looks as though he's the winner. It's official. Factor Cheval has won the Dubai Turf, sponsored by DP World. Factor Cheval for Jerome Renier and Maxime Guillon has won for Team Valor and Gary Barber. Kirsten Duke alongside me just, just held on in the end. Yamur with a barnstorming run down the outside. And that is where it developed, out down towards the centre of the track. Such a thrilling race. I'm sorry, I was almost speechless there because I was just thinking about the replay in my head. I had no idea who had won. That was so, so, so exciting and absolutely fantastic from Fa Factor Cheval. It was, uh, has been running in Group 1 company so consistently, so very well-deserved win if you ask me, Tom. Yeah, over the far side measure time, I think has run his race. He's, I don't think he's been helped by the race just developing away from him ever so slightly uh, he may have just been touched off for third and finished fourth i confirmed the one two three four and they're in fifth the story of the race doe juice i don't think he was helped by being drawn in for kirsten in the end because he's a patiently ridden horse and his rider yutakataki had to really take him up the inner as opposed to taking up the outer he just got no run and i think it has been too sharp a distance for him that was a really tough watch there for doe juice because i mean we were watching that tom and you and i looked at each other and said what is he going to do he was right back there on the rail and uh, it, it would have had to have been a magic trick to have pulled that run off honestly it was just it was so unfortunate because a very, very talented animal. But on the night, here we are. Son of Star Miler, Rip Chester, Factor Cheval, who cut his teeth with the very best of them back in Europe, between France and the UK. Uh, ran at Longchamp, Goodwood, ran at Ascot his last few starts. Chased home Paddington in the Sussex. That was an excellent run, but he's yet to get his head in front uh, away from. Uh, Europe and on the biggest stage of all Kirsten has stuck his head down at the right time. What a place to do it. If you're yeah. going to win a Group 1 on Dubai World Cup night, he's decided, you know what, today's the day I'm really going to turn up. Yeah, and, and taking home the bulk of $2.9 million. That'll do. Factor Cheval wins the Dubai Tour. A big success, the Frenchman all smiles, Maxime Guillaume, who's won this race before with that great grey solo almost a decade ago. You've won it again? Nine years? Nine years ago, it's still a long time. You don't look old enough for it. Talk us through it. Did you think you'd won? Uh, just after the winning post, I didn't know if I win or not, uh, because the also stepped off outside of me. Come and uh, he progressed all the time, but uh, this is the first one for him this year. Yeah. Um, I think everybody know him. Uh, it's a, uh, it's a really good, really really good champion. But uh, we never know uh, if the ground is okay for him because uh, normally he loves the soft ground mm. and the heavy ground when he finishes second in Ascot. But today he have a really good turn of foot, strong turn of foot. Didn't he just? Um, I'm looking forward to seeing where we go with him. I must just quickly ask you while you're here. I know you love World Cup night. Do you think you can win the Shima Classic with Junker? Um, I hope so. I will try my best for that. 
Is it special to come back and have another winner here? I hope so, yeah. Well done. Provisional results in the Dubai Turf sponsored by DP World 6, 15, 4 and 10. Factor Cheval gets the win, 145, 9, 1. Margins unofficially a short head by three quarters of a length. 6, 15, 4 and 10, race 7. Georgia, go. <laughs> Maxime Guillon salutes the crowd. Well done to Jerome Renier, to Team Valor LLC and Gary Barber. The winner of the Dubai Turf, sponsored by DP World, Factor Cheval. Well, I'm here with jockey Joe Marrera. Joe, take us through that race. Yeah, Dino Beluga didn't begin that well. I just had to give him a chance from there. Hug the rail, saving ground. It took a little while to wind up and get to his top speed when we were approaching to the last furlong and a half. He dashes home like he could have got there. Unfortunately, the finish line got to us a little bit too early, but at the end of the day, I'm extremely proud of his performance. And um, as I said to the connected to shame, he didn't come home today as a winner, but um, I'm very proud of him. If you take us through that race, uh, what was going through your head navigating that field? Because it was full of depth. Yeah, listen, uh, as we approach to the thousand meters, everybody else on top of each other, pushing each other towards the inside to save ground. And I just had to give him as much as space as I could. As I said, I said, I saved the ground on the fence and uh, um, I didn't get any interruptions as we got into the home straight. He dashes home as I would like to. Unfortunately, he just took a little bit too long to wind, wind uh, himself to his top speed, as I said. Uh, but he hits the line very well. He's a very beautiful animal to look at. Personality-wise, what is he like? He's a very nice horse to ride today as we had the blinkers on him for the first time. Uh, he, had, he was a bit of a handful, but nothing that I couldn't control. Uh, he managed he, to keep himself 
um, keep all his energy to himself he, and he used that at the race unfortunately going home not not as a winner hopefully next time because uh, it, he's a fantastic horse thank you dear thank you for your time
Ladies and gentlemen, the next thing to take place at the main stage will be the Sponsor Appreciation Awards. We will have the presentation for the Dubai Turf, sponsored by DP World after that. Unfortunately, Christophe Lemaire, who came down off catnip, he has been uh, taken away for observation, and so the results yet to be made official. Uh, the result won't change, but it will be made official after that. We may also have a jockey change in our last race with Christoph on, on his way for observation at hospital. Uh, we will let you know about that, but we will shortly have the 2024 Dubai World Cup Sponsor Appreciation Awards. Oh, that's correct weight given in the Dubai Turf, sponsored by DP World, the Group 1 numbers 6, 15, 4 and 10. Correct weight in race number 7. An update to riders for the remainder of the meeting. Christophe Lemaire has been stood down from riding for the remainder of the program. Take note, in race number 8, where he was once going to partner Stars on Earth, the new rider is Frankie de Tori. Race eight, number 11, to be ridden by Frankie Dettori. Race nine in the Dubai World Cup. Number four, Derma Sotagake, will now be partnered by Oshin Murphy. Race nine, number four, to be partnered by Oshin Murphy. They are rider changes, but correct weight for race number seven here at Maidan. صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد آل مكتوم نائب رئيس الدولة رئيس مجلس الوزراء حاكم دبي أصحاب السمو أصحاب المعالي والسعادة الحضور الكرام السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Your Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, 
Good evening. يسرنا أن نرحب بكم في حفل تكريم رعاة أمسية كأس دبي العالمي ل 2024. Welcome to the 2024 Dubai World Cup Meeting Sponsors Appreciation Ceremony. ويشرفنا أن ندعو الشيخ راشد بن دلموك بن جمعة آل مكتوم رئيس مجلس إدارة نادي دبي سباق دبي للخيل للمسرح لتكريم الرعاة. We're honored to invite Sheikh Rashid bin Dalmouk bin Jum'a Al Maktoum, Chairman of Dubai Racing Club, to the stage to award each of our sponsors. بداية مع فاي للدعاية والإعلان راعي جائزة الخيل الأفضل مظهرا. Firstly, فاي Advertising Sponsor of the Best Turned Out Horse Award ويسرنا أن ندعو السيد علي عيسى المدير العام للشركة لاستلام الجائزة فليتفضل مشكورة. We're delighted to invite علي عيسى, Executive Director of فاي Advertising, to receive the award. شركة ون زعبيل رعاة دبي كحيلة كلاسيك للخيول العربية الأصيلة ون زعبيل the sponsor of Dubai كحيلة كلاسيك ويسرنا دعوة السيد ماثيو شال مدير العام لون زعبيل لاستلام الجائزة we invite to the stage Mr. Matthew Shaw general manager of ون زعبيل لاستلام الجائزة إعمار رعاة غودالفين مايل إعمار سبونسرز أوف غودالفين مايل يسرنا أن ندعو السيد أحمد المطروشي عضو المجلس الإدارة التنفيذي لاستلام شاهد شهادة التكريم بالنيابة عن إعمار receiving the appreciation certificate on behalf of إعمار مستر أحمد المطروشي executive board member الطاير للسيارات رعاة دبي جولد كاب الطاير موتورز سبونسر اوف ذا دبي جولد كاب ويسرنا ان ندعو السيد حميد احمد الطاير الرئيس التنفيذي للعمليات البيع بالتجزئه في مجموعه الطاير لاستلام شهاده التكريم بالنيابه عن الطاير للسيارات ريسيفينج ذا اوورد اون بيهاف اوف الطاير موتورز مستر حميد احمد الطاير تشيف اوبريتنج اوفيسر ريتيل ات الطاير جروب عزيزي للتطوير العقاري رعاة الجو سبرنت عزيزي ديفلوبمنت سبونسر اوف الجو سبرنت ويسرنا ان ندعو السيد مروس عزيزي مؤسس ورئيس مجلس اداره شركه عزيزي للتطوير العقاري وفرهاد عزيزي المدير التنفيذي لشركه عزيزي للتطوير العقاري لاستلام الجائزه ريسيفينج ذا ابريشيشن سيرتيفيكت اون بيهاف اوف عزيزي ديفلوبمنت مستر مرويس عزيزي فاوندر اند شيرمان اند فرهاد عزيزي سي او اوف عزيزي ديفلوبمنت Atlantis the Royal Ruat Derby Emirat Atlantis the Royal sponsor of UAE Derby we yasurna an ned'u sayyid Timothy Kelly na'ab ra'is tanfidhi wal mudir at-tanfidhi li Atlantis the Royal li istilami shahadat at-takrim bin niyaba an Atlantis the Royal receiving the appreciation certificate on behalf of Atlantis the Royal is Mr. Timothy Kelly executive vice president and managing director of Atlantis Dubai Nakhil al-Aqariya Ruat Dubai Golden Shaheen نخيل سبونسر اوف دبي جولدن شاهين ويسرنا ان ندعو السيد عمر خوري كبير مسؤولي الاصول لاستلام شهاده التكريم بالنيابه عن شركه نخيل العقاريه. ريسيفينج ذا ابريشيشن سيرتيفيكت اون بيهاف اوف نخيل مستر عمر خوري تشيف اسيتس اوفيسر. دي بي وورلد رعاة دبي Dubai Turf, DP World Sponsor of Dubai Turf, we serve and ndr Sayyid Sultan bin Islam, Raiz Majlis Al Idara, and Raiz Al Tafidi for the company Nawa Mawan Dubai Al Alamiya, the Dual Majlis Taqam Al Khaliji, and Sayyid Abdullah bin Dmithan, Raiz Al Tafidi, and the Dual Majlis Taqam Al DP World in the Emirates Arab Emirates and the Dual Majlis Al Hurra, Jabal Ali, for the recognition of the Takrim, in the name of the company. Receiving the appreciation certificate on behalf of DP World, Mr. Sultan bin Islam, Group Chairman, CEO, and DP World of GC. And Mr. Abdullah bin Dmithan, CEO and Managing Director of DP World in UAE and Jafsa. Longjean, a مقدم جائزة Longjean Dubai Shima Classic. Longjeans present the Longjeans Dubai Shima Classic. We يسرنا أن ندعو سيد ماتياس بريشن المدير التنفيذي للونجين لاستلام شهادة التكريم. We're delighted to invite to the stage Mr. Matthias Bresson, CEO of Longjeans.
واخيرا طيران الامارات راع رعاة كاس دبي العالمي منذ 28 عاما اند لاستلي ايميريتس ايرلاين سبونسر اوف دبي وورلد كاب فور 28 ييرز ناو ويسرنا ان ندعو السيد عادل الغيث نائب الرئيس الاول للعمليات التجاريه لاستلام شهاده التكريم بالنيابه عن طيران الامارات وي انفايت تو ذا ستيج مستر عادل الغيث اس في بي كوميرشال اوف اوبريشنز ايميريتس ايرلاين نشكر سمو الشيخ راشد بن دلموك بن يمعه آل مكتوم على تشريف المنصه وتكريم الرعاه. We would like to thank الشيخ راشد بن دلموك بن يمعه آل مكتوم for honoring us on the stage and presenting the awards. كما نود أن نشكر الرعاة على دعمهم وتفانيهم لإنجاح كأس دبي العالمي لعام 2024. نستكمل الآن ما تبقى من برنامجنا اليوم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. We would like to thank our sponsors. We appreciate your support throughout this momentous occasion. And we hope you will join us in continuing to celebrate the spirit of horse racing and the bond it creates among us. We wish you all a wonderful evening. Well, just again to echo uh, thanks to all of our sponsors, the Nair and the Sponsor Appreciation Award Ceremony, uh, one of whom was the sponsor we're about to see now because it is time for the presentation for the Dubai Turf, sponsored by DP World. And to make the presentation, please welcome up to the stage Mr. Sultan bin Suleim, the Group Chairman and CEO at DP World. He'll be presenting those three gold trophies, including the iconic Dubai Turf Trophy, And Mr. Suleim can make his way to the stage. Thank you ever so much. He'll be presenting the awards. In fact, he's going to be accompanied by Mr. Abdullah bin Damathan as well. 
the CEO and Managing Director at DP World GCC, to make the presentation. Uh, first of all, huge congratulations to Team Bala LLC and Gary Barber, and to receive the award on behalf of Team Bala, please welcome to the stage Bart Siegel and Jeff Keckley. Congratulations to Bart and to Jeff. A thrilling finish and they came out on top. Well done to Team Bala. And to the winning trainer. Please welcome Mr. Jérôme Renier. Jerome, huge congratulations to you. More international success. And now we can welcome the winning rider of Factor Cheval. Please welcome Maxime Guillaume. Well done to Maxime. A really popular winner, this horse, in the Dubai Turf. Sponsored by DP World. And once again, everyone can come together. Maxime, you stay there for a group photo. Jerome. And to Bart and Jeff. And the rest of the team, come on up. Well done, guys. What a success for France, for America, and for Factor Cheval. Well, riders are on their way into the paddock ahead of the Longines Dubai Shima Classic. Sponsored, of course, by Longines. Number one, the mount of, well, Maxime Gill. He's doing a quick change. Junko, trained by Andre Fab in the Wertheimer Brothers colours. And Junko is a five year old, rated 117, just touched off last time. Held his form pretty well at home this season. At number two is Justin Palace, Joe Marrera taking the rides. Interesting runner, winner of the Tenno Show Spring last season. He's a very strong stayer. Runner up to Equinox in the Tenno Show in October as well. He's a, a great addition to the race and the trainer firmly believes the track should suit. Here's Point Lonsdale. Uh, he wasn't at his best when seen in the Amir Sword Trophy last time, or the Amir Trophy, I should say. It, it, I, it just didn't work out there for him. And prior to that, he was in good form in Bahrain. We're not beaten too far by Spirit Dance, a form that has worked out. Point Lonsdale. Right, this is number seven that we're going to have a look at now. This is Sissa Fahan. Lucas Delosier takes the rides. He was third to bold act in the City of Gold on Super Saturday. He did run seventh in an arc, but um, his form brings him up a bit short, I would say. 
a spirit dancer for Dunn, Ferguson and Mason. Richard Fahey, the trainer, and Ashin Or on board, who gave the horse a peach of a ride in Saudi last time. He's progressed really well. Uh, and the run out here wasn't too disappointing. I think it was a prep for Saudi. It worked out. He's up to a mile and a half. And number nine, this is one of the star attractions of the race, if not the entire night, is August Rodan, the dual derby winner, the Breeders' Cup turf winner, an awesome addition to the race. And Ryan Moore already saying he's up there with one of the best that he has ridden. He is a fascinating runner. It's great that he's racing on at four, and it's great that he's here in Dubai. Uh, here's Emily up, John, she's got the hood back on, that's a plus. Be interesting to see how she handles this atmosphere. Uh, she looks okay at the moment, she's got two handlers with her. And I'd imagine that Kieran Schumacher will want to just get on board and get her out onto the track as, as soon as possible. On peak form, she's got a real chance. Number 11 is next, and best wishes, of course, to the sadly stricken Christophe Lemaire, who would have been riding stars on earth, it's now Frankie de Tori. And Stars on Earth, who was runner up to De Deuce in the Arena McKinnon. De Deuce wasn't capable of winning the turf, our previous race, but we shall see. It's more than just a match because we're going to be talking about August Rodan, we're going to be talking about Liberty Island, but Stars on Earth is a lively player. Now here is Liberty Island, the star Japanese mayor, Japanese Phillies Triple Crown winner, and beaten by Equinox last time finished ahead of stars on earth. Uh, there's a, a real buzz about her and it'll be fascinating to see what she can do. Liberty Island. Well, let's go back and find number six. It got a little bit warm when I was up in the pre-parade ring having a look. This is Sim Camila, who was sixth to Rebels Romance in Doha. He did win a German Group 1 last year, but this will be tough. Still got a couple making their way out, I think. There is Sir Alex Ferguson, who's enjoyed a great Middle Eastern tour uh, with uh, his um, partner in crime, with uh, Jeb Mason. They've had great success in the UK as well this year. And uh, Spirit Dancer, he bred the horse. He, he's, got a, he's definitely got a shot here, but he's trying to mix it with the best over a mile and a half. It will not be easy. Horse is still coming down the walkway. Now, one of them is in the all blue of Godolphin Rebels Romance, and Shaya is behind him. So both horses four and five are now entering the paddock. Just entering the paddock, Rebels Romance and Shaya. There's August Rodan. It's difficult to say that he will improve for the run, but just in the, in the back of your mind, you wonder where he is for this, given that there's going to be a real European campaign on his agenda. Rebels Romance then has just entered the paddock with a red hood on, number four. There he is, under William Buick. Excellent winner of the Amir Trophy when last seen. And prior to that, he won his prep race at Kempton. And he's a Breeders' Cup winner as well. And that is Shah Yar, previous winner of this race. Didn't work out last year. I think he's probably best when he gets rolling. Christian Demuro on board. He'll come out of stall number two.
I know is they pulled on the camera with the gear to go on the parachute. That's what I remember. Right, it's best turned out time, and it has gone to horse number nine, August Rodan. A brilliant derby winner from last year. First start for 147 days, being led around a few moments ago by Rachel Richardson, who is the best turned out winner. A well done to her. She takes the prize of a thousand US dollars, and that is being presented by Mr. Aliessa from PHI Advertising, their CEO. Rachel, a huge part of this horse's development, August Rodan. Well done to her. The best turnout winner, August Rodan. Right, did we agree on this race? No, no. no. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. Have you had a winner yet? No, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Unbelievable. No, no, I haven't. I managed to pick the, the, the left field selection forever young. Yeah, and, and um, uh, where did you well, find that one from? They've not been eating like, like no. twos. Factor Cheval, not expected, no. but that's no bad thing for the night. We've had a lovely spread of, of proper international winners. They've won from here, they've won from Japan, Hong Kong, and of course France as well. What are we going to get here? Well, we've got a serious race, haven't we? Yeah. Um, this is the race of the night, isn't it? Speaking to, to Rachel there, she, she talked about August Rodan. It's interesting, as a horse who, in, in his nature, he keeps himself fairly fit. Right. So we've levelled at, at, at the horse and the race that, you know, this is the start for him of what could be a very important long four-year-old campaign. Mm. And an extremely valuable one as well. Correct. So you don't we want to leave exactly it the behind prospect here. Is. Um, you know, you wonder what his sort of first target back in the UK will be, or Ireland. Um, and, 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 you know, that will come off the back of whatever happens here. But uh, I thought Liberty Island was the, was the, the sort of safer play, the most likely option, yep. you? Yep. Um, I'm an Emily Upjohn fan. Oh, you are? And I did get the, the privilege of going up to the choir, the pre-parade ring and watching superstar after superstar. They just kept coming round one by one. And she's, she's a very impressive mare to look at. Was she quite relaxed? Yes. Yes. The only one that I thought got a little bit on edge was the six, um, Sim Camila. So um, nothing necessarily worrying me about any of the principles, I didn't think. Because she was brilliant at Epsom when she yeah. won the Coronation Cup that day in a very good time. Getting her freshest key. And then the hood came off and she wasn't so good. And she didn't, just twice in a King George and Ascot, she hasn't really handled the prelims. So fascinating to see how she goes here you can make a case for, for loads of them stars on earth now the mount of frankie Tory. really unfortunate for christophe lemaire yeah. considering not just this mount but of course the the looming presence that is derma sotagake in the last race so our thoughts very much with him yeah i hope he's okay um so there is point lonsdale in one under wayne lorden uh he might just be a a, a horse to point and shoot here maybe no bad thing for august rodan can yeah. spirit dancer do it I, I mean, I'd love to see it because he has been the most extraordinary story. It's not a rags to riches by any means, but the fact he's here rather than in the turf is a statement because, listen, they're tough races, whichever one you go for, but they really feel that stretching him out to 2,400 metres is key. And one thing he has done is travel with a bit of brilliance and, and durability as well because you've seen him in November in Bahrain going and do what he did last time out in Saudi Arabia. He's, he's pretty extraordinary. 
Yeah, and Rebels Romance has proved that he can travel and win at the top level yep. successfully as well. He might have had just confidence boosters recently as well. Yeah, it's just this is a seriously deep race. And yep. calling his first Longines Dubai Shima Classic. Pat Comerford, all yours. And what a pleasure it will be. Thank you very much, Tom. Looking forward to our penultimate event here. And class from top to bottom. Last two to load forward. Spirit Dancer and Sharia. They will complete the field here at the 2400 metres for the Longines Shima Classic. They are set to go. Starter likes them racing in the Shima Classic. Star on, on Earth was very fast away. Anticipated the start with Rebels Romance, who works across with Liberty Island. Shariar up in the first cr uh, group there as well with Point Lonsdale. Then came Justin Palace from Sim Camila. About two lengths back, sees Zajunko, followed there next by Emily Upjohn, who's up on the running rail. August Rodan is third to last from Spirit Dancer and Sisfahan. So out the front they go, past the 2,000 metres, and Rebels Romance in the Royal Blue leads the way. Off the track with Point Lonsdale, up to his inside here in the first couple. Then came Shariar, who's two and a half lengths off the speed. It was a link there to Justin Palace. Head on chest in fourth is shut off nicely from Stars on Earth the same. Then came Emily Upjohn. They're not breaking any records here in the Shima Classic. Liberty Island was next, followed there by uh, Simca Mill. Then came Junko, August Rodan, travelling well at the back on the steel from Spirit Dancer. And the last one is Sisfahan. So they are strung out here as Point Lonsdale and Wayne Lorden now injects a little bit more tempo. Past the 1,400 metres, the margin now three lengths. Rebels Romance races in isolation in second. Third, a similar margin back there to Sharia. Followed there next in turn by Justin Palace, who's fourth and about half a dozen lengths off the leader. Stars on Earth was next. Emily Upjohn, the rail, continues to travel well from Liberty Island, Sim Camila. Then came Junko from August Rodan, Spirit Dancer, Sisfahan still last and sees them all. Inside the 1,000 metres they go and the tempo has been moderate despite the fact that Point Lonsdale has been left to his own devices. Kick clicks it up now by three lengths. Rebels Romance at a similar margin there still hasn't made any impressions yet on Point Lonsdale. Then came Sharia, followed there by Justin Palace, who tags up the rest of the field here. The second division with stars on earth, Emily Upjohn. Then came Liberty Island with 10 to make up. Followed there by Sim Camila, then came Spirit Dancer as they start to make their way to the top of the straight. Orcus Rodan, a dozen lengths off the leader, and the last one, Sisfahan. Point Lonsdale heads into the straight here. A narrow leader from Rebels Romance who goes up to eyeball him now. Then came Sisfahan. Liberty Island not picking up at the moment. Justin Palace. Then came next in running there was Emily Up. John Liberty Island starting to make ground, but Rebels Romance is off and gone here in the Shima Classic. Rebels Romance coming past the 100 metres, and his owner, his owner, Shane. Mohammed, it is going to be Rebels Romance for Godolphin in the Shima Classic. Two and a half on the line, beats home Sharia. Liberty Island third, just over Justin Palace. Then came Emily Upjohn, followed there next in turn uh, by Point Lonsdale, who dropped the way late with Junko. Then came next over was Sisfahan from Sim Camila, Stars on Earth. The last two home, Spirit Dancer and August Rodan. Disappointing. A Godolphin winner on Dubai World Cup night 2024. And what a ride as well from William Buick. He had the horse in the perfect position to challenge. Charlie Appleby had said, we're not afraid to use him. We won't be far away. He stays and he has got that spot on. The truth is those further back couldn't close. They didn't go quick enough. William Buick was alert to that out of 11 and he always had his horse in the perfect position to challenge. And the horse that took out the Amir Trophy comfortably last time has gone on to win the Longines Dubai Shima Classic presented by Longines in some style in the end. Shah Yar back in second, Liberty Island back in third. A 2-3 for Sunday Racing Company Limited. That's not what they would have wanted because they wanted to take out the big one with a horse that's won it before and a, a star Japanese mare. But Liberty Island, the filly, has just got a bit too far back, I think. She switched ride in the straight. Augusta Rodan, he was 
quite a way back, and I think Ryan Moore knew his number was up as well on the rail. I think you'd put a line through that. He's better than that, and maybe he will take a step forward for that run. He's not had a hard race there. Edging out to the right in the end, stars on earth under Frankie de Torre. She's gone way right. She may have had a chance of affecting the place if she'd have kept straight. But ultimately, Rebels Romance just proved the most straightforward horse in a race where not many got into it. And what a star this horse is, having won a, a Breeders' Cup, having won on his travels elsewhere in the States, and then that nasty incident where he unseated at Saratoga and Richie Mullen was on board. And he's had to fight his way back from then. Belmont he went after that and struggled. But then a little break, he came back at Kempton to win, went to Doha, he's come here fit and ready, and on the night has proved much the best. To give Charlie Appleby and Team Godolphin William Buick another Longines Dubai Shima Classic. I can um, get the perspective that this mattered quite a lot to William Buick. It's as animated as you tend to see him, it really is. What a superb ride it was as well. William Buick, we're going to catch a word with him. That is a record extending fifth win in the Dubai Shima Classic for William Buick. I think I know exactly how much that means, William. I'm going to come in and grab a quick word super ride just talk us through how the race was won on this horse no it was uh, look he's he showed in Qatar what a versatile horse he is you know he's um he usually his best form has always been held up so Qatar I tried something new and you know Charlie was very keen today to adapt similar tactics and we got a lovely slipstream from the leader so look he's a he, he's a very good horse on his day and he showed that today so I'm absolutely delighted and he's a great horse and I'm just so, so happy that he's back to his best. Because of who is here, because of this night, because of these colours, is that what is explaining your buoyant scenes after the line, Will? Absolutely, you know, His Highness wants to see the best horses come to Dubai and, um, and the best horses are here. So these races are incredibly hard to win. Yep. So of course I'm, <laughs> I'm incredibly happy and uh, great for the team, great for everybody and uh, Look, it's, it's great to be here and to ride a winner is fantastic. And what a, what a training performance as well, Charlie Appy. Three years after this horse won the UAE Derby, it's longevity and a bit of durability there as well. Yeah, amazing training performance, you know, great job by the whole team. And um, yeah, look, I'm, I'm, I'm in a fortunate position to be able to ride these horses, so. Yeah. I think quite a few people are going to be pleased there's a winner in blue coming in. Go and show them what they want. Well, well done. Of course we are. And the numbers in the Lim Longine Dubai Shima Classic. 4, 5, 12 and 2. 4, 5, 12 and 2. Rebels Romance gets the job done for Godolphin. 226.72 winner's time. What a classic guy. Perfect race for him. Thank you, thank you. Watch out, guys! So here he comes back in the winner's enclosure. Another good old for known Charlie Appleby train, William Buick, ridden of the Longines Dubai Shima Classic.
Please welcome Rebels Romance. time is doing that now. He's getting stronger, but he just needs more time. That's all he needs. Uh, By Frankel. But the mayor is back to Dubai now. <laughs> has been given in the Longjean Dubai Shima Classic numbers 4, 5, 12 and 2 confirmed Rebels Romance our official winner in 226.72 margins 2 by 1 4, 5, 12 and 2 correct weight race 8 made up
Okay. Time for the presentation then for the Longines Dubai Shima Classic presented by Longines. To make the presentation, first of all, please welcome to the stage Mr. Matthias Breschken, the CEO at Longines, and Mr. Patrick Orn, who is the regional brand manager, Middle East and Southeast Asia. Thank you both. How wonderful to see the Godolphin Blue carried to success once again on Dubai World Cup night and in this contest. And now please welcome to the stage to receive the award His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council. Again, congratulations to Team Godolphin, the winning owners. And now time to welcome the winning trainer. Once again, success on Dubai World Cup night for Charlie Appleby. Smiles for Charlie. We know that'll mean a huge amount to him with the four runners he brought here tonight. And he's tasted success once again, as has this man, a phenomenal record in the Longines Dubai Shima Classic presented by Longines. Please welcome William Buick. So our thanks again to our presenters, Mr. Matthias Breschken, the CEO at Longines, and Mr. Patrick Ahn, who is the regional brand manager. And once again, if Charlie and William can come together for a, a final photo. Thank you ever so much, both of you. Well done again. Ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the Longines Dubai Shima Classic presented by Longines, Rebels Romance. Right, we have one more race to go, and it is the big one, but we will get there, because first of all, it is time for the final faces at the races. Some would say this is the big one. Who is going to win 1,000 dirham? Just for smiling, that's all you've got to do, and we will pick one of you. Remember to head to the reward centre, level one, Concourse 3, to collect your prize. It had to be! Look at that smile, look at that mouth! I'm delighted for you, 1,000 dirham. And if something says Dubai World Cup night to me, that smile is it.
Dubai World Cup time then. Sponsored by Emirates Airline. Hello. And horse number one is Clapton. He's tried here a couple of times. It hasn't worked out yet. There have been reasons why it hasn't worked out. He's not the easiest horse, I don't think. He doesn't like being around horses a huge amount. Maybe a draw in seven will help. He'll look to come fast and late. Next up is horse number two, that is Krupi. Trainer said they're taking a shot, that being Todd Fletcher. Feels that if the horse steps up and gets a bit lucky with a good pace scenario, he can get a piece of it. He ran on to take third in the Pegasus World Cup. So that is Dermot Sotogake. Remember, he's now the mount of Oshin Murphy, Dermot Sotogake. He'll come out of eight. He was the brilliant UAE Derby winner last year ahead of Dura Aredi. And he had some good form this season, including when just behind White Barrio at the Breeders' Cup. Number five is another for Japan, Dura Aredi. And there is growing confidence behind the chance of this horse. He's been working very well. Second to Derma Sotagake in last year's UAE Derby, albeit well behind. He'll look to go one better in the biggest race of them all. You can see the hat there of Kabir Khan <coughs> making his way out. Uh, he's been foot perfect here this season. He's got a huge following from Kazakhstan. And he'll be a hugely popular winner as well for local trainer Doug Watson and Patrick Dobbs. Number seven, this is Laurel River. Who would have thought it a couple of months ago when this horse was making his UAE debut in a sprint? He was brilliant over 1,600 metres on Super Saturday. And as the connections have said, there are 12 million reasons to try the 2,000 metres here. Bupat Seymour is already on the score sheet today. This one would mean that much more. Now there is military law and he carries the colours of Mr Nasser Asker, huge supporter of racing out here. Musabra Ameri trains Oscar Chavez, takes the ride. He was a Group 2 winner last time from Walk of Stars, and Walk of Stars ran well earlier on. Yeah, this way, this way. Number nine, that is Newgate. Another one potentially for Frank Dettori and for Bob Baffert. They have four wins each in this very race. Could it be that record fifth for Frankie Dettori? We'll see. He's having a quick enough turnaround having only one at San Trinita at the beginning of the month. This is the Saudi Cup winner, Senor Buscador, for Todd Fincher, Junior Alvarado, bred by Joe Peacock. And uh, this horse was excellent last time when coming from off the pace in the Saudi Cup. Prior to that, he'd just been touched off by National Treasure and hoist the gold. Well behind uh, White Barrio at San Trinita at the Breeders' Cup and a live chance. And number 11 needs little introduction. He is the title holder. That is Ushba Tesoro, who came from a, while, a mile back to win this race back in 2023. He bids to become only the second horse in the history of the Dubai World Cup to win it twice after the great thunder snow. And the other one in the colours of Rotokuji Henji Holdings, Com Company Limited, is Wilson Tesoro. He'll come at a stall 11. Yusuke Hara takes the ride for Hitosh Hitoshi. Kotagawa. Now he might be a pace angle in the race because he might be there for Ushba de Soro. Don't know that for definite, but um, that could be the angle with him out of stall number 11 because Ushba de Soro, his owner companion, will want some pace. And there is the final runner. And I have to say that the jockey did well to get through. It's a packed paddock and on the way in, the rider of defunded took that little bit longer to get in. And it's a horse who trained these days in Saudi Arabia, and was seventh in the Saudi Cup. He did win the Grade 1 Hollywood Gold Cup at Santa Anita last summer when trained over in America, but has got work to do to prove he's as good as he was.
All right, I think they're going to resaddle this horse, Derma Sotogake. So we are going to have a little delay. Shouldn't take too long, but just a little delay before the race. Obviously due to be off at 8.35, this happens, and we just need to make sure the saddle is fixed in place properly. Of course, it's a late jockey change as well. Uh, every, every rider rides differently, and, and as she Murphy is on board, this horse, Derma Sotogake, taking over from Christophe Lemaire. Derma Sotogake, who arguably has some of the best form in the race in the form of his second to White Tavaro in the Breeders' Cup Classic. An excellent winner as well of the UAE Derby last year. And he is actually the best turned out winner, so we may as well keep him in shot and we can do our, our best turned out award straight away. Uh, we'll just get in position for it and present that award to him. So there he is, best turned out winner, Derma Sotogake, just being resaddled at this stage. And well done to the winning groom, because he takes home 2,000 US dollars. Nasatoshi Sigawa, well done to him. $2,000 off, thanks to PHI Advertising for such generous support. That'll mean a huge amount to these grooms of the best turned out award. And to Mr. Aliessa for once again presenting that award. Well done to the winning groom of Derma Sotogaki and our thanks to PHI Advertising. Let's find Nick Lightfoot. Uh, he's ever generous with his time, Doug Watson, and particularly when we are in the, the cusp of, of the biggest one yet. Kabir Khan's his big shout at the Dubai World Cup. Um, just as an overview, has everything gone as you would have hoped? I know that in the last time, well, the last time I spoke to you, you were just hoping for a clean run. Has it been clean? Yeah, it's been a great run up to the race as far as training goes, and now we just want one in the race. How is he looking? Uh, great. You know, he's a monster, isn't he? He's a, he's a really nice horse. I mean, he's got to step it up. I mean, obviously, you know who's in here and, and stuff, and he's never run against horses like this before, but um, we have a lot of faith in him, and I'm, I'm just hoping he has a clean run and, and can finish as close as he can. If he can win, that's fantastic, but uh, I'm just real excited to have him in. And, and lastly, to anyone who doesn't know your story, you, you were here for the very first of our World Cup. I don't imagine you've missed any since then. Um, this has been one of the most important races in your life, hasn't it? Uh, yeah, it's, um, it's the first time we've come over here thinking, hey, we might have a chance. And uh, I'm just happy for our team behind me there and uh, everybody at home and uh, uh, the people that got me here. So, um, you know, hopefully he runs a big race. Um, it's a big ask, but... Uh, um, he's done everything we've asked him so far. A lot of people rooting for you, Doug. Best of luck. Thank you very much. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, good luck to Kabir Khan and Connections. Honestly, the huge following uh, for this horse, well represented here, and, and that's been great to see. It would be one heck of a story if Kabir Khan were to win the Dubai World Cup sponsored by Emirates Airline. But there are a host of other challenges in here. And the likes of Ushba Tesoro and Sunor Buscador wonder if in the back of your mind you have the fact that Saudi Crown earlier on, who ran well for such a long way in, in Saudi, didn't really back up that performance in our earlier contest. Seems like forever ago in the Godolphin Mile. Has that race taken its toll? Obviously these two horses, Ushba Tesoro and Sunya Buscador, had a very hard race. Not that the likes of Isolate, who ran earlier, and Derma Sotogake did not, but when you're fighting it out at the finish like that, it probably just takes a little bit more out of you. A fabulous atmosphere ahead of the Dubai World Cup, sponsored by Emirates Airline. Uh, thanks to everyone that's turned up to watch this fabulous race. Uh, we might see a bit of history again if Ushba Tesoro becomes the second horse to retain the crown after Thunder Snow a few years ago. Will it go to Japan? Will it go to the States? Will it stay at home? We'll find out very soon. Pat Comerford, over to you. Thank you very much, Tom. $12 million, the prize pool here for our feature race this evening, the Dubai World Cup. Up comes Ushba Tesoro, looking to defend his crown. Only about four or five left to load away. Samuel Buscador, Saudi Cup winner. Some come forward here, Kabir Khan will load away very shortly. Up, will, up come, will come Laurel River along with Newgate, defunded. Saudi Arabia still yet to take his place. They go 2,000 metres here. And the anticipation and excitement builds. Newgate coming up into line for Frankie Dettori. Well, 
Baffert and Frankie, both four-time winners of the great race. Defunded comes up into line, and it'll be the Kazakhstani in Kabir Khan to complete the line. Plenty of people on course here this afternoon in the corner of this horse, and what a story it would be. Pat Dobbs loads away, and we are set for the Dubai World Cup. Dermis a little fractious in the starting stall, settles now, racing. Dubai World Cup number 28 is underway. Military law fast away with Dura Eride working across Laurel River from deeper out, along with Newgate into the first three or four, followed by Defunded. Derma Sotagake checked narrowly there. Kabi Khan shoots up the inside. Saloons through to a nice spot on the inner. That's your first division. A gap of four lengths back sees Senor Buscador working alongside Krupi. Then came Clapton and the Japanese pair of Wilson Tesoro and Ushpa Tesoro are second last and last. So inside the 1500 metres they go here in the Dubai World Cup. And it is Laurel River from gate number 12 who has taken over to go to the lead. Leading out onto the back section of the course by three quarters of a length. Defunded second. A gap of three lengths to military law from Dura Eride. Then came Newgate, three deep, punching the breeze at the moment, but seems to be travelling well. A length and a half to Kabir Khan, working alongside Derma Sotagake. It'll be five lengths to Krupi, who's on the running rail. In the centre of horses was Clapton, three deep, Senor Buscador with Wilson Tesoro, and Ushpa Tesoro is seeing them all here with about a 1,000 metres left to go. So they're about to approach the back turn. Laurel River has had it pretty easy up in front, hasn't had to work too hard, but defunded, and Laurel River clear away from the rest. They lead a half a dozen lengths. Dura Eride into third. Kabir Khan sneaks up. Hasn't gone around the horse so far. Newgate pressed the issue out wider. Frankie Dettori asking the Bob Baffert runner to uh, lift here in the late stages. Senor Buscador was next, followed there by Derma Sotagake already under a ride from Wilson Tesoro. Krupi. Ushpa Tesoro third to last from Clapton. Military Law drops out of it. Laurel River has given them the slip here. Laurel River puts a big break on them here in the Dubai World Cup. The best part of eight or nine lengths here and Judmont Farm are close they are 200 meters away from Dubai World Cup success here he's got 10 lengths now on Senor Buscador Kabir Khan drops away Ushba Tesoro coming from a long way back but this is an absolute romp in the Dubai World Cup Laurel River Ty Gaucher take a bow dominant in the Dubai World Cup. Photo finish for second, Ushpa Tesoro crossed over with Senor Buscador. Then came next over there was Wilson Tesoro from Dura Eride, followed there next by Derma Sotagake, defunded Krupi. Then came Clapton, Kabir Khan dropped away, Newgate was second last and the last one home, a long last to military law. That's about as dominant of a Dubai World Cup win as you will see, Laurel River. Gets the job done here in the Dubai World Cup. A thrilling finish to the Dubai World Cup version number 28. Oh my goodness, Bupat Sima, Laurel River, Taigo Shea. What a performance, what a night. They rolled the dice with this horse, this son of Inter Mischief. He didn't get a good draw in 12. He's just bolted up in a Dubai World Cup. That is sensational. That will mean the world to Taigo Shea. It will mean everything to Bupat Sima, a staple of racing out here in Dubai. And they talked about going Godolphin Mile. Well, why not go for the big one? They said there are 12 million reasons to do it. And this horse has blitzed them absolutely blitzed them there was just no way he was coming back to them he had them all at it and let's talk about this as a training performance a horse who comes over here has had issues with soundness he's had issues with his legs and Bupat Sima runs him over 1200 meters nowhere nothing blowout run so he steps him up in distance and he dominates over a mile and then they say do you know what let's go over Let's go over 10, why not? Let's see if he'll stay the distance. Let's see if he'll give me a Dubai World Cup. And he's done just that. And as someone that's been coming out here for years now and worked closely with Bupat and the Seymour family and Ty Gaucher, personally, I'm delighted for him. I think everyone who's a fan of racing in Dubai should be because that was stunning. And ultimately, the rest were nowhere. Ushba Tesoro. He was 
trying to make up his ground, but he couldn't. Sunil Buscador, the one-two from the Saudi Cup, two-three, but nothing could match Laurel River. Uh, these are the scenes that are going to endure. They're going to be some of the most popular we've seen at Maidan in the near 15 years of his existence. And we're going to bring in the Dubai World Cup winner, who's going to take a turn and we'll get a word with a man who's ridden a double on the night. And here's the stuff of dreams to Ty Shea, the multiple champion jockey, but he gets his slice of the biggest racing action out here. Ty Shea, I'm just going to put it to you. Ty Shea, Dubai World Cup winning jockey. How does that sound? That's got a, ri a great ring to it, you know. Uh... Back in the day when the late great His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Rashid Al Maktoum brought me to this wonderful country in 2001, I didn't think 23 years later I'd be winning uh, the world's richest race. Just take turn, 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 turn. I didn't think I'd be winning the world's richest race, but uh, you know, all this would not be possible, you know, without without the team I work with Zabil and Bupit Seymour. But you know, um, I'm just very, very grateful. I have to. I have to pinch myself. I've, I've been very fortunate out here to win multiple championships and that, and uh, to ride any winner on this stage is, is special, and I've been fortunate enough to, to ride five up to this fella, but I said the other morning after he's gallop, and I didn't want to jinx it. I didn't tell anyone when he'd boop it. You know, normally the jockeys have a briefing after a gallop, but uh, I put boop it aside, and I said, I have never, ever ridden a horse to feel like that, and we only win a four furlong work, and um, I... You know, they have to go and do it, and there was question marks on his stamina and whatever, and, you know, hats off to Judmont Farm. You know, they're, they're a worldwide recognised organisation and could have any jockey in the world on them, and they kept the fate with me, you know. He got beaten his first run here in Dubai. He backed it up with a huge run in the Burj Nahar, and, uh, look, thanks to, uh, thanks to their highnesses for keeping me on this horse, and uh, I'll be forever indebted to them. Ty, your boys are here to see this as well. Enjoy the moment. Well done, mate. Thank you very much. Thank you. And the numbers unofficially in the Dubai World Cup sponsored by Emirate Airline. 7, 11, 10 and 12. Laurel River, a dominant winner in the Dubai World Cup. 202.31. The margin, eight and a half lengths by an end. Fabulous scenes at Maidan Racecourse. We've heard from Tygo Shea. We'll no doubt hear from Bupat Sima soon enough as the winner of the Dubai World Cup, sponsored by Emirates Airline, makes his way to the winner's enclosure. Ladies and gentlemen, Laurel River! Come on, come on. 
Right, really quickly, going to get a word with the man of the hour, the winning trainer of the Dubai World Cup. That can't sound too bad, Bupa Sima. Oh, it's 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 indescribable feeling to, you know, to train a horse in Dubai. We've I've, I've grown up here almost. I've been here 21 years, and you know, I thought I would I would probably never have a horse to run in the Dubai World Cup, and just to win it is 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 tough of dreams. I'm thankful to a lot of people around me who's given me this opportunity. Um, your rider was emotional. A word on him. What a ride he gave it, Tiger Shea. Oh, he's, he's, uh, he's, he's next to none. He's a, he's a superstar. This is why he's 11-time champion, champion jockey. I think the footage is going to come out, but our own Tom Stanley filmed you watching the race. You were like a statue, a ice cool. Is that how you felt? Well, you know what? I was just hoping that nobody's going to come from the back and catch him. You know, and he, 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 he kept going, which is superb. Hey, Pat, go and enjoy the moment. Well done. Thank you. And correct weight has been given in the Dubai World Cup, sponsored by Emirate Airline. Correct weight, 7, 11, 10 and 12. Laurel River, victorious in 202.31. Official margins, 8.5 lengths by a neck. Correct weight in the last.
It is time for the presentation for the Dubai World Cup, sponsored by Emirates Airline. To make the presentation, please welcome to the stage His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, the Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council. He will be presenting three awards to the connections of Laurel River. And first of all, to receive the finest trophy of all, we welcome to the stage, collecting on behalf of the late Prince Khalid Abdullah's family, the Chief Executive Officer at Jubmont Farms, Mr. Douglas Erskine Crumb. Ladies and gentlemen, in the colours of Jubmont Farms, Laurel River has won the Dubai World Cup. Huge congratulations to all involved at Jubmont. Now, time to welcome the winning trainer and a hugely popular winning trainer. This is Bupat Seema and his family, ladies and gentlemen. And now we welcome up one of Bupat's closest allies, a multiple champion jockey out here, one of the most popular men in the weighing room. Ladies and gentlemen, with his family, Ty O'Shea! And once again, just before our national anthems, I'd like to welcome everyone, please, if we can, Douglas, Bupat, to come together around the Dubai World Cup trophy for one last photo, please, with His Highness. And shortly we'll have the national anthems. But if we can, once more, Please, a round of applause, a cheer, huge appreciation, connections of Laurel River. And as we put the trophy back down, if you would now, please, everyone, our Maidan race course. As we see these moments which will live long in the memory of the Seymour family, the O'Shea family, and the family of the late Prince Khaled Abdullah. Please, would you be upstanding for the national anthem of the winning horse of Saudi Arabia, followed by the national anthem of the United Arab Emirates.
Everyone, thank you. That concludes the presentation ceremony. And we will now have the most fantastic of shows to close off the Dubai World Cup meeting 2024. But if I could ask you once again to show your appreciation for Taigo Shea, for Bupat Sima, and in memory of the late Prince Khaled Abdullah, ladies and gentlemen, Laurel River.
التهاني والتبريكات للفائزين بجميع الأشواط وبالأخص لوريل ريفر الفائز بكأس دبي العالمي عن جدارة واستحقاقه وحظا أوفر لبقية المشاركين مستقبلا جمهورنا الكريم في هذه اللحظات ننتقل من من الإلهام والإبداع الارتقاء بسباقات الخيل هنا وفي العالم إلى أبعاد جديدة لن أقول المزيد عن القصة التي ستعيشون لحظاتها بكل تفاصيلها الرائعة والآن مع ختام يستحقكم وتستحقونه River who has truly earned this victory and for those not present on the winners list this year we wish you better luck in the future dear audience as we reach this moment we are setting the stage for a ceremony filled with inspiration and creativity it represents a tale of dedication and vision that has propelled horse racing to new heights I will leave the details for you to experience firsthand now get ready for a finale that's as exciting as it is unforgettable. بها لتحقيق الأهداف وهناك دائما قصة استثنائية لحدث أو شخص نجح في تغيير قواعد اللعبة هذا العام نعيش أجواء رمضان ومعه تسمو آمالنا هنا حيث نقدم عروضنا الأفضل والملهمة في سباق نحو المجد نحو الغاية العليا نحو الشموخ الذين بذلوا جهودا خارقة مواصلين المسير بلا توقف فجميع مساراتنا هي بدايات لأخرى 
وبوابات إلى عوالم جديدة يحدد لطم وأسمى الأهداف رحلة تستحق الجهود والمثابرة بل هي ملحمة تتغنى بالشجاعة محملة بالعزيمة والإصرار منسوش احنا بعدنا بعيد نريد نكون من اخير الامم والدرب طبيعي يطول وبكل شيء لازم يكون جاهز لازم تتعب عليه اذا تحب الخيل هي تحبك الحياه كلها تحديات في كل خطوه او كل مشروع نقوم فيه في مخاطره توكل على الله واستمر خليك ايجابي دائما المخاطر موجوده والتحديات دائما موجوده ولكن اللي بيوصل يوصل وتحقيق الاحلام لصناعة إرث وبناء مستقبل في كل يوم بس استمر وثابر وصر على المركز الأول فوز وهي نصر ثالث شيء اللي تعنيه I love you لتصنع أثرا أكبر
in 2025. Thank you.